All right, gang, it's time for Diamond One. Let's go. It is Diamond One time, everybody. So let's get in there and queue up a game. Now, what the heck are we even doing in Diamond One, everybody? What are we even doing? Well, we're going back to simple stuff. Diamond Two and Diamond Three, we jumped in the deep end. We did a lot of fancy spellcasters, disruptor drops, storm, splash damage. We were taking more bases, more economy, more upgrades than ever before. It's a lot of stuff and it naturally, if you guys follow that style, you've probably gotten into the habit of getting a little bit more loose Mommy. with like trying to do too many things. There's more imperfections. And if you're adding splash damage, I'm sure you have a lot more comeback ability. You probably botched some engagements. You probably crushed some fights. It's going to create a very different sort of game that was a bit less controlled to what we were teaching earlier in platinum, especially in gold, bronze, silver. So what we're going back to guys is standard attacks there. We've got a PVP to start off now. We're going to be doing a two, a very safe expand build. And in general, we're doing very solid opening still here in Diamond 1. But we're going to be turning them into very simple timing attacks. Now, this matchup is probably the most micro intensive one. But in terms of the setup, it is incredibly basic. So it's, it's literally just like two base, six or seven gate blink stalker all in. And we'll follow up by taking a third and going charge and doing a mass zealot stalker all in if it fails, if we're not able to kill them. So to start off, we're going to be doing a sentry stalker expand. And this is really useful because this is the most straightforward, basic generic expand build, which you'll see pros do all the time in this matchup. So I know a lot of you want to learn how to do this. <clears throat> and the idea is the sentry is going to give us early scouting. Okay. So there we go. Check it out. Uh, as always, if you guys are watching live in chat, question, criticize, explain what you don't understand so I can answer it. Please do. The more you do that and the more you challenge me, the more I get pushed to provide deep and solid explanations rather than skimming over points, which after 12 years of playing StarCraft 2, I just take as automatic knowledge. It's hard for me to put myself in the mindset of, of a bit of a newbie, guys, so just keep in mind that by challenging me, you are helping me. You're helping everybody who watches the show. Cybercore. There we go. So very sort of standard opening so far, guys. We want to get that second pylon in a moment. There we go. And what do we see? Double gate, cybercore. This looks like a pretty standard build from my opponent too, doesn't it? So we're just going to do a big loop-de-loop -loop there. Try and spot where my opponent's pylon is. And then we will... Um, there it is. And then we'll just check there's no Nexus, so there can't be. So that's fine, we'll just tell him to patrol there, keep an eye on what's going on. Now, notice my opponent, one less chrono spent than me, so they're going to be down a probe. But uh, they could chrono their two warp gate units, so that'll definitely be something to keep an eye out for. They've also scouted what I'm up to, but they're not harassing me. So nothing to respond to there. And let's grab my probe and get out of there. So we see two gateway units on the way. I don't see a third pylon yet. There it is. And guys, we like to generally go and send that probe home because oh shit i went double stalker one of these was meant to be a sentry i pressed the i pressed the wrong button fam it's fine it's all right we'll build the sentry slightly later but that's a mistake and this shows you guys how little i do this build so we're gonna build two sentries to make up for that let's get the nexus down now i'm unsure whether i want to teach sentry stalker into Nexus and then the next two units, or if I want to teach four units, then Nexus. So this is a, a point that I was thinking about and I'm undecided. So if you have any ideas personally, let me know, gang. And uh, yeah, let us know why you, th you think one or the other and uh, we might adjust it after this game. So check it out, guys. We've got a Twilight Council here. Can you do a guide on a fast carriers with a late Nexus? One base carriers? Uh, sorry guys, we're not teaching baboon crafts. Appreciate that the questions are well-intentioned, but uh, that sounds like some baboon shit right there, fam. <laughs> Alright guys, as soon as you get 75 energy, we'll send a hallucination across the map. Um, warp gate will finish in a moment and we can make more stalkers here to defend. And just two sentries or even just one from the start is totally fine, okay guys? Keep building probes. We're going to warp in the two Stalkers in the main, so that will defend against any Oracles coming in. 
and shadow. normally your hallucination would go across early enough to see if your opponent's doing something like that. What do we see? Robo, Forge, Gateway. Oh, very defensive style, guys. And normally we would have spotted if there was a Nexus a lot sooner as well. Cool. All right. So we're going to get a third Gas Geyser. Do we need a third Gas Geyser? I don't think we do. Yeah, I don't think we do. Okay. So keep making Stalkers. we got Blink. Now, we didn't want to make any upgrades with this style, guys. And uh, what we do want to do is try to shut down the store, the vision, if we can. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we'll build a pile on there. In the meantime, we're going to try and make more gateways. If you can hide them, though, that's actually awesome. So notice what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to put four stalkers here. Two there, two there to deny scouting. And these guys at the front. Let's send another hallucination across. Just see what we're up against. And we're on two bases here. Let's take that one. So how many gateways do we have? Four. Let's go for five. And let's get six and seven. Okay. We put three guys on gas. So that's going to be 41 probes is where we stop. And we see a third base from our opponent. What's their army look like? Just a couple of mortal zealot stalkers. Real basic army, guys. Awesome. And what are we doing right now? We are making more stalkers. And, of course, more pylons as well, guys. Blink is now done. We're ready. Denying the scouting. We'll even put some units there just to make sure our opponent can't see what we're up to. And let's go across the map to the watchtower. Join up there, and then we're going to try and kill them. Now, behind this, you can drop another expansion, right? You absolutely can do that, guys. Still building more pylons. Oh, I forgot to bring these guys. Check that out. So I think he knows about my attack knight now because he saw me coming. So we've got to get in before a shield battery gets up on that third if possible, okay? Or we've got to blink on it and kill it. So charge, third nexus, these are the things we'll do if our attack fails. But that's an if. For now, we try kill. So we're going to go in just after six minutes with a giant blink stalker timing. We were a little afraid there, weren't we? Okay, let's just go for it. And we're trying to blink forward, and that's because we wanted to avoid the zealots there and kill the stalkers, okay? And now, what are we going to do? So we're just going to aim it, and we'll just do defensive blink backs. And then we can chase down these guys. Slow zealots are really bad units, as you can see, because they can't maneuver. And let's hope my opponent doesn't have a DT shrine, eh? But that's why we went sentries because we were meant to check for that stuff. And we should be able to kill them. Kill the probes. You could go after the production. It's probably actually a, a more Chad move here, to be fair. Because, yeah, if you take out the production, then it's definitely game over. But because he's only making slow zealots, that's not a good idea. You can see my opponent forgot their charge, I think. And if you can take out these pylons, that's going to be huge. So notice we're stutter stepping our way in. And we're just rallying in more stalkers. And it looks like I don't think he's got any production left, so we will be able to kill him. So, big mistake on the build order, guys. You need that early sentry. Because we didn't have that, we could have got hit by a proxy oracle, uh, another oracle, lots of different things. So remember, sentry stalker, not two stalkers. And you will be a little starved for gas at that moment, because we're still doing the same sort of opening as before. So you might need to delay your warp gate just a couple seconds. So if you check this out, how much gas do we actually have? Because we need 200 gas for all those things. And we only have like 170, right? So we only had 170 gas. So if you go sentry stalker, you'll need to wait a few seconds to start warp gate, and that's totally fine, okay? But that would mean my hallucination's about 30 seconds faster, which is huge. 30 seconds faster on the hallucination confirms, did he actually expand? What tech's he gone? And it's going to allow you to check, oh god, I'm being all in, make more stalkers, make all that sort of stuff. Okay, guys? Now, if we go sentry stalker and then two more stalkers and then expansion, it'll be a very similarly timed expansion to what we did in this game. And I think that's going to be a nice safe way of just keeping it really easy. Which goes down about 240 and about 34 supply, 33, 34 supply. So let's put that in the build order here. 
And you can see it's a really simple build order, but oh my God, is it a crisp attack. So we're gonna proxy a forward gate, add four more gates at home to seven total, add a third gas geyser, just so we can keep up that stalker production and we'll do well. And um, and that's it. Why does it look easy when I try to build I'm getting right? Because you're not as good as I am. Which build? Are you actually doing Jumbolito? Assuming you're not actually trolling, which I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming you're just joking, but uh, yeah. Uh, so anyways, guys, that Nexus, that Nexus. Let's go Sentry, Stalker, two times Stalkers, and then you get the Nexus, and then we basically go Shield Battery at Natural, Twilight Council to Blink, and just keep, yeah, and then, um, you know, Warp Gate finish, non-stop warping in Stalkers is what we can do. And um, now, one little trick here is maybe cut for a moment after up to eight gateway units so you can get gates faster, right? Because if you're doing a timing attack, it's like warp in two stalkers, sometimes it's better to build that forward gateway and another gateway, and that'll be good. It's be about 33. Awesome. All right, guys, I think that's a pretty solid build order. Is there a way of checking how many workers you have in the game? Well, simple maths. So if you saturate your bases correctly, you should have 22 on each base, 16 on minerals, six on gas. And a way of checking your minerals that we used to do before we had this counter was we would always box the workers and two full lines was 16. So we used to constantly go between our bases and check, yep, 16 workers, yep, 16 workers, yep, 16 workers. And now they've got the numbers there, even better, you can hover over your supply in the top right and it'll tell you army supply is the top number, eight, and worker supply is the bottom number, 26. So that's really fantastic. <laughs> what the F, you could hover? <laughs> yep. Any other questions about this, challenges, anything like that that I missed, guys? I'm better at learning guitar than Starcraft. With guitar, I can get girls and the mechanical skills are comparable. Mm. Oh, you're better off learning it, not you're better at learning it. You're better off learning it. Mate. Dude, you know, you're never going to get diva with that attitude. She's real. She's real. I feel like if I tried this build, I would die to DT sometime after five minutes. Feeling safe because I scout that they have a natural. So what we want to do, guys, is that sentry keeps hallucinating. And after the first one confirming the natural, you're looking for, are they taking a third? But more importantly, check their tech. Now, if someone proxies a DT Shrine, this sort of build order is incredibly dangerous against that, right? Because we're kind of relying on our scouting to see. Now, the important thing is, that means they have to make an expansion and proxy DTs and hit you before about, what, six minutes? Because at that point, your stalkers are kicking their ass. Now, because you can, you could, we could probably hit it six minutes, right? Pretty consistently, I think we could, we could, we could, we could hit them at six minutes. Yeah, for sure. So, how often are people proxying DTs after doing an expand and getting them in that early? I don't know. So this is one of those things, it's a bit of a meta decision, right? So if we think about it, we could go, okay, we could do this exact same build, but we squeeze a robo in. Well, like, look, I keep getting hit by robos about five minutes. So I do the same build, but I add a robo in um, as I'm putting these gateways down and I just build one observer at home. So if it does turn out to be DTs, uh, you know, I can I can defend at home or I bring the observer with my attack and then if I need to recall to defend the DTs and build another observer, like warp in some stalkers, run these probes to the main, we can do it. But the important thing there is people don't like these answers, right? People who who are, are not amazing StarCraft players, they're always like, but I want to be safe versus everything. And that's the urge you kind of have to fight a little bit because what you got to remember is if you've got a, a massive gap in your play, like I have no detection, and you're just sitting back and macroing, and you're not scouting, it's terrible because the window on which you could get punished for not having DTs expands, right? It really does expand. However, remember in this case, we're scouting. So what if people keep going DTs and catching us? Number one, probably three quarters of those times, if you just sent your hallucinations in better, you probably could have seen the DT shrine and then reacted in time, right? But people will be like, oh, but what if they if they, if they they do it? And what you're, you're, you're misunderstanding if you get stuck in the attitude is, how many times are they proxying a DT shrine? How many times? Parting's DT drops hit before hits before four minutes. No one's DT. You can't DT drop in PvP. 
That's a one gate expand. Different build order game. I don't know if you guys, that's part of a different discussion, but very different thing. I don't know if you guys are talking to what I'm saying now or, or a previous discussion. I think it's a previous discussion, but that's not relevant to this matchup at all. So it's one of those things, guys, if you lose even 10% of your games to proxy DTs, you lose 10% of your games to proxy DTs. This is a good gamble. And for anyone who's had experience playing poker or any other things, uh, any card game, there's always kind of calculating the odds. There are games where a good strategy will lose. There are a lot of them. But as long as you're over 50%, you're usually making a pretty good play. If you get to 70, 80, 90%, you're making a great play. So obviously if we have a, a big opening like that that we just kind of blind to, it's bad. But what if you just make a habit of sending a probe around to check the corners? If you send one probe out to check all the corners between three and four minutes, you suddenly then have a 50% chance of checking the correct side of the map, maybe even higher if everyone always proxies on one side of the map of finding yeah, that proxy DT shrugs. So in a meta where people are doing a lot of proxy DTs, you do the same build order and you just add a robo. Or you do the same build order and you just send a probe out to queue up and check the corners for proxy DTs. Or you keep seeing a DT shrine and you just micro that hallucination better. Yeah. So this is the really important thing is there are small adjustments without massively changing the build that will get us there. It's huge. Can't we just notice that we don't see where the gas went? No tech and no sentries. So that's a very advanced point, which I wanted to talk about and I held myself back from because it's harder to scout. And that is, after you scout the expand, you also want to look at where's their gas going. So if they build multiple sentries, you know they can't really be hiding any tech, right? If you see a robo and a forge, that's a lot of gas that's going to be going to immortals, observers, 100 for the robo itself, 100 for each upgrade. Each sentry is 100 gas. But if you see someone who's got like all four gases up early and they've got like four zealots and three stalkers and stuff, I'm you're just like, oh no. Shadows. So this is actually like a really, really huge thing that you guys can start to focus on. My back's feeling a lot better, thanks Luke. A lot be better. So that's, but that is definitely a big tell that, that sometimes tips you off. Um, about a year ago, I was casting a lot of PVP and I noticed there was a fake forge meta. So what was happening, guys, is as the hallucinations coming in, the, the player, and let's say, say it's Gongbanger, who's proxy to DT Shrine, say that's parting, he would quickly throw a forge down, and the sentry would fly in, see the twilight upgrading, see the forge, he'd maybe put a robo down in front of it as well, and then when the sentry goes past, the, the hallucination, sorry, goes past, cancels the forge, or just doesn't make an upgrade, cancels the robo, but what he does is, hey, look, I'm spending my gas on normal things, here's signs of a normal macro game, here's where all my gas is going. You know, and I've been critical as well of, of top pros who sometimes scout and they see nothing but stalkers, no sentries. They don't see a forge or they don't see uh, the, all these tech structures and they don't prepare at all for Dark Templar. And I go, okay, well, in that case, they actually had the information. They just failed to absorb it and notice it, you know? So it is a thing, man. Yeah. Thank you for the 18 months. Simon Co. Gestation period of twins. hi -o. You know it. Sometimes the right play loses, it was still the right play. Yeah. And the thing is, you're still getting better as a player, is the other thing to remember. StarCraft, based on the meta, based on the strategies, as long as you guys are still getting better as players and you're evolving your skill set, like if you're really trying to hit this attack and benchmark, you are 615 with, what do we got? 16, 18 stalkers, two sentries at 615. Guys, that is such a scary timing. And I could have just blinked on those immortals and focused them down. The Immortals are such big damage dealers, and once you get rid of them, guys, if you can start a step away from the Zealots, that's huge. Notice I went for the battery first, just so we couldn't overcharge, and then notice how I clicked on both different Immortals. So some guys shot one Immortal, some shot the other, and then I shot the first Immortal because its barrier was closer to wearing off. Yeah. Awesome. Do three sentries allow you to send out constant hallucinated phoenixes? Yeah, we're only going to make one or maybe two sentries with this build and uh, rely on that because that still gives you pretty darn good scouting pretty regularly. But uh, yeah, if you get a few sentries, like three or four, you get like non-stop scouting. You mentioned, I hope my opponent doesn't have, yeah, I think I mentioned DTs. Do you feel opening Stalker Sentry for Hallucination outweighs the higher DPS against proxies? Um, well, you don't know it's a proxy. So obviously the Sentry is not a fantastic unit. 
against a proxy, but at least it'll tell you what's happening. So if you make one sentry and then you just make pure stalkers from there, it's only one unit that has less damage, but you at least know what's happening. So you'll identify that it's a proxy much earlier. And uh, as long as you keep building other units, you should be fine. This is one of those moments, like, when I was told that clicking the portrait centers the camera. Yeah, I, I don't really use that much, personally. <laughs> you can double tap the camera location as well. Or, or the, the uh, sorry, not the camera location. You can double tap the, um, the control group and it'll center as well. But yeah, obviously it takes practice. You, sh you should be getting wrecked when you're learning a build, guys. So remember, whenever you're following a StarCraft guide, because this is a skill-based game, you should be losing games at first because you're not going to be doing it correctly at first. It's about self-correcting. I've, I've actually um, coached so many players over the years and I've found quite a few, what they do is they, they, they think they're doing a new build order and they should be winning. And I look at the games and they're not doing the build order at all. So I think it's really powerful to focus on just refining and you'll, you'll really kick ass. I did make a joke about a carrier build before, but honestly, I, I I don't know. I only glanced at it, so I didn't actually get to see see what the question was. All right, gang, getting some more buildy builds on. Looking forward to doing some PVZ timing attacks, PVP timing attacks. What are we doing in PVT again? I've already forgotten. Oh, I remember now. We are going to be doing a good old, uh, simple, just a stalker into zealot style. So with that style, guys, check it out. It's a real standard one gate expand. We'll go Twilight Council into Blink, but we're going to get a Forge because we don't want to get a Robo, but we do want to be safe just in case Banshees and stuff come out. So we're going to play a single Forge style rather than the double Forge Mass Stalker Zealot style. It's just one very early Forge that's going to keep upgrading and chrono boosting and kind of doing its thing and we'll work it forward from there. So that should be really cool. Um, so guys, we've got a PVZ versus Bullia. Give me a second here as I don't know if the music's playing. There we go. All right, guys. So I hopped into the game a little bit late. I, I, I know that music's a little bit louder than normal, so hopefully that's not an issue. I'm gonna have to adjust that volume in just a moment, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do a quick put the pylon down, go back to mining, tab out. As soon as I queue up one more probe, let's go. Let's go, get that, get that volume down. There we go. Oh, that's, that's the sweet. You guys see that micro? Holy crap, I'm good at StarCraft. <laughs> All right, guys, so Bullier is one of the legendary uh, clan leaders of my clan. He's hopped on to play a game against us, which I'm sure will be fun. Oops, we should be scouting with our probe. So we'll send a probe over and let's get a gas geyser. Notice we want to stack him in there. So we just waited for a moment because the other probe is mining from there. Let's set up our camera locations. Number two, we'll take number three at the front. Number four up there, number five over there. Not that we're planning to ever get that far because we are gonna be taking the fight to my opponent with a big 45 pro push, guys. And you know what, guys? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna try to ease off the micro a little bit. We're still in Diamond League. I think I've seen Diamond players who are capable of fantastic micro. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't want to, um. I, I, I don't know, I guess I guess if I lose a game or two, I think it's good. I think it's good. And I've got to be willing to, to just ease off the micro a little bit, just to make it really easy for you normies to imagine yourselves doing this stuff, right? I think that's what Bronze 2 GM is kind of about, so... We've got to make it so the normies can imagine themselves doing things, you know? Don't let your, don't let your dreams be memes. Let them be real. What we're gonna do here. So what are we looking for, guys? Hatch gas pool, but we see pool's about to finish, no lava saved up. Okay. So then we're just gonna check that there's a third base or not. And then get out of there. Looks like we were a little slow building this probe. There's a bit of downtime. We'll see what happens. Ranked for the win might be working again now. Oh wow, that's cool to know, guys. So we chrono boost an adept, we start warp gate. Now we've got 1633, so we rally to the natural and get our twilight council. Bit of a weird positioning on this pylon, to be honest. Not the greatest. And we keep building probes. We'll go to Stalker Glory next. To and why do I chrono boost this Stalker, guys? Some people have questioned that, and, and the reason is really simple. Oh, let's try and get some damage to the overlook. There could be Zerglings that dodge this Adept on the way across the map. And if they do that, well, 
I need something at home to defend. It also will shut down the opponent's scout, which is really nice. And speak of the devil. It's this way. Check it out, guys. That's plenty of drones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do get distracted, just like a normal diamond player would. And I didn't cancel my shade because the Zerglings came in. Should have been my first order of business, but that's okay. Now we'll just check for uh, an Overlord on the edge. There, there, shift, 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 and then A move to the choke point, okay. We want to get the DT Shrine, and then we want to go three more gateways. We're still tapping these probes, so there's always one extra probe queued up. So we're trying to cut it close to be efficient, guys. One, two extra gateways, and there we go, third gateway. You can go back to mining. Queue up two more probes. So each time it's like, all right, make sure we have an extra probe queued, and then we go back to the other thing. Now, what did I do, guys? I just told my stalker to hold position. And then what do we do? Warp Prism. This is his third, so we're going to always attack the third is, is a really golden rule. So you chrono that, you queue up two more probes. You then get another pylon powering the robo in case this one goes down. You then go double gas, and then we go two more pylons. So queue up two more probes, so we keep queuing up these probes in the build order. It's like a mini macro cycle almost. And there isn't really much else of a macro cycle because we're at the point now when we're, we're not just doing macro cycles, we're doing an exact preset build order. But it's always the same. Now what are we doing? We're going to chrono boost that gateway because warping in that adept means it's going to be hard to make our DTs on time. Okay, guys? Now remember, guys, behind this, we need to be very aggressive, okay? So... First of all, we can warp in DTs in a moment. We need 500 gas. What we're going to do is... Four DTs. Okay. Just going to chill there for a moment. Send this guy out to the third. Send this guy over there. Okay, let's go in. Now, while that's going in, guys, you can see my, my money's building up a bit. Look at that. He's got detection. If they're ready for it, you've already done the damage. Okay, guys? Now what do we do? We go Observer into Immortal. We get Charge. And we build four more gateways. Okay, that's the next transition. Actually, let's go five gateways is what it says, eh? There's five gateways in the build. Okay. So we're going to make Archons and we will continue back to pressure the front, guys. This Observer, we're going to get rid of this Overlord. Really important we get rid of that Overlord. Build a pile on there. And what are we doing behind this, guys? We're building Immortals, okay? Cue another one. And run your Prism away. Don't waste time fighting. We don't want to fight with this. We just want to harass. Pick off Overlords. Be annoying. So bring the Stalker back. Bring these guys back. So what are we going to do? We're going to look for Overlords. That's kind of what we're doing here, guys. Okay. So what are we doing? DT Archons. Now, normally, those who've been watching my stream for a long time, you guys would know I absolutely hate DT Archons because they're so much more expensive. Whoops, what did I just press? <laughs> All right, we're not going to dive into this. We're going to play it a bit safer. Let's bring this back to the front. And now, guys, what do we do? We've got two Immortals. So you always want to push with either two or three Immortals. Is the secret count. That's basically a fake third, remember? If he was poking more with Zerglings, I would grab probes and send them there as like a little, let's pretend I'm playing a macro game. And what do we do now, guys? We grab everything to the front. If you want, you can wall in your base or just leave an adept there, but otherwise we're just gonna go, okay. Server follow. And we're gonna attack that third. Lots of Zealots. And we're just going kind of all in, right? Let's go! Alright, so the prism, we're going to queue that to maybe warp in from there, I think, is close enough. And we're going to pull the zealots back, let the other units go in first, guys. And let's go! A move. Remember, we've got a whole lot of gateways about to be ready. So we're just going to click these guys in here, add them to our control group. And you can see just how powerful attacking at this moment is. We don't have any upgrades. We don't need them. And a bit of an A move. Really simple timing attack, but well executed. Our DTs weren't micro that hard. And what's really cool here is there is an option. So if you guys look at the uh, document, you can see there is um, there is an alternate version of this. So I've got about maybe just after five minutes. Check it out, okay? So 
third nexus normally goes down right after our first ETs. But in this case, what have we changed the build order for? This is where we're diverging from the previous opening we were doing. We're instead going Observer plus Immortal. We want to chrono boost this Robo because we want to get at least two or three Immortals is kind of the marker for when we push across the map. I did two Immortals this game. You guys can do three. It's up to you. So we want to go Immortal, Observer, Charge, five Gateways. Obviously, extra pylons after those Gateways. I think they were talking about me not responding to you. But we are. I know you GG'd. Extra pylons. All right. Always pair up extra pylons with your gateway explosion. That's that's every time. Every time we do that. And um, yeah, check it out, guys. How cool is this? So then we and then we drop the third. So this is actually a much later third, but it still doesn't look that much later to the untrained eye. So they're like, oh, it's only 40 seconds later, you know, or, or something. It, to them, it looks the same. So a lot of Zergs, what is the point of that third? They scout this and they drone their third. To be fair, Bullia had already droned quite a bit, but you can see he's a little undersaturated on these bases. So, you know, it's like he's going to go Spire, he's going to drone up, he's going to do all these other things. Um, whereas, realistically, he could just mass Roach off this worker lead and be in a good spot, even though it's only a handful more workers. 55, at most 60 worker mass Roach Ravager would be the perfect way to defend. So this is a really good way to play. Um, the alternate, though, guys, is we could warp in sentries. So if you go up to four to seven sentries, you can actually do this as more of a force field based push. You'll have a lot less Archons. It'll be more mic oriented, more spellcaster oriented. But if I did that, I might've tried to shove forward and like force field this ramp, right? Or, or trap his ravages or something like that so they can't run away. But that's that's just a different way of playing the same push. This is the more AMU friendly way, right? And let's, let's benchmark the push guys. So I, I push forward. I take a little while to get set up here, but I end up going in at about 7.15, 7.20 with, I guess, what? how many Zealots do we have? We have nine Zealots, two Immortals, five Archons and a Stalker with an Observer, 46 Probes, so that's more than I needed. I could have stopped at 44, right? And I got three more Zealots warping in and another six after that as well. So nine more Zealots warped in by 7.25. Very powerful push timing. I can benchmark that and go, cool, that's what we're aiming for. Let's do that next time. That could be a really good way of doing it. Let's just go back a little bit and watch this from the Zerg point of view. See, did he really get too greedy? I think he played a pretty good game, but I think just his early work account was maybe a bit further behind than it needed to be. He really respected the DTs and had very good defense, though. Built spores, built roaches, built a lair, so hats off to him. To be fair, he actually played a really tight opening. Well done. Hey, Pig, I sometimes get stuck in a series game with cheese or early attacks that destroy me, so I ended up not being able to practice a build. Then I kind of get into the headspace to try and counter a build to counter it, and it doesn't happen. So then I end up not practicing any counter either. How do I get out of this loop? Hmm. So what you need to really be clear about is what you're practicing, Jay Castle. So a build order, part of learning that is learning the different branches. So the moment you die to a cheese, that is part of the build, defending that. It's a branch, and it might be quite a drastic branch away from the original trunk of the build, but it's still a branch, which is part of learning the build. What do I mean? So what do you need to do is, okay, what killed me, define it. I'm getting killed by 12 pool. 12 pool changes my opening. Okay, cool. So what you want to do is you want to define your reaction exactly, and every time you encounter that, you go, fuck yeah. And, and what's a great thing is, if you're in the mindset of, oh, I need to practice the counter, then great, hop in a custom game, pretend it's happening to you, practice the counter. If you can ask that opponent or a teammate to practice the build against you, even better, because it's more realistic. But even just getting the, the set response, shadow boxing the response, that's going to force you to know the response on a deeper level. A lot of people get stuck in the headspace of, I can only practice a response to a rush when I'm dealing with that rush. Don't get me wrong, is that the best practice? Yes. But you need to start with an actual idea of what you're going to do in that circumstance. Otherwise, you're going to encounter the rush and you're going to go, oh, what was I supposed to do again? Ah, I'm getting distracted. So if you, you say a 12 pool throws off your Protoss opening, learn that response. If you, if you want to feel more confident and actually remember it, practice it a few times in an empty custom game. Practice out, okay, I do this. And then once I defend that, I do this. So you know the pieces, at least roughly. And go back into ladder. And... The thing is, there should be a set tell 
that sends you down that reaction. Ah, when my probe sees X, that sends me down that reaction. Otherwise, I'm doing my standard play. You can't be attack. blind countering things, right? You can't be blind countering things. And also, well, what if, okay, I do the reaction, but then what do I do next? So part of a reaction often is like, learn a point where you feel confident and safe and you say, now go back to my normal build. Okay, everything, it's a little bit different in this situation because of this, but I still need these pieces and these pieces and then I'm basically back where I would have been at this point. And you can look at your build order right up and be like, oh yeah, I have all the pieces that I would have at this point. What's next? Oh, Templar archives, out of forge, out of fourth base. So you can kind of map out how to respond to these things and really evolve. You've already done the damage. Did you mean he already has to spend on the detection? Anytime you go for an attack and your opponent has an appropriate response ready, that's money they've put into stuff that isn't economy upgrades and tech. He built a pack of roaches, extra queens, and spores. Just run away, back off with the, with the DTs. Basically, it's just, it's, it's the simple thing which you always are learning, which is pattern recognition. This is good, or this is no. This is yes, this is no. It's all just premeditated rush, but it's really not. It's, it is harder mechanically uh, a little bit because of the, the start being faster, Vega. But you'd actually, there's actually an incredible amount of strategy still. So. I see you're saying, you know, you wish the game was slowed down again. Sometimes I do miss the slower start because it gives you more of a feeling for the game. But uh, this is the way gaming in general is going. Even like Age of Empires 2 esports, they move to a faster format. Because um, everyone has shorter attention spans now. And it is nice to get into the action. I do like the slow build up with all the kind of just slightly differing decisions and things you can make. So don't get me wrong, I, I kind of get what you're saying, but it's actually a beautiful game, StarCraft. And the thing is, you might be like, oh, it's too rushed, it's just rush strategies. The thing is, I mean, rush strategies were always amazing. And people always sucked at defending them. Um, you, oh, shit, ow, run, run away. Okay, we're gonna run him all the way away before going back for a scout, okay, guys? So, um, I've blocked my Nexus, guys, that is, Right? I think I've blocked my Nexus. Oh my god. Uh, well, we'll find out shortly, won't we? Okay, we're gonna scout with that probe, see what's up. Oh, I think we can fit it, actually. I think it's okay. Oh, whew. Whew. I was worried for a second there, guys. I was worried. So, um, yeah, yeah, there's, no, there's, there's a huge amount of strategy, and you can still play styles that aren't nearly as APM intensive. But I think this is a lot of people's reaction when they come back to something and it's different to how it used to be, is like just rejection because it's different. You'd be amazed how much fun it is. Um, and Legacy is so much better in terms of the unit choices and counters to things than uh, the old days of Heart of the Swarm and Wings where there were so many things that just didn't have great counterplay and um, there was just less options available. So, yeah. All right, guys. So this is our first PBT in Diamond 1. Let's go. Put the Twilight down there. That doesn't actually wall it, does it? Nope. Oh, whoops. Jesus, I haven't even started my, my Stalker. Okay, guys, we're making a Stalker right now. Also, he's doing a one base build. So we've got it. What we're going to do is we're going to send a probe out. Uh, we'll send a full hit point probe. And we'll try to run in. So notice I've queued it to dodge the direct rush path and then go into the natural to try and check what's up. Now, we're going to make Stalkers as well, and this Stalker will poke the front if it can, and then the other Stalkers will just kind of chill out. Now, normally we're going for a Blink opening, and it's Blink, second and third gateway and a Forge, and I think this will work out decently. Okay, guys, um, our opponent <laughs> is going for a, um, a Shield Bat, uh, a Cyclone Rush, okay? That's what the barracks is for, it's to spot for the, the cyclones. This is a very technical rush. We'll try and do some damage to it. With a shield battery, we should be fine. But we have to run away the moment we start getting tagged by a cyclone. And notice we're attacking that just to pull that home. Awesome. All right, we'll build another another stalker. We'll make a third gas geyser here, which actually, no, you don't need a third gas geyser, do you? I don't think so. Now, because he's building Cyclones, we don't need the Forge. The Forge is there for Banshees. The Forge is there for other units. We're still going to build it. Okay, 
That was not good. Whoops. That was real bad. Anyways, uh, we'll get the forge anyway, because who knows, maybe this guy goes banshees or something. So you get the forge, then you go for the third base. Uh, let's get another thing there. Now he can't, if he loses that barracks, which should be about to burn down. Oh Jesus, this is not good. Well, this is why I should never have left that high ground, guys. I'm an idiot. Um, this is not a great build order against Splink, but I'm making it into a really good build order, so we're going to have to play some really good StarCraft. And this third base, high likelihood, it gets shot down, okay? Uh, we'll make the third gas now, trying to make as many Stalkers as I can, and we should have just stayed on the high ground once we got that barracks burning, and we would have been fine. Now we are in a very tough position, and as I said, good chance we do lose that third. Oh! Our opponent's a bit of an F2 Lord. I think he tried to send that home and failed. So guys... Oh, look at this! So we're gonna blink defensively? Okay. Let's try and get some more. He's clearly just doing nothing but Cyclones because of the number of them. That's how we know that, guys. So we got guys on gas, and then we'll put guys over there. And if you throw your early Stalkers away, you, you really deserve to lose this game, guys. We lost, like, what, five Stalkers for nothing. This is just bad play for me. So, what we're going to do, though, is there's two options. Blink on top, look to overwhelm, or blink away and break the lock on. So, obviously, the blink forward requires you have the numbers. So, I think we're going to do the blink forward here, guys. Still building this. Let's just chrono boost, try and make as many as we can. And there we go. So we're gonna start a step forward. And we've killed most of his guys, so there we go. And you can see that Cyclones, as much damage as they do, if you can just get enough Blink Stalkers out, they do crumble. Now he's playing mech, so we do need a cannon in each mineral line, because Widow Mines. So look at this, guys. Notice we just queued up a billion probes at once. We're also gonna take the gold base. Stalkers will go across the map. Now we're going to get an Observer uh, Robo because it's mech. We need detection, we need vision, we need to know what the hell's going on. We're blinking forward right now. We're just going to make sure we can deny a third base. Okay, so we see he's trying to take a third real early. So we want to try and actually take that out as we tend to. So these guys are going to come in from the top. And we're going to wait for some more um, Zealots, I believe, guys. Would be a good idea. Let's get plus two attack. I think that's the most important thing here. And so one round of Zealots, and then we can go for the attack on that base. Uh, can we get it? Oh! Bad queue up from him. All right, so these guys can come from that side. Hopefully his planetary isn't finished, because you guys know this guy's building a planetary. That's what mech players like to do. And uh, yeah, we can go up to lots of gateways and stuff behind it. So we're going to try and hold the probe key down. We're going to attack in here, guys. And let's see if we can uh, try and just focus down the tanks. Oh, look at that. So notice we've taken the zealots to just click on the uh, SCVs there, guys. Just gonna kill these cyclones and then put back. All right, so that's a good trade because it keeps their numbers low. Remember, they've got long-range high-damage units, so the higher numbers they have, um, the harder it's gonna be for you to fight. Okay, I'll put another cannon down here, I guess, and then these guys can come to the front. And what you want to do, of course, is we've got this single forge. So we're just gonna keep adding gateways. Okay. We want to get some um, observers across the map, for sure. I'm going to make a few more zealots, because I think they're just so expendable. And I think because he's got a planetary at the front, it's easy for us to just get focused on, let's break the planetary. But really, let's break the natural. Avoid the planetary, because that's just such a big piece of meat that's going to absorb all of your damage, right? So are we doing a completely different game plan? Yeah. And that's because it's mech, guys. And we always have a one-size-fits-all plan against mech, which... To be fair, it's actually pretty similar to our normal game plan, right? Oh, 
I was not expecting to find an expansion here. This guy's crazy. So these stalkers are going to kill this. You guys notice how I do a lot of manually boxing my stalkers to control them? I think this is a good habit. Don't know if we killed the command center or not. I don't really care, guys. What we're going to do is we're just going to put an observer there and another observer there. And then, yeah, I guess I'll put another cannon down here because he's being annoying with those liberators. But otherwise, we're not really leaving much defense on these bases. Just probing up for the minerals so we can afford to keep trading. And this is going to allow us to make a billion zealots to come in with our next wave. So this observer, we're going to grab him. And remember this, unsiege, move, siege. And what do I see? Almost no defense, guys. Almost no defense. And he's moving into the open as well. Really bad for him, of course. And that should be game. We can just aim move it, I think. All right. So the Zealot Stalker is actually kind of on one base and getting bases. This is actually the plan that we always want to do. I was like, oh, this is a different plan. Then I'm like, wait, this is actually really similar to what we want to do anyway. It's just make Zealot Stalker, keep taking bases, sit on just two or three gases. If we do need a third gas, because we took the Robo, we dropped that third gas this game. And just keep expanding and adding lots of gateways. Normally, though, we would go plus one attack, plus one armor, plus two armor. Because against Bio, we'd be much more Zealot heavy. But because we were still just fighting Mech, and uh, they obviously have... High damage units, one arm is not going to do a lot against siege tanks, for instance. And then you just keep on building that gateway account. Um, and if they've got any more harassment, I would definitely be doing more of this, guys. Cannon battery. Cannon battery each base, that sort of thing. Because that just really helps you reinforce your defense against Widow Mine drops Banshees, a couple of Hellions running past, that sort of stuff. Uh, obviously, he kept hitting this angle, which is why I put the cannons down there. I was like, hey, why not? So, um, the Zealot Stalker, though, it's such a cheap, easy army that tears Mech apart. So, really fantastic way to play it, guys. GG. Let's go back to the start. So, remember, if your opponent's floating their barracks that early, guys, they're not even using it to build add-ons. It's actually crazy. So, he's just built one tech lab and then floated across the map. This is what told me what he was up to. And I immediately knew that because what else could it possibly be? Why would you bring a barracks this early? I guess he could be bringing tanks, but same scenario. Immediately start making extra gateways, extra gateway units, get a shield battery. And um, if I can get some damage on this, great. But I've also got to be careful because the longer I stay out here, the earlier those cyclones will be arriving. Now, I kind of realized, hey, let's... Oh, he is expanding. And I attacked with the probe. And I was really wary that these cyclone, the cyclone was going to appear at any moment. But because he pulled home, he let me get way too much damage done on the barracks. And this bought me a lot of time. So from here, guys, I should already just go, look, I've set it on fire, pull back to the high ground. Don't move further than about here. If I get locked on here, I can get back to here where I can be healed without dying. But we make a huge mistake here, which is going out there and then continuing to go out there repeatedly, which is really bad. Would it be smarter for him to not send the barracks if it gives his build away? It would be smarter if his barracks flew down here and then comes up. So it flies on a path where no ground units would ever be and then changes angle to get up there. Because he does need it to spot the high ground for the cyclones to lock on. But yeah, this was terrible, losing three stalkers like that. And then I think I lose four and five as well. I was like, oh my god. Is there a forge expand versus Erg that still works? Um, I know Rocker had a lot of success with it and Grandmaster. I, I was I never really properly studied the build, but he would um he would like kind of go for like Nexus first a lot of the time into Forge, and then he would like cannon try to cannon rush if he could, but then he'd full wall with like two gateways and put down a cyber core. He'd do a double adept pressure, then he'd get out like some void rays usually, and he'd also take an insanely quick third as well, like with the probe that was still on the map. So if you didn't notice it early. And because your link speed was delayed because you're defending a cannon rush, he, he often could just take a third and then be like, hey, I'm on three base, lol. Nexus first is a max max build. Uh, I think max max is like literally took that one from NA ladder guys like Roku and um, Void. Wasn't it Void who invented it? That's who Scarlet credited. But max max I, I think does it at a much higher level, yeah. Here in the 
shadows. You had the mini mothership. Oh, the mothership core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nexus got a huge shield. Uh, I think you mean the Nexus got a big cannon. The Nexus cannon from the mothership core? That was Heart of the Swarm. So that was 2013 to 2015. Crazy to think that was only a couple years, yeah. With how long Legacy's been out now, it's insane. Is StarCraft worth it to play it as a new player? Of course! Of course Deconstructs. As a more hardcore game, you aren't going to be instantly playing new players. And that's not because they don't exist. It's because the ladder starts you in the middle of the ladder. So it actually starts you smack bang in the middle, which is really awkward because you, um, you, if you're brand new and you don't know what's going on, you'd be like, man, why am I playing against all these platinum players? But it's got a very flexible algorithm for your first 25 games. So as you lose games, you will uh, very quickly get placed where you go. So you can see here, guys, he went in, used his lock-ons on the battery, and you see just how fragile cyclones are. If you outnumber them just a little bit, and remember, you always can outnumber them. Even after I lost all those early units and he was pumping Cyclones two at a time this whole time, he's got two factories, I've got three gateways, and then I went up to five gateways. It's just so hard to get factories with Tech Labs. It's so expensive and slow to build these units. And that's why these mech styles don't really work. As long as you don't let the Cyclones just kill, you know, a billion units, um, you should be good. I think a scarier push would have been if my opponent actually got a third factory uh, with a reactor and started adding um, Widow Mines into it. That would have been really frustrating because you blink forward to get the Cyclones, you're blinking into Widow Mines. It's not gonna go very well. Are you planning to deny people's fourth bases instead of third bases now that the game's faster? Uh, a little bit more often, but in, in general, your bases also mine out a lot fast. So there's actually a video I just linked there. Coming back to StarCraft, everything you need to know about Legacy of the Void. So that goes over the main details in terms of like how the mining differs. Um, but there's so much more variety in Legacy of Void than there was in Heart of the Swarm and Wings of Liberty. So it really depends how you want to play. You can play one base builds, two base builds, three base. The one pattern you'll notice is because your bases mine out faster, even if you're being very aggressive, it is more important to expand behind and have a next step planned out so that you can, um, you can't always finish your opponent with step one. So having step two and step three planned out can be really nice. With your current PVT build, what is a good way to scout for three barracks, says KYC? So that's a really good question. Um, basically, against a player, who you're gonna you're gonna always have to put a unit at the front. So this is I mean we can we can write this down while we queue for our next game, right? It's a very good question. Three X is so popular, right? Um, notes. Okay. Send uh, adept or leave leave adept outside base. Keep shading if you can spare the APM. Try and get inside. Otherwise, your job is to spot. Three racks move out so your stalkers can immediately move to the front to start picking off units. Okay? Yeah. It's three gate and forge before third nexus, so you should be able to get plenty of blink stalkers up in time. Yeah. I used to be an F2 max out player in Diamond 3. Following the series being in Lightning, I can feel my micro getting better. 63 kills and one disruptor today. Oh, that's sick, Oh, It's really worth it. Just even if you're messing up a lot of other things, you're like, you're getting good at the disruptor. And even if you don't win the game, that is such a valuable experience, isn't it? It's so valuable. Oh, this player is called Zealot and they are a Protoss player. Wow. Okay, guys. Let's go. I played this guy before. If you remember him, that means he called you names, right? Probably, yeah. We usually don't remember the normies. We usually remember the uh, the D bags. It's that negative bias in our brain. Early cannon battery against three racks. Oh, for sure, you can add a cannon. But I don't think you'd really want to build a cannon because how do you defend both your um, your main base and your or your natural and your third from it? What are you going to build cannons in both places? I think it's it's like yeah, just get get a battery on both, you know, as you normally would against a three racks, right? Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. 
Alright guys, so the first probe goes across the map. We then chrono boost our second probe here. This guy's job is to check we're not being cannon rushed. Looks like we're all clear. And then he's going to go in there. We change the rally point to the other gas. We see two gateways. Looks totally standard so far. We see they've also done two chronos on probes, which is super standard. Now that's interesting. Their second gas is a little bit later than mine. You know what else is interesting? My cybercore! Guys, I forgot to put my cybercore down. Oh my god. All right, I'm going to attack his probe. And he's actually picked the fight with me, which is interesting. All right, we're going to do a bit of a loop-de-loop -loop to see what's going on. Uh, let's put this guy on minerals. And let's get that second final out, shall we? So he's doing a little bit of mineral mining denial. That's all right. His cyber core might be even later than mine. So my opponent's messed up their build even more than I have, which is always good to see. But he's... Oh, is he doing a two zealot pressure? Or is it a one zealot? What is this? He's built a zealot. Well, anyway, guys, we're going sentry stalker, remember? So sentry, stalker, and then warp gate. We have the gas for a second or two later. We then get a third pylon. And let's just send this guy back. I just want to see what's up this ramp. See if he's building any tech. So he's not building any units right now, guys. Has he built a tech structure? I don't think so. I think, he, I think he's just going to be um, expanding. All right. So let's get that nexus after just two gateway units, guys. Now, I could have delayed it, but why are we doing it now? Very simple. here in the shadows. So the, the sentry, of course, is the weak unit here, so we're just going to run that one away. And we're just going to build two more stalkers here. Run! Don't take damage! Don't take damage! Alright, we'll go out front. Let's keep probing up here. Build a shield battery, just because we always do that, even though we've seen him not building units, guys. We just do it for safety, okay? Now we send the hallucination, even though we've already seen the expansion. That's going to confirm what tech he's doing. And we go Twilight Council. We can pull workers off gas. And I, I actually consciously pulled the ones that were kind of tripled up on these patches. And I'm actually even doubling that up. Real attention to detail. We'll leave these two stalkers in the main. And the moment warp gate's done, we'll warp in some more stalkers as well. And what did we see, guys? Well, I didn't actually look at my hallucination. But we don't see any tech, which definitely scares me a little bit. Chrono boost that one. But do we see lots of probes at least? Well, we see some probes. I have a few more though, so we should definitely be very cautious. I'm a little worried that my opponent has proxied. So what we're going to do, we're talking about proxy DTs as a weakness of this build before, guys. Oh my god. I just happened to be looking here, and we did not leave a probe on duty, which is a big mistake, guys. There is a that's the reason you always leave a probe on duty in your door. However, if you have stalkers split in the main, if they get inside, it's not too bad. Whereas if you keep all your units at your natural and they get in your base, it's a disaster, mate. So we're also going to send another probe out the other side of the map. And this way, even if it's proxy DTs, there should be no way it can surprise us. Okay, guys? Now, I don't have a good pylon in the back to hide gateways. So we're not really going to be able to do that this game. But we're just going to build this one here. We're building, remember, seven gates. So that brings us up to five. This brings us up to six. And I don't bother wall walling off here because it's just one of death. And he sees a lot of gateways. Big sign of aggression, guys. And he even gets a probe. Well done. We send our next scout across the map. We build our seventh gateway. Oh, I'm actually short three probes here, guys. Even more than three, what the hell? How bad at StarCraft am I, guys? So we've scouted, we don't see any proxy DTs, but uh, we're building a few more probes here to get back up to that count that we should be. And remember, we add the third gas just as the extra thing here. So let's take a look, what are we, what tech? So he's going Twilight, has an extra gateway, which is not bad, and is building Zealots. Oh, so he's gonna go Charge. Now Charge is especially weak against this style. Oh, is this for real? That's not real, surely not. It's got to be a hallucination, right? And it is. All right, guys. So we're going to move down here. And remember, about 6.15 with 18 stalkers is the timing that we hit last time. We're not even going to bother saturating that gas just yet. And let's just go in immediately. I don't have a guardian shield. That's okay. Oh, he's got a very quick third. 
That I was not expecting. Okay. Yeah, supply block just momentarily. Yeah, we're gonna need it. Okay, we're gonna use Guardian Shield. Guys, what are we doing? Blinking back the weak ones, that's all. Warping in more stalkers, going back to the front. Ah, blinking away to the rest of my guys. Do a bit of stutter step. And you can see the other player was playing Zealots, and Zealots are really good. If I gave him another minute to make a lot of them to where he's flanking or overwhelming. But what really happened here is my opponent just went for an insanely fast third base. And that's very dangerous. When did this third even go down? My god. Whoa! What is this? I... I didn't even scout for that with my first hallucination, because there's no reason why you would have... Actually, no, did it, did it end up spotting it? Okay, so it, it, it... He actually would have already put it down. Maybe he hides the probe. Then he puts it down. Oh, what a crazy build! Wow! So, guys, he had nothing... This build is crazy. My opponent would have straight up died if I just stalker poked him, right? Because he only has two. If, if I was doing like a six or eight stalker pressure or anything. And wait, did he even confirm I had an expansion? He did. He did do that, right? Okay, he saw my nexus earlier, so it's okay. It's not not too crazy for him to be this greedy. Still a crazy fast third base, and we just see I stop at 35, 38 probes, right? Two bases, two gases, and he goes up to 47. So he goes up to 10 probes higher than me. And, um, yeah, just doesn't have time to really pay off, right? Builds quite a few sentries, zealots, stalkers. Tries to start going for a forge, which, considering what he scouted, doesn't make a lot of sense. Because remember, guys, he scouted these gateways way earlier, so he knows I'm on six gateways, even without seeing the proxy. So this was just my opponent didn't react to their scouting information, because what should he have been doing was doing nothing but building gateways and zealots and chrono-boosting charge, right? and trying to just get up a big enough army to defend. Because he's clearly... I mean, all you need to see is mass gateway to know you're, you're under attack. So I was very lucky that my opponent didn't respond to the scouting. And this reminds us of something with pylon positioning. It is nice if we build this pylon over on this side, so that after the twilight we can hide a bunch of gateways in the back of our base, and by putting stalkers on the edges, we can deny hallucinations. So. It's a bit of a bit of a misstep for me. Luckily, we had a sharp enough attack that the stalkers just crush it anyway. They crush it. So you guys are talking about three racks. Yeah, a lot of people hit later than five minutes these days. But yeah, yeah. So um, basically. Yeah, you just want to use an adept as a spotter unit with that um with that that blink build for sure to see them move out. You could use a probe if you don't want to use the adept, but that way, if you have the adept at their front, there's a good chance a three racks player messes up and kind of rallies too much bio to the low ground to the point where you can tell it's a three racks by the three minute thirty or four minute mark. So a lot of people still asking about three racks and discussing it in chat, which I love to see. But I think just by shading an adept, you'll, you'd be surprised how often that gets inside the base and spots the three racks. Or they rally so many marines and, and marauders to the low ground early, you're like, oh, this is a three racks. And it just lets you know where your stalkers want to be on the map. Yeah, Battlecruiser teleports. It, it's all right. The Battlecruiser is a much stronger unit than it used to be. It used to be the worst capital ship. Is this series going up on YouTube? Level Up Comer was asking earlier. No one linked it up. Guys, please help out the noobs in chat. Um, if we could link that one more time, that would be fantastic. Obviously, I've got a lot of different things I'm talking about and discussing. If you hit exclamation mark B to GM, um, then it will pop up in chat, friendos. Guys, we're going to be playing a PVZ here. So we're going to be looking for that big two base push one more time. Do we only start a third base when our first base minerals are almost finished? With that build, that's a two base all in that we're doing. I mean, it's it's a very strong timing attack, so we would only drop a third base if that attack failed. In that, in that PvP strategy that we're doing in the last game, it's a two base, two to three gas blink stalker timing. So it's a very committed attack. Um, we drop a third, start charge, and add a lot of gateways if it goes past them. Oh no, this is a zerg! Oh god damn it! I'm answering questions about the previous game. 
And we've messed up. We've made our life much harder for ourselves than it needs to be. It's okay, guys. So, do not build this pylon up here. Build it down here, Verserg. I'm going to have to wall off with my second pylon and my tech structures, which is not ideal. But it actually shouldn't affect you too much if you're used to doing it like I am. For you guys, though, just do not build the pylon on the high ground. Pay attention. People are saying in chat, pretend it's random. If it was random, then guess what? I would have built that pylon on the low ground because that's what we do versus random. But this is fine. The build order will still be exactly the same. It's just going to look a little bit different because the pieces are in different places. Speaking of pieces being in different places. Okay. Well, wait. Oh, he's gone. Okay. It's a gold hatch first, guys. I know that because of the timing. So, that gas went down at a minute 10. That's why it's finished about a minute 30. The pool went down a minute 15, a minute 20. I know that. And that tells me it's a hatch gas pool. Now, we can go confirm, but we already know it's the case. I'll show you guys anyway. So you believe me. I know you don't trust me. Just kidding. I know you guys trust me. Um, we're not going to wall off because I'm an idiot. We didn't send that probe down in time. So we're going to have to build a third pylon to wall off, I guess. Re... Okay. Oh shit, this guy's actually off gas in the main. Alright, so we'll make an adept, we'll chrono it, send it straight to the gold base to pressure. Same as always, guys. And uh, we're still going to try and do gold base. How do we respond? Same as the three hatch before. Do a completely normal build. Remember, the biggest trick here is keeping it in your pants. A lot of people just can't keep it in their pants. Duh, I gotta punish it, I gotta punish it, I gotta punish it. That is not the case, guys. It is absolutely not the case. We're gonna build a stalker here. We just told that guy to return cargo. There is a return cargo button, guys, when your dudes have minerals. A lot of people don't remember the hotkey for it, but it is very effective. So we're gonna do a second shade right into the mineral line and let's see if we can pick off the drone. And we're just gonna run away, okay? Why? Because he's built plenty of Zerglings here, guys. Oh my god, he's really microing his ass off, isn't he? So we'll just try and catch rallying drones if we can. We now build a Robo here. Oh, this is not a good wall off. Okay. Ah. And he will kill that. That's okay. I'm going to build another Adept just for a bit of safety here, guys. And we'll build a shield battery there as well. There we go. And we'll build some gateways to reinforce this very dodgy choke point. This is all made much more complicated. This is a shitty opening. Go back to probing. Alright. <clears throat> so yeah, because he might Ling flood me, we're just going to put some units there. This is actually a double layered wall. If he blows that up, his second layer is still there. So it's actually kind of safer because of that. And remember, your opponent just built a shitload of Zerglings, so he's way down on, Zer on, on probes from where he'd want to be. So we're going to make a Warp Prism, and then we make a Pylon normally, because we've already built this Pylon ahead of time. We can go the Double Gas, then we can go the two extra Pylons, which are just for producing, so just maximum production space. And then we'll get one more Pylon at the front, because all of our production's here, and it's kind of dicey to not have that um, reinforced. So at least the gateway and the robo on the bottom have a backup now. So we can now go here. And I think our DT shrine should be done pretty shortly. So, oh, that's a bit close. Let's pull back. Don't quite have 500, 500. We don't want to put our thing in, in danger, guys. So we'll warp in the 40 T's. And let's see, we unsiege the prism. And we're going to go forward. So we're going to A move. Oh, pull back the prism. Remember, we already selected the prism. Whatever you're running into, that's what we, we should have done from the start. And we see here that the gold base gets mega punished. Now, he does have a spore, so we do have to be a little careful here. Let's bring that prism in, and let's leave. Okay. So remember, what do we do? Immortal Robo. Charge. Four more gateways. Only then do we drop the third. Because remember, it's like a fake third almost. Oh look, there's an overlord there. So we can already rally over to kill this overlord. So the fake third goes down. 
We can put that Stalker and Observer there to kill it. We can keep building Robo. We're going to go after the Overlord and keep trying to hit him here. So we're going to keep building these Immortals and chronoing them. And we'll keep building Pylons. The important thing here is we're not changing the build order, okay? Just going to see if we can kill some Rochis. We don't want to go too far forward there. But, you know what, I'm happy to trade the shields as long as we don't lose the Archons, guys. So we do some damage, we don't really kill much, but that's okay. And we'll go around and just see if we can find something on the rally, okay? Do we have charge? Where's the twilight? There it is. Alright. So we're making DTs, because remember, DT Archons with this build? And this time we're going to do it with the third... Um, the third uh, our immortal will be the timing. He's trying to take a fourth hatchery, because that gold base minerals, he's struggling to spend it. And this is where we could do some fancy micro, but we're just going to pull back, come to the middle, grab our army. I'll leave one zealot there. Oh. Oh. And we're going to make another bunch of Archons here. And remember, we were actually meant to go up to nine gateways, so we're actually one gateway short, guys. And here we go. So how many Archons? We have six Archons, three Immortals, and a bunch of Zealots. And let's go forward. We're going to have eight more Zealots soon. And we're going to A-move this gold base. So what do we do, guys? Get ready. A-move. And we're warping in more Zealots, adding them in. And go, 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 go. Now our Zealots are a little split from our army. And let's dodge the Biles. So notice we're just pulling back from the ramp a little bit because that's a bit of an awkward angle. But then as we warp in more Zealots, we just attack move. And this should be a bit of a hands-off moment, I think, to finish winning this game, to be honest. Because I think the Archon Zealot can just chase that way. These guys can fight there. Bring some more Zealots in on the left side if we have to. And it looks like we're just going to be able to overwhelm with the raw numbers. And hitting this two-base timing is so good. Because I'm telling you, every Zerg feels so good when they come in with those Zerglings to cancel your third base. And they go, ha, blocked you. But remember, we were never building probes for this to begin with. We're meant to stop at 44. I went to 47, so I was a little over. And what do we lose? 100 minerals? 100 minerals. We lose an adept, which I should have left on hold position. But it doesn't matter, because we're building immortals. We've got the gateways coming up. We've got the charge. This doesn't really weaken our push at all, but it distracts the Zerg from his macro. He's supply blocked. He's building spines and spores. You're trying to go double Evo, but you can see that What's going to happen in the next minute is he's probably going to be droning up pretty hard. Thinking, okay, cool, I've defended, I've got my Roach Queen, let's drone up. And we're just going to be doing nothing but preparing for a push. And he thinks, cool, Protoss is trying to get their third back up. Even if they go for a push, it's going to be plan B. So that's the power of taking that fake third base. It's completely a fake. Technically, we can transition off it. And there's all sorts of more complicated attacks where you get some probes on the third, but then you commit. And then if you see this thing you commit and if you see this other thing you probe up and like we can get as advanced as we want with that but on the most simple level this is like it is all defined before the game starts and that's what we're really returning to in diamond one is showing in diamond two and diamond three we, we added so much complexity and so many different cool tools and fancy strats and we're going back to a really really basic game plan it's very straightforward it's all set before the game even started so we're showing it doesn't need to be as complicated as I've been making it to this point. Now you can see he didn't actually drone that hard, my opponent. He's trying to go 1-1 one, one roaches, has roach speed and stuff. If my opponent was able to get out another dozen roaches here, it might have been a, a real game changer. But I mean, they've also gone seven queens and queens are just not a useful unit against a big solid zealot arc on immortal attack. They just don't do enough damage. Hey T Buzz, thank you so much for the tier one sub, dude. Hey, appreciate the appreciate the sub. Thank you so much, mate. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, getting anything out of it, please do click the sub button. Consider tipping or cheering as well. 
so that we are uh, <clears throat> we can uh, keep the bronze to GM show going. Help us hit those uh, those goals. I guess my sub goal does have the wrong um, text on it. It says EPT sub goal. Let me change that. Let me change that for you all. The Protoss AMU of what a site. It's all about how you set up for it, you know. Every every race Big. can Does anyone use Wapism slash probe to generate a rapidly deployed shield slash cannon location behind a forward army? I've asked many people, but nobody seems to acknowledge this. Hey now, Tima, with thank the you for the shield battery, it is less, but you can still start the structure. Alright guys, we got ourselves another PVZ. We got a funny question there from Lucky's on first with the 300 biddies asking um, whether people use a warp prism to deploy cannons and batteries on the front. Not really. Uh, it's pretty rare. Very occasionally you'll see like a hero type character, someone crazy like that do it because he's just a, a bit of a mad lad. Um, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare, man. Um, definitely if I see far, we've had a few people do it. But at pro level... If you're attacking them, usually you're you're kind of on a bit of a timer. Um, there was a hilarious game where Butt Always... I don't know if he used a warp prism. I don't think he did. It was on 2000 Atmospheres, Butt Always in the Taiwan region versus... Um, Thanks for the Bezos Taiwan, box. Hong Kong, Macau region versus uh, Gogo Joey on 2000 Atmospheres. He came forward, built a pylon outside his opponent's base, and then built like a ton of shield batteries and cannons to uh, combine with his carriers and then tempests that he was rallying across the map. Like and it was like shield batteries versus <laughs> mass queen for so long. So long. It was one of the dumbest games I've ever cast in my life. It was great. Thank you very much for the love, guys. Really appreciate the support. Um, so many subs coming in. Woogie, Tension, to Tivas with the cheers, the subs. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. All right. Now I think I did misplay that site, misplace that cyber core, guys. That, that's meant to be up one square, so we just got to be a little wary of the fact that there will be an opening on the top of that wall. Now I scouted a pretty standard opening, and I actually sent the probe straight home. I didn't realize I'd done that. Um, let's just go back over and, and maybe double check that we're not getting killed by anything. Okay. That's probably me being a bit paranoid, but we'll, we'll just check. Now that pylon's a few seconds late, guys. Remember, your pylon should finish at the same time as your cyber core. If not, fix your opening. Fix your opening so you can see here. Here I am wanting to chrono that adapt. We've got to wait a few seconds. Little nasty. It's not the end of the world, but just a small thing points out where we are making some mistakes. We still, and we see link speeds making and still mining gas. So definitely, maybe, maybe signs of uh, some big aggression coming. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna make a stalker next. And we do see what appears to be a drone coming out to take a third. Okay, no worries. So we'll go straight to confirm that third is down with the Adept, and then we'll go in for a scout in the base. Oh, we'll lure these Zerglings to the, um... To there, keep building probes. We want to get a Robo in a moment. Let's cancel that one. And remember, we go Robo to complete the wall off, but... Oh, my pylon's actually misplaced as well, so it's all part of the same problem right now. Stalker will go back and patrol inside the main. And let's try and shade in towards the main if we can. And we do see, it looks like a couple drones, a couple zerglings. It's a very quick lair. Oh, okay. And there is a third base, but it's a very quick lair, so that's interesting, guys. So anyway, let's get the DT Shrine. We're going to cancel that. We'll just recall this Adept just to help defend at home. And oh, cool. We're going to get to kill that too. So we're going to send the Adept back to the wall as well as the Stalker once it's done killing that. We then can go second gate for these gateways. Now let's finish that wall off, which never was finished earlier. So we've got the three gateways. That can go back there. Prism across the map. We've got that pylon ahead of time, which is always nice. Now, this could be a Nidus, guys. It could be a lot of things. We don't really know. So, always good to just kind of build some pylons out there on the edge. Could just be quick muters. Oh, there's so many things it could be, actually. All right, let's chrono boost that so we can make DTs once that prism gets across the map. Just felt like building that for a little bit of safety. 
put workers on the gas, and, uh... So we're just waiting for that DT shrine to be finished, guys. You require more Vespine gas. Okay. Now we can go Observer. We and, uh, and then Immortals and stuff behind it. DTs are going to come down. Seeing Roaches is good because this tells me that my opponent's not investing in Muters. Maybe not in the Nidus Worm either. Could just be a fast layer for detection. Maybe they know what build I'm doing. Ooh! Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. He's got an Overseer. Could just be for the detection, like I said. Alright, so what do we got, guys? We're going to make Immortals here. Haven't made that pylon yet, which is real bad. And remember, where we go? Five gateways and charge. So as I move that probe to make sure it didn't get surrounded. We've got Archons morphing. They're going to come back in for some more harass. I've built too many probes, guys. More than I needed to. So we're going to rally those over to that third, which makes it look even more like an authentic third base, right? So that's kind of awesome. And look at all this. Nine gateways, all this stuff. We've got immortals on the way. Observer can go across the map. We're going to keep chronoing those immortals. We'll go with two immortals this time, guys. Let's try and micro our archons. And I'm already thinking my next step is pylons. I'll need to build pylons behind this, okay? So if they just run away, guys, try to go after their drones is a really good way to um, really make sure you do some damage. And then that's too many roaches to fight, so we'll just run away. And we'll make sure this observer doesn't go too far in, okay? Okay. Oh, look, Overseer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop on the far side because I want to chase it back towards my base. But he was watching, so notice I'm clicking on it because if I A move, they wouldn't fight that because it's not a combat unit, okay? So anyways, let's go join up with my army now. We've got the second Immortal up. Whoops. So what are we doing, guys? Zealots, Archons, the whole, the whole works. How many Archons we got, guys? Six Archons, two Immortals. I don't have many Zealots yet, so I, I kind of want to go and do this. What am I doing, guys? I'm chrono boosting warp gates. I'm just trying to get more of these. Now, what am I doing? I F2'd. I grabbed the units. And we'll put him there. And let's go. Big attack coming. It's going to be about 730 with six Archons, two Immortals, and a whole lot of Zealots. Let's go for it. All right, we're going to A-move. I don't know where the army is, but we're just going to A-move towards the army because I think killing the army is probably the most important thing. I'm just put one Zealot up there. Everything else, just going to A-move on up here. And what we want to do is we want to grab the Archons and move those right on top because the more damage those Archons do, the better. But because he did evade me, we're going to have to go back, warp in the Zealots, and click those into that third base. And then they'll automatically do good damage. You know they will. So all I've got to do is micro this ball of units. And that hatchery is going to die real quickly. The zealots, just checking they're winning that fight. We're just looking around and monitoring the engagements and going, hey, which ones am I winning? Which ones am I losing? And this is a really easy decision because there's nothing to see except I'm winning every fight on every side. But generally speaking, if you've got your opponent on the ropes and they're kind of trying to fall back in many locations, try to split your units up to do damage to them and then focus on where is the most important area, which is usually a big chunk of very powerful units. In this case, Archons, Immortals, Zealots at the front. So here we go. Let's get in there. Um, a very, very fast lair for my opponent, but I think they were just a little bit behind on the drones. Um, what were the mistakes I made that game, guys? Quite a few, actually. Um, in that my pylon was a bit misplaced on the natural. So that pylon, I, I, if I was paying attention, I would have seen the power field actually didn't quite touch the edge. It touched this edge, but not that edge. It, it should have been up to there, instead it was to like there. Which is why I couldn't even wall off with anything other than a pylon, even if I wanted to. But of course the cyber core was a space down as well. So either way, it would have told me that I'd messed that up. Um, other than that, I think it was, it was something else that I messed up a little bit later. Uh, I think that was getting supply blocked as my DTs were walking in. So, I mean, we built these two pylons. 
But I think you've got to remember here with this build order that because you're going to be going straight into Immortals and so on, you do need to get some extra pylons uh, as well pretty quickly. So you're going to warp in 40 Ts. That's going to put you at 62 supply. Once again, I overbuilt probes as well by going up to 48 probes, and that's a mistake as well. So if, if we were three less probes, that means three more supply free. We'd be at 61 or 62 right now. And um, yeah, I actually went all the way to 50 probes. Oof, very, 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 very poorly done. But uh, definitely very nice to get in, do some damage with the DTs. Whenever you meet Fierce Resistance, pick up, pull back, and use those Archons as a, just a recyclable resource. Use the Observer and the Stalker to try to clear up vision at your side of the map. Looks like you barely morphed that in time. Well done, mate. Didn't notice that at all. And we've got five gateways, charge, Immortals. The Immortals do get supply blocked, and then we drop the third base. And that's the way to do it, and it works out really well. I think we just got a bit ahead economically because the DT drops very hard to deal with. So I think that's why we won this game. You can see I'm leading by a few workers. It takes my opponent a long time to get an advantage off the third, and they try to tech up to the infestation maybe a bit earlier than they should have. How do you train yourself to look at the map? How many tips to get better map awareness? I struggle versus Terran, specifically mine drops. So learn when they come. You're never going to catch them every time, mate, but number one, have more map vision is actually huge. So a lot of people try to get better map vision, but if you're not setting up more spotters, you have less chances to see things on the map. You'll be rewarded less for looking at the map. There's less information to gather by looking at it. And so you will fall into the habit of not looking at the map much. So that's part of it. Um, also define your build order. The more set you are on when things happen, the better you'll be at spotting things on the minimap because you'll be doing things by rote. You're like, okay, I'm building four gateways and you're actually looking at the minimap while you're building those gateways because you've done it a hundred times before. So you, you barely need to glance at where you're clicking because it's like, hey, I'm just putting four gateways down. So part of it's memorize your build order. Part of it's have more spotter units. And the third and final part is learn when those attacks hit you. So if people are always widow mind dropping between four minutes, 30 and five minutes, well, that's the point where you should probably be on high alert and go, okay, I'm going to look at my minimap a lot more. I don't care if I'm a bit less efficient on my macro right now because I'm always watching that minimap waiting for that drop to come in. Yeah, if you guys watch like like Boom playing Protoss, Florencio playing Protoss, like the really fun players, you guys will see them quite often go and um, do things like the prism. Let's let's drop a probe in the corner of the, the opponent's main, build batteries and a cannon there. I think my favorite is when it looks like a shield battery defensive position has been depowered and then the prism repowers it while juggling units, unpowers to dodge a bile and then repowers the batteries again. That to me is always one of my favorite things to see because that is so hard to do as the Protoss player. And I gotta say, man, the opponent's always really triggered if you pull that off. With Dota, Thanks I have to watch out every box. minute for stacks. Once I got that, I implemented looking at the minimap as well. Go against bot, try to look at it every time you check your supply or your build order. Yeah, yeah, definitely trying to just build more habits of it is really good. I think um, if you have a clear game plan as well, it's gonna be more helpful. I think too many people are like, I'm just gonna play with no game plan. But if I had better map awareness, I would spot things coming and be ready for them. And that's like, this kind of expansive and, and hard to really learn from that. All I would say is like, don't worry, you will just like get more. If you get more map vision, you will inevitably spot more things on the map. But getting more map vision is like super huge for sure. It's why a lot of Protoss players I've, I've in the past and I still do sometimes coach people and I go, okay, two base Robo versus Terran and just go get like four observers and then just play two base Colossus into a third with just Colossus and, and Stalkers and stuff. And like, you don't have Blink, you don't have Phoenix, but you just have like Colossus, you have a battery at each base and you have observers everywhere. So you see everything coming and um, you don't even need the battery at each base early on for sure. Uh, we are in Diamond One and we are destroying people with the simplest builds. How much more one-sided have these games been guys? Now that we're just killing our opponent with efficient two base pushes and we're focusing on hiding it just a little bit, right? What's the difference from our earlier pushes? Obviously we're executing a little better we're harassing a little more, so our builds are a bit tighter. But we're also putting a fake Nexus versus Zerg on the third, number one. Number two, we're blocking the hallucination in PvP. In PvT, I guess PvT is not quite as simple. It's not like a two-base build, but it's still like it's 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 a macro build, but it's 
minerals and zealots. So it's a, a super simplified macro build. Like it's still very mid game oriented. And it's all about, you know, just being uh, the Lord of the zealots because zealots are just such a powerful unit versus them. Oh, hey mate. Good luck, have fun, yo. I am um, quite a bit higher in ammo than before. Hopefully, like, I'm, I'm just trying to say. Um, to them, hey, you're not going to lose much MMR. That's what I was kind of implying there. You must construct additional pylons. All right, guys, it's Protoss versus Zerg. And we'll see what happens. Will we ever have a gateway in real life? Um, depends if they open up Area 51 or not. Because we know that's where they have the Stargate, right? Uh, SG-1 or whatever it's called. So I think if we can, re we can repurpose that, we should be able to, but... It's just America's so greedy with their alien technology. If America would just share, we would already have warp gate technology. It'd be great. Anyways, uh, all right, guys. So the, the the let's slow down a little bit. Sorry, I'm spamming a little bit here. So we just scout. We'll go in there. We see a hatchery first. Very standard play. Remember, army one, army two. Making sure these units are hotkeyed. We put the nexus down. We add it to a hotkey. We center the camera location. We don't build any probes, no probe production. Why? Because we want to go cyber core and we want a nice thick overlapping choke point. We then send that guy onto the gas. Now we resume probes. And then we can rally those onto that gas, okay? Now we can queue up as many probes as we want. It's non-stop probe production from here. Uh, I prefer Battlestar Galactica, guys. I never really watched Stargate. I I'd only see tiny clips and I'd just make condescending jokes about how bad it looked. Oh, aliens are just ancient Egyptians. Ooh. Felt like that whole, from, from the outside, from someone who never watched it, and so many people have said it's actually really good. But I, um, oh, whoa, 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 we forgot the pylon. Damn it. Um, shh. Uh, I, I always, I always felt like, um, from the outside, like, just the way the aliens looked from the tiny little, like, clips I'd see on TV and stuff, that I felt like Stargate was just written by, like, conspiracy theorists. You know, they're like, the pyramids were built by aliens, blah, 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 you know? But I never actually watched the show, so it was admittedly me just being an elitist prick shitting on a sci-fi, and most sci-fis, let's be real, look like shit from the outside, so. Anyways, guys, we forgot our second pylon, because I was reading chat like a dummy. So the Adept is here. We'll build a Stalker next. Now, we're not shading across yet. Okay, there we go. He, he does hide from me. We'll get the Robo there. We'll just rally the Stalker there so it does wall off. And look at that. Focus fire, bitches! Keep building probes. Uh, we don't see a third base, so let's go down this way. Stalker's there. Because we killed that, we can go up in the main and we can do a patrol path to spot overlords. 150 gas. You guys know what that means. DT and then the three gateways. Always oh, just after the DT shrine. Probes. Oh, I never really checked the work account, so quick, let's get out of here. Link speed should be done by now, guys. Thank God, we saw a third hatch around the minimap. We see a full mineral line. That means we're not being all in. Praise the Lord. Because if we were being, we would need to get back down to this wall off and wall it off with a gateway as quickly as possible. Or a cyber core. Cyber core is an okay choice to wall it off as well, right? All right, so we've started the robo. Let's start another pylon here. Just a little bit late, but what else? We build two gases. Queue up two more probes after each time you add some structures, remember? And we'll build these pylons out here for maximum production space. Let's get the stalker back to the front. We want to go, you get hotkeyed. You go there. We want to send a probe out to the third. All part of selling this story of, I totally want to take a third base. Keep building probes. And we'll just warp in these DTs DT nice and far back, guys. And look at that. The adept just killed a zergling. So that My really man. sells the story of, yes, yes, I want a third base. Yes, good sir. And we always want to wait for the fourth DT before we go in, guys. Just keep it all simple. Keep building probes. Can build a pylon out here. There we go. So now we've got four DTs. We A move them in. We select the prism. And we start steering that around. Make sure it doesn't fly into kings and spores. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. We see roaches. So be careful. 
Let's see if we can kill the queens. Okay, and we want to run away because there are roaches coming out. So let's tell it to drop back here. Safe spot. We want to chrono boost an observer, an immortal. Get charge. Then we want five gateways, right guys? So we've got three. We don't have enough money. So let's morph the Archons. And we can run these guys back out the middle. Two more gateways. Dave Tester, thank you so much for the sub, mate. So we've got an Observer there. Let's run the Stalker out. And our Archons will go in again. Let's send them there first. And Oh, look at that. Once again, try to get on the other side of it. So it doesn't run away. But we actually hit it from the wrong side anyway. Oh, okay. Looks like his queen did get out of there. And notice we're just going to pick him up as they take too much damage. Okay. Third base goes down. Send the stalker there. So we're going to send the observer there. This guy, let's just... We just want to kill the over overlord and run away. We don't really want to put any APM into this right now, guys. It's more important that we push, but... There's a real power to just pretending you're pushing, right? Pretending you're being aggressive. And maybe we can kill that Overlord in the middle as well. Okay. So our Stalker just chased the Overseer down. We've got that third Immortal. What are we making? DTs. Lots of those. Can we reach this guy? Looks like no. <laughs> Like, I really want to reach you, but our little T-Rex arms can't reach. Okay. That's the third Immortal, guys. That's the latest. We possibly want to wait for this. And it's time to go. There's an Overseer in the back, so he should know what he's up against. We'll send a Stalker. We'll go A move, A move, and then back to the wall. Notice we love using that Q command, so we're going to hunt down the Overseer using that. Let's make some more Zealots. Oh, he's breaking these rocks. This is really good. Let's not, let's not... Oh, actually, we're in... I was going to say, let's not show ourselves. But we've already showed ourselves. So let's go. Oh, let's break those rocks and just go right up the guts. Because then we're in between his rallies. And he's already damaged those rocks. So that'll be really awesome because it's so hard for him to defend, right? So we can just go up here. Get in there. Go, go, go. We're moving forward because the overlords were distracting us. Oh, get in there. Get in there. So this time... Great defense from my opponent. And you can see my units got a bit derped out by the uh, the overlords. Great defense, honestly, guys, um, by my opponent. And if this was not such a well-executed push, he would have held. So that was just beautiful play. Now, I didn't warp in quite as many DTs as I normally do, which definitely does give the push a bit more speed. GG, well played, dude. That was actually really sick D from my opponent. I don't know if that'll work. Uh, I think I need to open it from the screen. But once again, guys, just such a crisp and powerful push and so hard for Zerg to defend. Just going for a fourth base and making 1-1 one -one upgrades in an infestation pit, it's just a bit too much tech. And it just kind of goes to show how powerful this is. They also were building a Hydroden as well, apparently. Ah, uh, yeah, so Hydroden and, and going for all that, it's just a little bit too much. They also, you can see, went up quite a bit in probes over me as well. So I think, let's think about this in theory, guys. What shuts this push down? What if the opponent, four gases, two bases, that's 44 drones. What if they then take 10 pro drones on their third? What's that? 50, 54, 55 workers. Just four gases, mass roach ravager. I would say ravages are not bad against this push because they're very mobile, they're long range, they're fast moving, and you can hit the Archons and the Immortals with Biles and do a lot of stutter steps. So I think a fifth gas actually adds to that as well. I think about 55 drones, five gases, as much Road Traveler as possible. And what you wanna do is you wanna engage this push as far out as you can, shoot, drop Biles, pull back, shoot, pull back, shoot, and you wanna do defensive stutter step using the Roaches and the Ravages, the creep movement bonus, and the ability to drop Biles. And where do you drop Biles? Probably just around on top of the front of the army. Because then if they run through, it means the backside of their army eats the Biles, or they have to split their army up. And if the Immortals are just walking through Biles, as are the Zealots continually, then they're going to be taking a lot of damage. And if they're dodging against them, it slows the push down. And then there's an arc on Isolated at the front, and you just kill it. There's a few Zealots that charge ahead of the army, and you just kill them. So I think that would have been huge for my opponent if 
they did just a bit more stutter step here, but I also think queens are completely the wrong unit. I think maybe they'd missed a few injects because we can see they don't have any lava, and they just over-droned a bit. They went 62 drones, 6 gases, 4 bases, 2 extra tech structures, as well as 2 evo chambers. So if we think about it just in terms of a safe lead, guys, 10 drones ahead is usually a safe lead, and to be going all of that fancy tech is not necessary. Against a 2 base Protoss, it's not getting forged, no storm, no robo bay. All you need to do is make mass roach ravager and micro it and you will kill it. So all of these scenarios is me catching players being greedy technically against what I'm doing. And it just shows the power of hitting a really tight attack timing. GG's. Oh my God. Watch for my opponent's vision for a sec. Thank you, Dave, for the sub, mate. complete yeah no if, if the opponent sends an overlord in at the right time they will always see the dt shrine with this build if they go overlord speed they'll always see it you don't really care because it's just such a solid opening absolutely fishy nice yeah a lot of people freak out over it they're like yeah you saw my dts it's like it doesn't matter man we're playing we're playing really efficiently wouldn't you wall with the evo chambers if you knew you were being greedy no i would not because there's so much immortals archons and zealots those evo chambers at this stage aren't going to buy any more time they're just gonna literally get gunned down almost instantly anyway and it means my upgrades are gonna go down and it's a wall against your own units so i personally would always put evos hydrodens roach warrant up here somewhere safe but um he needs to stutter step a little bit yeah he just he, he, and that would be huge gg well played dude um really nice macro This is a uh, 45 probe fake third push. So I just need to stop at 55 drone, five gas, and mass roach ravager only to hold. Very uh, tricky push. You got solid foundation there. All right, just giving him some, some advice there. Yeah, I didn't really need to micro the army too. I did micro my army a little bit, a little bit. If I didn't micro it, those Archons would have wasted a bit more time killing the Overlords over here. So I did, I did a bit of micro, but nothing too crazy fancy. Yeah, 44, 45 probes is normally where we stop. Thank you guys for hanging out. How long did it take? Why did it take 10 years for people to realize chasing and killing Overlords is worth it? I think a lot more people leave their overlords out on the map um, these days for sure. There's actually a few players on the ladder who just always accidentally rally their overlords on the map and I laugh my ass off. Guys, what's the name of the guy? There's this one, Zerg. They will always just do these random like Ravager Ling pokes, but then he'll like, he will he doesn't use control groups so he rallies his, his rally point across. And then like when I clean up the push, there's like 15 overlords just rallying into my natural and I'm like, uh... Yeah, Liko, Liko, that's him. He's the funniest. I'm like, dude, stop setting your rally point to your opponent's face. But like, I've watched replays against him where he spends 10 minutes where his rally point never leaves my natural. And I'm like, what? For a guy that doesn't control group eggs, I'm just like, this is just insanity. Yeah, it's just such a such a messy, sloppy way of playing, man. It's, it's fun though. He does He does make some fun games. How does Zerg spot that push? Um, scout when the Warp Prism does the first harass. I mean, essentially, if, if you do an Overseer scout behind that, what do you see? No Forge, no Templar Archives, and none of the Nexire building probes, and there's no probes rallying to the third. So you can look at the Nexus and see why aren't the lights flashing on the Nexus? There's like a, a horseshoe on the side of a Nexus, and there should be lights running up and down that when probes are building, and no light when there's no probe production. So you see no probes, you see no forge, no Templar archives, you see a lot of gateways coming up really early uh, in, the, in the five minute range. Hey, it's five minutes. He's got eight gateways coming up before his third Nexus even goes down. Holy, like that tells you something. You can also see that the third base is kind of late as well. If depending, but that's, that's a bit of a meta thing. Someone might be going forge Templar archives then the third base, yeah. A laser is very pro at having his overlords killed. You know it. How do you set camera positions in the first 30 seconds and get them to center? So I just, I don't, they're not centered at the start. I, I just, 
drag scroll to kind of, because my dra I don't, it's the only thing I use drag scrolling for, where I hold down my middle mouse button and just kind of, I get it roughly on center. It's not completely centered. And then whenever I build a hatchery, I select the hatchery. I set the rally points for it. I, I add it to the control group. I double tap that control group to center it. And then I remake the camera location. So it's perfectly centered on that hatchery. So you can only perfectly center a camera location once the hatchery is down. Yep. So that's a habit that is just built into basically every high level player's play. And most people who have kind of built the habit of doing this, like when you take the base, you reset that camera location to just be perfectly centered. Yeah. I don't even notice myself doing it really these days. Yeah. But it's just a, it's just one of those things you build as a little bit of muscle memory and it just helps you have that really clean, perfectly centered camera location. That's so nice. Ooh, I think I just saw a 4,400 Zerg, I believe. What do we got? Yeah, Zerg. Ooh, it's going to be a beast, guys. All right. All right, all right. I am really enjoying that every game is on US West, guys. Oh, wish I could play every game on US West in my uh, on my main account. So much fun. All right, guys. So first pro rallies down, builds a pylon, and then we can mine five minerals if you want. Or we can just hang out there, actually. Keep putting probes. We should have had always have an extra probe queued up because it's 16 gate. And we'll rally to this one because that only has one guy on it. So we want to build a gateway and then send him across the map. We want to then chrono boost and build a gas. And immediately queue up more probes. Keep queuing probes as we can. Now we split that guy off because two guys will both go into the same mineral patch. And you can see this patch here. This is the only Thanks guy the that doesn't have bugs. a friend right now. So we're gonna make sure these guys play nice together. Billy, play with Gar play with play with play with Gary there. And these probes are gonna come back. Alright, cool. So now we've got six Sailor Minerals, one on gas. You rally the 19th one there. You have one probe queued behind it, and that's it. We've seen, check it out, hatchery first. So we don't need to really see anything else. If we want Oh that wait, 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 that is that's a pretty early pool. That's interesting. This guy on number two, we will build a Nexus. Add it to our camera location, center it, we'll then get a cyber core. So this is interesting, guys, because I think this is a sick circling pressure. And that is kind of scary for me. Now, can I wall off with a pylon here? I think I can. No, I can't. So I think what I'm gonna need to do, guys, is build a zealot and a pylon. Yep, yeah, that's that's six zerglings. Thought so. So I was leaving this probe around to check for that. We're gonna click down here and then go home. We're gonna build a zealot. And he's not really chasing me with too much, so I think we should be okay. You go on the minerals. Keep putting probes. I want to make an adept. So because he's chased me, he's not really able to do the pressure that I was worried about, guys. And this is cool. So we have the zealot. We're chrono boosting the um, adept out, which can go out on the map while the zealot guards the wall. But to fully wall, in case these guys hang around and are really annoying, what we're going to do is we're going to wall off with the twilight council, okay? And I'll even pull a guy off minerals just to get that gas mining a little bit quicker since we are so slow on it. So now we get the, the wall off up. And, oh, what's this? He took a third hatchery as well. Wow, okay. I'm still going to make a stalker behind this. This is a completely normal build, guys. It's just we squeezed a zealot, a second pylon in, because those zerglings came out so early. And that was it, okay? Other than that, we still need to get a robo next. It won't be in the wall, so we'll build it just behind the wall. Glorious combat is oh! Wow, we lost our guy. Cool. This is good that we're simulating real diamond play, guys. And we're going to be a lot later on our DTs as well this game. Was that a 12 pool with no pressure? I think this was like a 15 pool 15 hatch or something really weird, guys. Because the hatchery was really early, so... It, it doesn't really make sense what we're running into, but it's something a little bit odd. So now we go to the DT Shrine and three more gateways. I was tempted to build another Adept, but I don't really want to. And the reason for that, guys, is very simple. I was so gassed off because I did that change up in the opening. And we can go out here and fight these guys. Remember, guys, we're not too scared about... Um, put another pile on here. I'm not too scared about Ling Speed, 
because we saw there was no gas and he went three hatcheries. So he, he can't have ling speed until after four minutes. It's four minutes now, we'll go home and show him a little bit of respect. But the important thing here is we weren't showing him a lot of respect, okay? Let's get that Adept and then Chrono Boost and we can go Pylon and Pylon, okay? And that patch is where the guy's missing. So the Prism can go across the map. We should still be able to hit no later than about Thanks eight minutes, Bezos, I think, guys. And we've got this third base at the front. Now, we're always going to take the third base at the front, guys. And I think it's kind of obvious if you think about why. It's because we are being very aggressive. So we're building four more probes. That's the last probes we need in this game, okay? And we now can go 40 T's, and yep, it's pretty five minutes. So what are we going to do? We'll micro this for a little bit, guys. No more probes behind it, remember. Where's your detection? Uh, 40 T hits to kill. And I'm happy to just kill units right now, guys. I don't really need to kill the hatchery. If I'd committed to it, that would have been great. Okay. And now I'm just going to pick up and pull back because we know he has a Overseer, okay? So we want to make an Immortal. Um, where's my Twilight? Charge. Okay, that's why the build's a bit confused. Now, he may be coming across the map, so I do need to be a little careful. I'm going to send the Adept to check because I saw those Roaches coming across the map. And that could be very scary, right? We're just going to put this guy up forward, see if he's actually coming, and the Archons can continue to pressure. Build a pylon there. Build more pylons. And the Archons can pressure. Pull the warp prism back. Remember, we micro the warp prism, guys. So if we want to focus fire, that's something we haven't been doing much. So notice I focus down a few roaches, and we just pick up and leave. And if those Zerglings are silly enough to chase us, that's where we get to do some really cool stuff. Keep Chrono boosting the Immortals. I want to send these guys out here as well. Fake probes. Because remember what I said, guys? If they're scouting you, you really want to go for that. You know, see if you can you can fake it out. So look, bring his attention here as the probes alive arrive. Oh, he's coming for me, guys. That's a lot of Zerglings. Oh, she's one of my Archons died. So we're just going to F2 here, guys. Try and defend this base. Just remember, he's like, oh, cool. I'm killing your base. Yeah. So what are we doing, guys? We're pulling everything back. Looks like we're going to group up for this push. Remember, these are all fake thirds, fake guys on that base, basically. We want, what, two more Archons? From the shadows. So we're going to go two more Archons and Zealots. It's getting kind of late. We need to get going, guys. And it looks like all ins are running into each other right now, guys. Now, we just lost a lot of supply there. Where's my prism? He's going to try and run home. We lost a lot of um, supply in terms of like the Nexus and the Pylons is what I meant. In case you guys are wondering that. Notice we're chasing him down. He's got a very fast plus one. Can't have a lot of money though. I don't think it's possible to have a lot of money from here. Okay. More Zealots, let's go! So we're going to try and split my army up just to do a big spready so the units don't get stuck behind each other. And we'll go for the natural, okay? Whoa, look at this big army, guys. Big army. This is sick. I think he's got me. trying to fight out here. And notice we really want the Immortals to be trying to hit the Roaches if possible. So try to pull back. So he's doing really good micro as this player. And honestly, he probably deserves to beat me. This is like really sick player. I'm very impressed. 
I'm really impressed. This is actually beautiful play by Aurelius. Now let's kill that Roachmorin. Let's try to keep forcing him. Notice I keep pulling away from where he's microing. Because he can't micro both sides at once. So that, this is the impossible situation that you want to force him into. And check it out. So now the Zealots are in the main. That Archon's in there. And, oh, we don't want to lose the Immortal. I'm just barely overwhelmed. Beautiful play from my opponent. Really good micro. You could see they were shooting, moving, shooting, moving. All this sort of stuff. They, they Like, wow. I'm really impressed, guys. This player played a fantastic game. Now, obviously, they did lose a lot of units on their push. But they droned to 59. They had Roach Speed, plus one, Ling Speed. They made mass Roaches behind it. They gathered their units up. They, had, they microed their ass off. I'm very, very impressed. They had a fourth base coming up. They didn't over drone really at all. They made a lot of ravages. They moved a spine to the front. I mean, this was really spectacular play from my opponent. You can see their APM. Because look at look at the micro, guys. And they should have been pulling back, pulling back on this left side a bit quicker, but you can see they do it. Look at the way they're shuffling their units back from the Zealots and the Archons to try and use their range advantage and minimize the amount of time the Immortals spend shooting. And, and they, they do such a good job of it. Amazing play. Well done by Aurelius, dude. This is really cool. And we really got to see that this push um, was a was an issue, yeah. It was an issue. So, obviously, I'm, I'm completely all in, especially after losing the third boss. Wow. Really, really done. Thank you, Lucky's on first with the 300 Bs. What's up, man? This guy is out of your league. Do you know this guy? Did he snipe me? Because he may. Sad Panda, thank you very much for the um, the resub, dude. So thanks for the Bezos box. We had Lucky's on first with the four months. Lucky's on first with the 300 Bs as well. Thank you so much for the going above and beyond to support the channel, guys. Really close fight here. Really close fight. But you see, once. You get up in their business, it's a huge problem for them. So because he kind of overcommitted to the push, right? He went for a big, big push. And um, this is a fake third. Remember, losing that doesn't cost me much. It's like losing three pylons. So I ran the probes away, right? So if he actually had all these units ready and all these ravages alive and started fighting me from here and picking off the Zealot Archon, he has a lot of space to retreat backwards and kite down all my Zealot Archon. But because I was able to push him back and start the fight here, he had very little room to move. So that was one of the big problems and one of the weaknesses because his earlier push didn't work out. What are you even talking about, Bonnie? So what was this opening though? What was this opening? Was it just a 16 pull? Because it felt like the hatchery was way too early to be a 17 hatch after a 16 pull. So let's take a look at this opening, guys. 13 Overlord, 14 Drone. Would it make sense to them to get a Baneling Nest? No, you can't afford it. Even though it's really good versus Zealots. Unless you were already playing it. So is it just a standard 16 pull? Maybe it is a 17 hatch. Oh, okay. Man, how quick does 17 hatch go down? Actually, you know what? Hardwire has very good minerals for mining. Okay, that is a minute 10. All right. All right. No, no, no. I, I, I misread the timing on this. So this was just a 16 pool, 17 hatch, 6 circling pressure. So I did misread this opening, guys. Remember, what is normally our reaction here? Cybercore, then Nexus. Unless it's a tiny map, and this is a pretty big map. And then I could have just chrono boosted an adept in time. That would have been a much smoother opening than this. If he waited for 150 supply, he could have held easily. I mean, I was I was pushing into him, right? What do you mean? Because he just needed to not overcommit to his attack, really. Or if he did overcommit like that, he needed to not drone at all behind it and do nothing but Roach Ravager. And then he could have fought further out on Crete and, and retreated back. You think I could beat Dark with this strategy? You gotta understand that Dark is a world champion, Bonnie Rap. And, um... He, he he literally could rip my arms out of my sockets. If we were if we were in a uh, if if we took the Starcraft match between me and Dark and we put it in terms of that, like he could literally 
grab me by the arm, rip it out of the socket, and then beat me to death with my own limb. That's how much better Dark is. Dark can do that, honestly, to A tier pro gamers. If you're not in the top 10 in the world, Dark's often gonna make you look like a bit of a poopy butthole. How do you feel about defending early pool aggression with voids in the new patch? You never defended early pool with uh, Void Rays Gale Force. So, it doesn't really affect anything there. What are we playing? Oh, right, guys, we're up against PVZ against a player called Toss is Very Easy. And this is right when we are choosing to play much simpler strategies. So, guys. Uh, we're not going to bother doing any fancy, fancy mineral harass. We're just going to see what we can do. We are doing a pretty straightforward attack. You know, as, as easy as it is, you've got to realize there is a lot in terms of setting it up correctly, getting my pressure going, bouncing my attention. There are a lot of things. Like, I'm under... I'm, I'm, I, it is a simple attack when the attack happens, but getting to the attack is not easy. Getting to that attack with the right units at the right time pressuring your opponent into making mistakes, doing damage to them. All this stuff takes a lot of skill, okay? So I should definitely not undersell. You're not going to instantly win games just by like, oh, well, I had a vague idea of how Pig did it, and I tried to do it, and it didn't work for some reason. You know, it's like, well, yeah. Takes practice, fam. Takes day at practice. Where is that gas in the pool, mate? We got another three hatch player. Don't think so. So guys, number one, number two, he does go hatch gas pool. You can see I changed the rally point back to the gas. We go cyber core and then we resume pro- Oh! That is not where the cyber core is meant to go. Shh. So I just cancelled it to make sure it was in the right spot. We lose a few minerals, cyber cores a few seconds later. It's not a big deal. It's funny because Obviously, when it comes to post-game, you should be really scathing on yourself with mistakes like that and be like, all right, let's not do that again. Like, if there's something like that that keeps popping up, especially if it's repeated, you want to be really hard on yourself to make sure it doesn't happen. On the other hand, when you're in the game, you want to be like, ha, that just happened, and just roll with it. And this is a really important kind of mindset thing. Hello, are you speedling or letting me? Why are you saving up all that lava, mate? sure what this guy's up to. I don't trust him though. My man. Went for the weird yes. pylon positioning in this one but So he's got a third hatchery. But guys, because I saw all that lava sitting there and the pool was done, I was like, hey, he's not droning right now. So I'm and there's a lot of lava the saved up. Boy. Yeah, I think he's speedling all inning me guys or maybe going for roaches or something. All right, so we're going to go across with the adept. Now behind this, we're going to still try and follow the build because I haven't seen confirmation of an all-in yet. And this is honestly crazy greedy. Considering I've seen so much lava, I mean, he could have a, a thousand lings popping out. You know, all of my wisdom says to play a bit safer here. But I don't know, man. No, I see drones popping out. That's all I needed to see, guys. So good thing that we didn't overreact. Stalker could have killed that overlord. I chose not to. And that's because if there were Zerglings that snuck out after killing my probe, I knew that killing those was way more important. Now notice you move in between the shots. That just allows you to get off as many shots as you possibly can. Now it's 3.30. Oh, I can't believe he got out. 3.30 is when link speed finishes, guys. So there still could be uh, those 10, 5 or 10 links coming, running in. You have to get the Stalker back to the wall in. Very urgent. Build two more probes. Now we want to build a warp prism. Remember, we rally that over here. Already, we're planning where that prism is going to be warping in those DTs. Everything orchestrated ahead of time, planned ahead of time. That's how we make good StarCraft builds. We build two more probes after the pylon. He's trying to lure me in. I'm going to build a shield battery because that just. I don't know, man. This is this just looks so sus, right? The way the Overlord poked in, and then the Lings are just sitting there, like waiting for my Stalker to move out of the wall. So I waited for the warp in before I got it, but no, no, it wasn't a trick. I think I think it was just he wanted to try and scout. Okay, maybe he wanted to check these gas geysers, right? Makes sense. 
So we're going to send the probe out to the third. And it's DT time, guys. Alright, we come in. And as always, guys, A move. And steer the prison. Steer the prison. Keep it close. Keep it close. Don't take unnecessary damage on it. Click the spore if there's nothing there. I'm going to pull back. Now, obviously, I could have done more damage there, guys. Charge. We've got Observers and Immortals building. And then five more gateways. Now, I don't have the money for all the gateways, so I'm going to go over there. Box them. More Farcon. Go here. Build two more gateways. No more probes. Resist the urge, guys. Been building good macro habits. We're, we're going all in. No more good macro habits. Get out of here. Get out of here with your good macro habits, okay? Now, I do want to drop this third down, okay? You have not enough minerals. All right, I'm going to queue up another immortal, just waiting for the money. So we've got another immortal queued up. I return to serve. Now, in this position, guys, you want to do... If they're A-moving wings at you, you want to do these ones. Okay, so we're just going to pull back now. Let's keep chronoing these immortals out. Remember, we love these immortals. We'll get a few more probes and just send them to that base. I think it's probably a good idea to just always do that, right? Just always kind of send the probes there. Get some more pylons. Let's try and make one more immortal. So, one more immortal, chrono it, and that's when we're going to move out. So we're doing the three immortal push this game, guys. Uh, can we unban Andres, please? You have not enough that, that is actually what the strategy was called for a long time. As long as... Uh, yeah. And you gotta remember, there's people from all around the world in the chat, so... Let's, uh... Generally, I mean, I don't really enforce it anymore, but we used to we used to have a... a, a don't, don't, don't drop our bombs in chat sort of rule. Um, I don't know if I care too much anymore these days, because I, I, I do think it's kind of one of those things where it's like, whatever. Just as long as people aren't being super aggressive and calling each other names in general. But uh, that's obviously just a reference to the old Destiny video, for anyone who doesn't know. Alright guys, here we go, big old push, let's go! We can bring this observer in, click it on an immortal. I'm going to go straight in towards this third. Now, obviously, my units are kind of split apart because those immortals are a little bit slower. Let's bring this warp prism in. Oh, that's a lot of uh, Archons, guys. So let's try and move up on it. Lots more Zealots. And because it's mostly Ravagers, guys, you do want to try to move through the Biles and dodge them if you can. So if you, if you jump on top of them quickly enough, a lot of people um, will throw their Biles a bit too far forward and won't spread them out enough. So that can actually be a pretty good way of doing it. So we're just keeping our units grouped up here. Notice I've been doing more and more of this micro, guys. And obviously we have to go forward there because the prism's there now. And whoa. And we can try to just move in there. And we do manage to take him out with a big old all-in. You can see just how clean these attacks are. And uh, how well they are working because our opponents are, are just clearly this is not in the um clearly not in the meta this sort of attack so my opponent actually was massing units on 44 drones which is a little under where they want to stop but it's not too bad they definitely shouldn't be going hydrogen off there but here's the problem is they build a lot of units for defense and if they kept massing units off equal workers with me i actually think they would have been okay guys but um um, yeah, yeah, Andros is a great chess coach and stuff, guys, and, and he's a really good guy, so thank you. Appreciate that. Um, he's, he's, he doesn't doesn't mean any ill will. I, I, I know him, so he, does, he doesn't mean to offend anybody with that, but uh, let's try and be respectful as well. Um, that, that is to Andros, I'm saying that, no worries. All right, guys, um, so yeah, you see, this is... So, unfortunately, my opponent didn't really scout, never even saw the fake third base, 
is just kind of going up in the drones. If they kept massing Roach Ravager and they came and fought me out on the edge of creep, this would have been a big problem. But what do we keep seeing here, guys, is a lot of players also aren't putting any spotters out on the map, right? So they're not seeing when my push moves out. Remember, I've kept saying that you need to go out and meet this push on the map, on the edge of creep, and then fight backwards to pick off as much as you can. So this is the main thing where we've missed a huge, huge opportunity, man. GG's. So what we're saying is people aren't seeing me move out, number one, and they're not going out to intercept the push. That's why it's working so darned well. But also they're not scouting and they're just by default after building some roach ravager going cool let's build hydras and go to the next step so this is where you know you can see the opponents probably pretty solid the way they're playing but my particular timing attack it feels like is catching them all right as they're going back into mass worker production and then bam the army's on their doorstep and they're pressed up against the wall and they need to spot it a bit earlier and engage it earlier in order to shut it down I appreciate the uh, words of inspiration, Bunny Rap, but I am an analyst, expert, commentator, caster, teacher of the game. I'm a I'm a maker of the videos, you know. I'm a I'm a I'm a streamer. I'm a YouTuber. I'm those things. So as much as I appreciate, and you know, I I really like that you you know to me it's a massive compliment what you said, Bunny. But um, that you know you think oh I, I should make another pro run. You think I've got this great potential and all that stuff. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I would like to think I could do that. I do think, though, I would have to be playing on an entirely different level to what I did previously. Um, part of me does doubt that I could ever do that because, um, let's be real, you know, I, I was never a top tier player back when I was playing. So um, it's, it's nice when people believe in you to the point they're like, I think you could beat Dark if you just tried hard, you know, kind of thing. Um, I do realize, though, whether I have that potential or not innately, it is something I am not willing to commit to, and so that's why it's not really, uh, you know, a choice. Because it's something where, and this is the same for anyone who's like, hey, I could beat that person if I just put as much time in as you. You know, it's the classic response when someone headshots you, you counter-strike, and you say, yeah, that's just because you practice the game more than me. I have a girlfriend. I bet you don't. I spent time with my girlfriend. Ha! You know, and it's like, well, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, if I spent more time studying law, then I could probably be a better lawyer than some lawyers, right? Uh, the most meaningless statement in the world, because we could all be great at anything if we really committed ourselves to it. And obviously there is some innate ability and stuff, but uh, I think uh, that's, that's often over oversold how much that is. Alright guys, let's see what we're up against here. This is a PBT. We haven't had a chance to play much PBT at all. And it is going to be what looks like a pretty standard barracks gas build order, guys. So we can try to block the natural and then just come home. We've already told him to come home. Cybercore can go there, back to pro production. And from about a minute 38, minute 40 is when they usually can put the command center down. So this is when you want to start blocking it. But notice I'm almost dead and I don't want to lose it because we pull it back. Um, ooh, normally we would go second gas here before a pylon. I built the pylon first. And that can go there. Okay, guys. So we're going to go Twilight Council. Blink. So anyway, my point being, I'm, I'm not willing to put in the, the time, um, the effort, the absolute amazing selflessness uh, or selfishness, selflessness, the, the, the dedication, the sacrifice is what I'm trying to say that pro players put in to compete at the top of a game where you just don't earn that much money compared to a lot of professional sports people out there. You do earn a lot more than a lot of the, the niche ones, but definitely nowhere near the big football players of the world. So that's why, you know, if, if I ever am like a little bit like, yeah, no, and I kind of shut you down, it's, it's, it's not me saying, oh, I don't appreciate you guys thinking that I'm good at the game. It's, I don't think that um, someone who puts in as little effort on their play as me should even be in the discussion of, oh yeah, if you just did this, you could be better than that. For me, it's a it's a respect thing to those pro gamers. So guys, very standard build. We start chronoing, chrono both units, and um, we want to build a stalker, an adept, a stalker, and then after that, we want to go second, third gateway, and then a forge. It's a super cute build. First of all, let's see if we can get this in, and it looks like oh he went reactor, interesting. So we did actually spot a pretty quick reactor there. My man. So our depth's gonna stay outside his base, okay? So now we drop this really early forge, okay? Beautiful. We're gonna put another pylon out here. And we can go there. Keep building these guys, and the third base comes up next. Oh, hello. Where shall we march? 
So that was it. He's trying to hunt me down if he can. He's got a bunker. Now, the one thing, and this was pointed out earlier on by chat. Ooh, blink, blink. I forgot to start blink. Uh-oh. That's late. It's all right, though. So we want to make one. So it's basically, guys, you pause after two gateway units. You make your gateway is the forge. You then make a third gateway unit. And then you see that pops out in time to transform into gateway. You want to make plus one attack. Nice and early. And it's really nice to make lots of stalkers. But we're going to make third nexus and then make lots of stalkers. Okay, guys? And we're going to try and do this all off just two gases if possible. Now, I don't know how possible that is, but we will see. Now, right now, about 440 or 430 technically onwards, they could be coming in with uh, Widow Mine Drops. I think that was a factory, guys. So I'm going to make sure I click that this time. If it is, that means we're being 3 racks. It means there's a lot of bio in there. And yep. So guys, we are being 3 racks right now. So what we're going to do now is we say, okay, I don't think there's any chance of a Widow Mine Drop. Because this factory hasn't even bloody finished, has it? So we're going to build a shield battery at each base. Natural and third. And our stalkers have to go to the front to intercept his push, okay? And we have our Adept on Control Group 2, Stalkers on 1, okay? Now, we're going to keep probing, and we're going to go up to about... Let's go up to, like, maybe 9 Stalkers is probably a good count, okay? So, I haven't seen his push move out, and this is where I realize... Hey, wait a second, what if he just moved out and I missed him in between my Adept pulling home and he moved through the top? So these Stalkers are about to potentially find an army and go, oh no, I'm about to lose this game. Keep chrono boosting and always queue your upgrades a little bit ahead of time, okay? Make sure you don't forget it. And queue charge after blink. Now, because my blink was so late, this could have got me into trouble. Oh, he's got a cyclone. I don't, is he playing mech? Is my, is my opponent mecking? Something very strange is happening right now, guys. <laughs> so you go five more gateways here. And then we want to think about taking a fourth base. Now, you're going to notice, guys, if you're worried about Widow Mine drops, Banshees, anything like that, you drop a cannon in each base. And notice I haven't done that. <clears throat> but you absolutely can do it. I'm also reinforcing the defenses just a little bit here. So I don't really know what's going on, and I don't have a way to scout with this build. So we're going to make one sentry that can eventually hallucinate. And do we take a gold base, or do we take a corner? We're going to take the corner, because I feel like that gold base just sticks out a little bit too much. Now, we're also going to do pylon spotters, because you don't have observers or anything like that. It definitely can get a little bit dicey. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go back and break these rocks. Definitely feels like a mech build, doesn't it? So we are going to get a Robo. Now that's going to give us detection, but more importantly, Warp Prisms. And we're going to make a lot of Zealots, okay? Now, because we're just going Mass Zealot, and you always want to hit a Mass Zealot attack versus a Mech player. And I'm going to start breaking some of these rocks as well. We're going to make a lot more gateways, so we're going to go up to 12 gates, okay? Because remember, we've already got this fourth on the way, so we might as well... Build a few more probes and make a plus two attack. Keep the single forge upgrading all game, guys. It's a single forge all game style, but because you get it up so early, you, you can keep those upgrades going. You just chrono it whenever you remember to. That's basically, you know, it. And and just every now and then you queue up another upgrade on it, and that's it. It's, it's real, real straightforward. Now, I think he's taken this third. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to try and make a prism. Okay, let's break these rocks. We're going to make heaps more zealots, guys. So we're trying to just break this down. And what are we going to do? When they take a third, you spread, attack here, 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 and here. And this is exactly what you do every single time you play against mech. It's a one-size-fits-all solution, which is always the most beautiful thing in StarCraft. Now, he obviously spots me with the barracks. Does that matter is the question. Zealots, zealots, zealots. They're all on the same army hotkey, guys. I'm going to send a hallucination in, try and see what's up. And we're just going to try and spread our units out so that they're not too uh, broken up when they go in. Or not too splashed down. So this is where we go F10. And we just A move in the center, guys. And maybe we do some stalker micro. I don't know. Grab some stalkers on the top. Shoot a tank. If we can shoot another tank, that'd be pretty nice. But... Does it really matter? No. And that's always what you do against mech, guys. You always come in with a big spready. And the other thing is if I, if you have robos up, 
you would have two prisms and you would have one here and one here. And before that you tell that attack to go in, you do this. You grab both prisms and you tell them to click in the very bottom right corner. Shift, shift, shift phasing mode. And they'll fly in and unless he's got a turrets there multiple and turrets there multiple, at least one of those prisms will get in. This one would have died. Let's take a look. Would the other one have made it in? This one would have got in. Yeah, it would have got behind that turret, taken a bunch of damage. And then you would be warping in zealots inside their main mineral line. So even if they defend the front, they'll lose a lot of upgrades, SCVs, infrastructure in the main, and they will go down. Um, mech is very fragile if you just commit to a giant zealot stalker attack. At some point there after they take the third. Now, if I left that for two more minutes, that army I was using would have looked terrible. My opponent would have had lots of hellbats up front with blue flame. They might have fully walled off their tanks and a whole bunch of other things could have gone on. But if you guys are trying to make mech work, number one, make sure your tanks are always fully walled off. Don't leave any holes because the zealots, you saw how quickly my zealots just got on top of them. And if the zealots are coming in from a big enough spread, you take so little tank and hellbat splash that it's just, they, they cannot defend that sort of thing. It's so difficult to defend your third base as a mech player like that. I feel like getting a planetary on the third actually kind of makes sense versus Protoss and like tucking your tanks in the mineral line behind it. Thank you, Darox, for the 33-month resub. Uh, Lucky's on first, Thunder Biddies. You will not become the master. You may inspire one. Your skills lay within the communication knowledge. For that, we love you. Oh, thank you, dude. You've been so kind today. You've, it's, you've been tripping them out, but it, it's adding up to a lot, a lot of biddies. Thank you, dude. And Carson from the other months. Appreciate the dunking on the NA players. hi -oh. All right, guys. We're playing another PVZ here against Freelancer. So, they probably think I'm cannon rushing with how late that good luck have fun is. For those who don't know, the, the rule of the delayed good luck have fun, usually someone says a delayed good luck have fun, they might be trying to distract you. If it's after a minute, it's incredibly sus. It's super duper sus. Alright guys, we've got a gateway on the natural. Now remember, that bot could block my expansion. So we need to blow it up, so we're spamming left clicks on it. And it blows up. <laughs> uh, any bot in StarCraft you could do that to, by the way, for those who are wondering, but it's uh, it's been in it ever since, what, Warcraft 2? Did they have it in Warcraft 1? I think someone the other day said they did have it in Warcraft 1. I, I didn't know that um, in Warcraft 1. I remember doing it in Warcraft 2, blowing up sheep and piggies, the, the, the pig squeal, the pain pig squeal. It was like, and then it would explode. It was very satisfying, what can I say? Violence is fun. Um, especially to unsuspecting creatures. Jeez! No wonder Peter hates Blizzard so much. So, I'm gonna build the pile on here. Bit harder for them to scout. And we're just hanging out with that probe, as always. You guys know, we just wanna keep an eye out in case. What are we looking for, guys? Extra lava. There's no lava. That means my opponent cannot do a very fast speedling all in which means I can head home with that probe, don't need to hang around at all. And my Adept should be able to go across and if there is a slightly delayed speedling all in, we will get some news of it. So, Warp Gate plus Chrono the Adept. We can rally to the natural now. We're just checking for a quick third base. And we'll get that Twilight Council. If your Twilight Council is a little delayed, it really doesn't matter, guys. Um, and what are we doing, guys? Move to the high ground to get vision, and then shift click onto that uh, that overlord. Oh, it broke the shift click. That's weird. Just because I didn't have vision of it for a moment. So notice we always go straight towards the natural. But what do we see? Creep Tuma, Overlord's Queen, no sign of Zerglings, no signs of aggression, guys. Do another chrono on the natural, maybe? Nah, that's alright. We can skip it. We see a third base. Now what are we looking for, guys? Drones. We kill the overlord. I can send that guy back to the wall. And we see lots of drones there. Now, we're just going to go forward and do one more shade. And then just click it all the way home. And the purpose behind that, we maybe could have gone after the tumors. Just to double check there's no zerglings or anything coming out. And there isn't. Um, DT shrine's really late. Woof. Have a gas for that for a while. Sloppy. Alright, we're queuing up a few more probes. 
Remember, third bases here always attack the third guys. As a general rule, don't don't overthink where you want to attack from. Send that stalker up there. And where's the pylon? There we go. Remember, it's prism, pylon, two more gases. Always queue up extra probes in between each little structure step. And if you can grab a probe popping out, it's super efficient because you're not losing mining time. And you can just see how it becomes like clockwork a build like this. You guys can tell how many times I've done this build. It's it's actually just a disgusting number, right? It is actually an insane number. Because this has just been my favorite base opening for many years. Because it's so flexible. The DTs can protect you from just about any push. You know, it really sets you up nicely. It punishes super greedy players. It transitions well in a few different directions. DT Shrine being delayed is delaying our thingo, so we'll pull back just a little bit in case the Queens come out and try to ambush us. Still building a few more probes behind this, but actually, we're at 45. So that's all we need. And look at this. That already is giving off the sign of... Oh yeah, I'm totally playing a normal build. Kill that Creep Tumor there. Get him! Okay. Get charge. Oh, there's an overlord in my base. You must place that in. We'll go back to the watchtower with them. I am building gateways under an overlord. That's probably not the smartest, is it? A move, shift A move. So my stalker is actually queued right now, guys, to literally go and deal with the overlord and then get back in the wall. A DT's broken after the patch. I've always loved him. Always loved the DT opening, guys. As good as Glaive Adepts are, DTs just shut down so many different builds. And that's what's so nice about it. So many different attacks your opponent might come at you with, it just gets shut down. You can send a few fake probes to the third, make it look more legit. Do a bit of pressure. Making another immortal behind. Remember, we're waiting for those immortals. If we can target these roaches, that's super sick, but we're gonna pick up that Archon. And if you drop it again, look, they're still shooting the other Archon. So we kill a few guys and then we run away. And we can kind of think about coming down the bottom and maybe hitting the main. And we can get one more. We can warp in DTs as well. So we're gonna go. From the shadows, I come. Okay. Do we need more pylons? Maybe one more. And make Archons, and as this last Immortal comes out, we'll push out. So check it out, guys. We don't care about this doing damage. This is just to go, oogie boogie, oogie boogie, get distracted, go on autopilot, and keep building drones, please. Oogie boogie, oogie boogie. Now, because these are wounded, we don't want to take damage. So they're going to keep regenerating because they never took damage there, so they can be back at full life by the time my opponent um, comes. Now, we're actually going to push the bottom side and go straight for the natural guys. You might be wondering why why are we doing that? The reason is because I think we can sneak up on him here. Notice there's no creep on the bottom. So I feel like all of my opponent's defenses are focused on the top side. And you can just see, once again, three immortals, bunch of archons. This is such a brutal attack, man. And we'll warp in here. We'll go straight into the natural. And we'll just go YOLO! And we just kind of go there. And you can see just how ridiculously powerful this attack is. That's such a simple way of winning the game. And once again, I think we just see another Zerg who's up. Yeah, 67 drones. So it's just, check it out, guys. A lot of Zergs are so used to playing against Protoss who are playing air. This is a soft spot in the meta right now. I've inadvertently showed you guys a soft spot in the meta because the Zergs aren't used to it. They're just not scouting and they're just playing way too greedy, right? Way too greedy because they're playing as if it's a Stargate build and they're playing as if the Protoss is just going to sit there and do nothing. Spire, 70 workers, no map vision at all. And so we're seeing that even in Diamond 1, there's a lot of uh, kind of little fundamental errors being made here, especially off the pressure of the Archon drop. So remember, if you are finding your opponents are always ready, they're scouting, you might be able to micro your Archon drop a bit more, do some more damage, and it'll give a higher chance of your opponent not being ready. So that's kind of what you can focus on to try and 
make sure you increase the chances of them being distracted. You can make sure you send the fake probes down to your third. Yet another player who never scouted my third base had no idea what was going on behind it, unfortunately. Thank you, Do Not Tremonde. Do Not tr Do Not Tremonde. Thanks for the comment, mate. Glad you're hanging out, dude. Wah! And obviously, didn't see it coming. I said, yep, I think we can sneak up on this left side. We're absolutely right. You can drop a probe to make a pylon, and the prison is available to do pickups. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can just run a probe across the map as well. Yeah, you can do that, for sure. Um, a pylon only does slow warp-ins, though. So you've got to remember the reason we want the warp... It, it's uh, seven Diesel seconds box. faster warp-ins next to a gateway, a nexus, or off a warp prism than just a pylon on its own. So that's why we like to do both. If you want, we could definitely bring that prism forward and make sure our archons never die. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this opener versus a double immortal drop uh, with charge lots at five minutes? So that's that's more of a complete, uh, that's like super all in. It's gonna hit harder, faster, it's more committed. Um, it's more prone to, if they know the response and they know how to scout it early being weak, um, this is more prone to looking like a very solid standard game that could go to a macro game. So it kind of sell, it, it does a lot of trying to sell the story of this is a totally normal game man and um and that's you know whereas whereas that but but this hits a lot later so they're different flavors um you can definitely take this opening and plug this into a macro game a bit easier so this is more modular in that this is a timing attack we're turning we're we're, we're, we're we're attaching a timing attack that's super committed to a build order which very easily could have non-stop pro production and just have the third be a little bit earlier before the gateways in the immortal production, right? Which is the, the standard way I do it. So it's just like a it's it's a, it's a reordering. Whereas you probably couldn't take like an immortal charge lot thirty two probe push and be like, oh, this is the macro version of it. It's it's kind of like its own its own kind of all in build. So it's a little bit less flexible. Uh, still a fantastic build, and it'll kill so many people. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Cheeks, for the thirty three months, dude. And you can watch this from the Zerg point of view, guys. I just want to show you guys the frustration and panic of trying to deal with the Archon drop. So let's just watch from their point of view. Pig, uh, how worried about muters are you? Not at all. Not at all. There's no chance for them to ever get muters. I had a, a one or two players build muters as my push was hitting them. The muters were coming out. And obviously, you've got five Archons. So it's, a, it's an absolute slaughter. Even if they were managed to get muters out early, which is so hard because they're building roaches and whatnot to defend the DTs. To get them across the map, that's fine. I'll base trade and I'll, I'll win the base trade any day of the week. Yeah. This is on two base forever. I don't like the build. That's fine. It's a much it's a much sharper pressure. It's the same with a glaive adept build. You're forcing the zerg. If you do it properly, to either they're, if they're too greedy, they will just die if you execute it correctly, right? Or take massive, massive. Damage. And I, I'm I could kill these third bases a lot better. We can see like my opponent's floating 1,500 minerals. We really threw them off with the DTs, right? Took them forever to build extra overlords here and get back in their production. You can see just how panicked they were from the DTs. Um, as a Zerg player, if I'm spotting after five minutes, Protoss is not taking the third. I should stop droning, correct? Where, where are your drones at, Woogie? So you see, your question is not completely wrong, but I just think there's a better way of ordering it, which is how many drones should I stop at? Until I see X. Right? So that's a good way of thinking about it. Because what you can then say is, as the Zerg player, well, if they don't have a third, the maximum drones I want to go... Okay, I'm going to go 55 drones, 5 gas geysers. Um, if I see a third, that doesn't even tell me that much. You could even say, rather than a third, you could focus on an Overseer Scout. So if we're the Protoss player here, right? Let's say they've defended the Archon drop, they've restabilized their macro at 6 minutes, right? Overseer hopefully flies through the Protoss base. 
six minutes, maybe 6.30 at the latest. And what you can see here is, remember what I said, guys? The horseshoe is not flashing. There are no probes building. There's no lights on that horseshoe. The horseshoe is just black and dead on the side of the Nexus. There's a ton of gateways. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, definitely don't build more drones. On the other hand, what if when you scout with that Overseer, you see probes rallying out, building, being chrono boosted, rallying towards the third, already feels like there's a bunch long distance mining waiting for that third to finish. You see a Templar Archives, you see two forges, you see a Robo Bay. This guy's going mega late game. You could drone to 80 drones, right? So we see how an Overseer scout is just so huge because it informs us on what the Protoss player is doing. Double upgrades, two different advanced tech trees, and pro production. Oh, cool. I can build another literally 30 workers, maybe even more, because you're building buildings as well, right? Hydroden, double Evo chamber, Lurkaden, you know, all of that stuff. So that's kind of the question that the Zerg should be asking themselves, yeah, to understand it from their perspective. that's meant to be a joke but we're gonna give you a timeout because that does not clearly come across as that that way, that way. <laughs> lucky's on first says am i chasing a bunk strategy yeah for sure yes you are it's a troll strat lucky's on first have fun with it if you really think the idea of something is cool find a way to make it work is it the most efficient option it will never be the most efficient option it may be the funnest though and so making it work will give you a pure joy play it out but play it out yourself don't 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 be trying to encourage other people to do troll strats so much try to play it out yourself yeah um dr cheeks you might be able to can you might be able to like ask Ferencio like his thoughts on it and maybe maybe you can encourage him to do it um seven saw thanks for the two months mate thank you so much for the love dr cheeks seven saw also gifted a sub as well as the two months resub oh crap thank you mate damn are stalkers bad in this matchup? Stalkers are, are um, quite good as a supporting unit for like disruptors and colossus because they're they're ranged units. They're very flexible. They're a decent response to muters, not an amazing response, My but they're like man. a decent response to it, right? So so you can go for um, stalkers as like an in between against muters. You just versus like mass muters, it can get a bit out of control because um, the muters can all stack up and, and you know, out position your, your stalkers a little bit and your stalkers kind of suck versus lings. Um, so yeah. Are you going to do any Stargate openers now? It's going to out of fashion. I'm wondering if the opener, uh, this opener would be meta. Oh yeah, I mean, in, in Masters, I think we'll mix in some more Stargate builds. I think Stargate's a little bit fancier. So um, I'm thinking a few requests I've had is Colossus Phoenix in PVT. What else? I don't know. Basically, probably just opening with Oracle into quick third base and then playing Immortal Archon stuff. PVZ would be good. Immortal Archon charge. I think basically doing an Oracle opening into this sort of ground style would be good. You know, double, triple Oracle, something like that. Um, PVP, I've been doing a lot of a lot of Oracle openings. So I've already done a lot of Oracle openings in that matchup. And I did a bit of Stargate in the other matchups as well. Um, I think we did like a Stargate for every matchup maybe at one point, even in gold, I'm not sure, I'm trying to remember. We've done so many different builds, dude. Um, do you think you could have killed with a second DT warp in and just pushed the advantage? Maybe, but we like to just stick to a really tight game plan here because you never know what you're going into. So if you spend all your gas on that, it, it really slows down the Immortals coming out. It severely weakens your next push. So it, it could be a nice way to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely could have committed harder for sure, but yeah, it's a gamble. So it's kind of like a, a line where it's quite high risk, but it's incredibly rewarding in certain situations as well. So the reason why I don't think it's a valuable line to spend too much time on is you're kind of looking at, I've caught my opponent with their pants down and really fucked them up and done massive damage. Could I have also killed them? But the thing is, you're already probably going to kill them with the next push because you've already done so much damage and messed them up. So for me, it doesn't feel important for me to spend a lot of time investigating 
could I have killed them a little faster? Maybe I could have, but uh, does that make sense, right? That that idea of like, um, they're already in a bad spot. My other plan's already really good. I feel like it's kind of more important for me to spend time going, hey, in a situation, so, so one situation, for instance, here's one. Um, people would rush Lair Overseer Roach and not build spores, and they would shut down the pressure. And that was something, Cham used to do this to me, and I spent a lot of time looking at that and going, Jesus, this is, and he gets, and he goes straight to 66 drones off literally three queens, and he'd build like seven roaches and an overseer. And I was like, dude, this is disgusting how efficient this defense is, and I'm just too far behind. But then I realized he doesn't build spores, he's only got one overseer. So if I pull back, as I'm morphing the Archons, warp in three more DTs, and then I go drop the main base, pull the roaches up there, and DTs run into each mineral line, I could kill like 25 to 30 workers consistently and punish the fact that his defense was like the bare minimum into the maximum greed. So in a situation where I was, I was putting myself in a bad position because my pressure was getting shut down and I was then way behind because he was being greedy, then I figured out, okay, how can I follow up to find an opening here and not make this situation so bad for myself? So that was an example of when I used a second DT warp in secretly to, to come in and actually do massive damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Seven Soar, thank you very much for the uh, sub there. Uh, thanks for the content. I've been seeing all of your videos. Good day, mate. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling through chat, so I'm reading the same things twice like a dummy. Um, I have a bad habit of letting my opponents back into the game. I try to focus on where I can kill this guy. Yeah, the thing is, we've already got a plan for killing the guy, right? So if you're sitting back with no real plan, you're just kind of chilling, no, no attack timing in mind, definitely have an attack timing in mind. So it's good for you to work on that. But think of it ahead of time as much as possible. Don't think of it as like, oh, when can I magically star sense out an, o an opening to kill my opponent? That's that's really, really hard to do. That's so hard to do, you know? So um, so definitely you gotta, you gotta chill on that one, I think. With like, try to have, if you have the next step laid out ahead of time and you actually focus on just like be active with that Archon drop, you might find you often get as much damage as warping in a second round of DTs but your follow-up is so crisp, you're already in a good position. And it's just, it's nice to have things laid out ahead of time where you can. Um, on the other hand, I could have definitely committed harder with those Archons and DTs. Putting a bit of attention into that, I think is worthwhile. Ah, there's no defense. I really should have killed his third hatchery before pulling back in that game. That's, an ex that's definitely a, a very valid way of thinking about it. Yeah. You've also got to notice, because I'm not probing in that game, um, I don't have to build pylons very quickly, right? Because I just don't get supply blocked, which is really cool. Guys, thank you very much for the love. I really appreciate the support. And I think we will finish up for today's Diamond One and continue it next week and uh, get that all in one YouTube video. We are at 4260 MMR. We've got 140 MMR to go. And uh, I think these builds have really gone back to simplifying the kill timings on my opponents, right? We've done a lot of Zealot, Stalker, A moves, Zealot, Immortal, Archon, A moves, little bits of micro, but we're seeing the power of solid openings, some light harassment, and then just a big, super committed, super ironed out push to kill our opponent. And I wanted to go back to something like this after all the fancy shit we were doing earlier with spellcasters and being a little bit less focused on an exact timing attack because we're taking a third and taking a fourth and adding storm and adding disruptors. And here in Diamond 1, I've been like, hey, just a reminder, we also can focus more on the details of getting a push as sharp and tight as possible. And then kind of just taking our hands off the keyboard and mouse and letting the A move do the work. So that's always an option as well. Uh, has anyone built an Excel build theory? Oh, you mean like a way of like plugging in, like how can I get seven broodlords the quickest possible? There's been a few programs people have made like that, but there, it's, there's too many factors to take into account, so I've never found one that was useful. Pig, do you play or did you ever play StarCraft Remastered? I played a little bit. I played a little bit when it came out. I was a massive noob. Um, I have a lot of fun. I played a little bit, I think, during my subathon. I think I got to... What was my... I got to, like, what was it 1,600 ELO? 1,550? What was it? I think it was the beginner ELO. This is the thing you start at. I got back to 1,500 ELO, I think. I was like, yeah! I can't remember. It was it was fun. I, I kill a fair number of people while not really knowing what's going on in Remastered. Obviously playing at low level, but it's really fun. What do you mean about watching Vibrons to GM and it makes you question what do you mean Lucky's? Oh, you guys have noticed I'm using a lot more F2 today as well, to, just to group my army. Yeah. 
I use Superfusion from GitHub for build design and optimization. Oh, cool, Tugboat. So apparently there is an app called Superfusion on GitHub that uh, Tug Tugboat finds useful, gang. I'll have to check that out sometime. So the difference between bronze and diamond Protoss is in bronze you press A and in diamond you press F2 first. Yeah, basic. Oh, right, that was in response to that one. <laughs> oh, I just thought, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, that's that's it, Prey Man. Basically, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, the build's infinitely tighter. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, diamond 2 and diamond 3, we did much more, more complicated and convoluted builds. Whereas uh, I think it's good to kind of look at how deep in the weeds you can get and it can be a helpful experience, but every now and then you just got to go back to a simple timing attack and uh keep things ironed out ahead of time luckies thank you so much for the 300 biddies dude i appreciate the love thank you everybody um i've been building too many stalkers in general you shouldn't be building many stalkers ever in maximum designs unless you're a micro beast those colossus disruptor armies are very micro intensive yeah yeah don't 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 use stalker sentry um Unless you use it the way I did it in Gold League, where I made lots of force fields as the focus. It's a really good way to do it. Um, I think it was Gold League Protoss, where I did lots of Sentry, Stalker, Colossus in every matchup. Just focused on learning force fields as a skill, because it's such a cool ability. And uh, otherwise, generally speaking, Zealots are just so much more bang for buck. They're 75 resources cheaper, they do more damage, they have the same hit points, they're just a better all-around unit. Stalker shoots up, shoots down, it blinks. So it is better if you are using it expertly. Expertly. But if you're not using it expertly, the Zealot's just better. Um, thank you very much, my friendos. I just designed a two Widow Mine drop in three minutes and four seconds, says Tugboat. You can put waypoints in it. Yeah. The thing is, did you did you remember? Did you remember to like, did you make it so you're actually safe, right? <laughs> Versus, like, an Adept Stalker or something. I mean, obviously, that's, like, a one base. I think you can learn things from those apps. You just, as long as you're critical. As long as you, you learn things. You're like, oh, whoa. Because it just, it shows you ways of doing things you wouldn't think of. As long as you apply critical thinking. And you're like, wait, can I defend this, this, this? You should be good. We've got one more game here in Diamond today. Before I go into, uh, before I end for today's stream. And then pick it up in next week's live stream. All right, guys, we've got PVT. Uh, okay, check it out, PVT. So we're doing a blink opening and um, we're gonna try and use that Adept to see if it's a three racks build or not. We really thought the last time was a three racks and of course it ended up being a neck build. <laughs> we misread that one, didn't we? That was uh, it's quite a lot of Marines they built though, to be fair, so. I swear, I swear I was scouting, scouting just fine, man. Now we want to try and expand um, along the edge of the map if possible, and the reason for that, guys, is we don't want to do a triangle, because we don't have Stargate. If we had a Stargate, we could, um, oops, actually built an extra code there, not bad. Um, if we had a Stargate, this would be a different story, because we could actually, like, with Phoenix, shut down drops in the dead space, but we don't have that. So we want to expand in a flat line along the map. Maybe even taking the fourth all the way down there. Yeah, I think we will, just to kind of prove that point. Sometimes I might take the fourth over here, just because it's a bit more compact. Yeah, okay, we'll take the fourth there. I mean, it's not as important as the third base anyway, so that's all right. All right, guys, so we're going to go take the Nexus and then the Cybercore. Um, we are going to go up here and then back down there. Got the Nexus and then the Cybercore. Okay. This guy can go on minerals. You can wall off there. Oh, that's... Is that... That is wall off. Oh, thank God. I swore for a second there. So we restart probes after that, guys. And notice I, I told this guy to just queue up there. So we're going to be blocking this. We're in diamond one. We can be dickheads. And if you want, you can put a pylon down there. It's what I call a spite pylon. Um, some people would argue that it's really stupid and not worth it. I'm going to go back in just to see, because a lot of people don't go Reaper anymore. If it's a Reaper, this is a free kill, but... Okay, so he does go Command Center. It's just, it's, it's delayed a little bit. If it's a Marine on the high ground, we'll see it. If it's an add-on, we'll see it. And, oh, look at that. Okay, so we got Adept, Warp Gate, 16, 3, 3, and just checking the minerals. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. See, they're all doubled up. Now, we don't check that much later on in the game, do we? Because we're APM... You know, we only have so much APM, right? You require more 
Now, because we know there's a, sto uh, a Reaper, guys, we're going to shade across the map. We're going to chrono another Stalker. Oh, no! Oh, this is so annoying. Oh, no! Oh, this is not good. All right, guys, we're going to send the Adept across the map to try and uh, kill him. Let's see if we can kill the SCV here. All right, and now... We're going to keep Chrono Boosting Stalkers while rallying probes up there. And we want to build a shield battery down here as well. And this is obviously really annoying, guys. Oh, and he got this up as well? Are you kidding me? And he's going for what appears to be a Widow Mind drop. Okay. Is there an SCV over here or no? Okay, so now you see we have two stalkers. So now we can grab eight workers and send them down here. This is how you respond to this bunker rush, guys. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, and he swapped this over? That I was not expecting. Oh, cool, we're going to kill the uh, Reapers. That's nice. Okay, so what do we do, guys? Well, we're very late on it, but we go double gateway and forge, and it's acceptable to be late on that because, well, we just lost a shitload of mining, didn't we? So it is what it is. Okay, so now we know it's reacted factory, which means we have to watch out for Hellions and Widow Mine Drops, guys, okay? So just keep warping in Stalkers. We're even going to chrono boost that. We're going to put one guy up there on a different control group, and the other guys are going to hang out down here. I'm going to try and go out to chase this, because we can always recall if we need. Oh, we don't really have energy for that. Okay, maybe not. Another Stalker up there. We're going to get a third base. Now, we could get a Forge, a Cannon, sorry, but I'm not going to. And the reason is we saw Hellions, guys. So I, I feel like against Hellions, we don't really need to freak out here. There could still be Widow Mines coming in. Of course, we don't know that. We don't know what's going on. Okay, check it out. Okay, so we're going to grab all of our Stalkers. And we're going to send those across the map. And I'm going to keep these guys here. So we're going to build a cannon in the main. And it looks like we lost some probes there somehow. Oh, no, we didn't. They were just misrallied by it. Okay. So why are we getting the sentry, guys? The reason we're getting the sentry is so we can hallucinate scout. Otherwise, we are just probing up. And you guys know what comes next. Charge and then a shit ton of gateways. So we're going to try and get a container. Maybe poke in for some damage as all these stalkers get here. Okay, so these guys are running into literally no defense at all. Now, you can see that my opponent... I was very... I did some good multitask decision making there. But I was like, ah, oh, there's no way he's doing anything else. So what did we do? I want to I break that one down for you guys. So there was a really important point where we chose to go across the map with the Stalkers. And the reason is, I was like, look... He could do a Widow Mind Drop. We've already killed one or two Hellions. And then I killed another one over here. And when I killed this Hellion, I was like, look, I don't have much information with this build. It is part of the build. I'm going to make a Sentry so I can get some more information. And you know what? I'm going to be greedy and skip the cannons. And now I did start a cannon in the main as I was going across the map with the stores. I kind of buckled. It was like, well, I probably should get a cannon just in case. I don't know what he's doing. And it turns out he did build four Hellions, then four Widow Mines before doing this. Now this wall off and this bunker is terrible. And this is the biggest mistake he made. Should have had his bunker and depots like here or something. And probably should have been going straight for tank. But my opponent here was trying to get a Raven and he was trying to just go straight up to three barracks, hope that he could pin me back with the threat of Hellion run by number one. And then number two, the Widow Mine drop for the armory, right? And if I don't counter attack at all, I'm gonna get absolutely wrecked here. Um, but I saw, I saw a bunker that was barely shooting me. I don't even know if it had marines in it at first. Like, it felt like it was doing nothing. 
And then I just kind of A moved those stalkers. I obviously had to deal with this initially, so I threw a cannon down in these two bases that didn't have one. And then we do realize, oh, we can kill that one. These Widow Mines have all fired. The cannons are going to clear them up. So let's focus back on the stalkers. We looked back, we went, okay, thankfully these guys are still alive. They very well all could have died to a siege tank while I wasn't looking. And that would have been okay. Obviously the priority was defending my economy. And I would have had three bases. So even with the economic damage, what's the first thing I'm doing? Chronoing probes across all three Nexi and queuing up like 10 probes. Because when you chrono probes, you do it so, so quickly. Now this is a really tricky build from my opponent. And if we don't counterattack with these stalkers, um, yeah, he's got a third halfway done. He's got three racks about to start kicking in with like, he's going to be starting stim and upgrades and he's going to get through this dangerous point in the game. But this is why having the forge is so nice because number one, we're playing mass sell at Stalker so we want lots of upgrades. But having just one forge from really early, I find is really nice. Uh, rather than going double forge, we just keep chronoing it. Because it also allows us to build cannons if we see a sign of Widow Mine drop or something like this. So we very well could have just had these cannons down blind earlier and not even taken any damage from this Widow Mine drop, or very little at the very least, which would have been pretty cool too. I'm telling you guys, if a Terran is doing this sort of Widow Mine drop play, they do not like seeing you do this at all. They get really frustrated. Let's go over that response early on though, and let's write it down. So, because this is a really annoying thing, especially if you've been greedy like me and built both pylons on the high ground. If you have a pylon on the low ground, you can get the battery up and defend a bit quicker. But I had to immediately, when I saw what was going on here, guys, what did we do? We had to build a pylon, build a battery while chrono boosting stalkers. So we queue up a stalker. We queue up another stalker in a moment. We then put, put out a battery. We do keep probing. There's a slight gap in it here for a moment. And we do try to focus the SCV. Now, I figure the Stalkers are really the main thing for killing a bunker. Adept's kind of terrible for that. And I figured his command center was kind of late. So if I made this decision earlier to send the Adept across the map, that would have been really awesome. High chance of you catching some SCVs out, doing some damage, really distracting your opponent, right? So I do think the Adept across the map, if you've gone Adept first already, definitely a good choice. Um, so let's write it down, shall we? I guess I should write under PVT. PVT map versus uh, Bunker Reaper. PVT versus Bunker Reaper on natural. So what do we respond with, guys? Super straightforward, right? It is Chrono two Stalkers. Battery on natural. Send a depth across the map to try and harass, disrupt their base. Try to target SCV first. You can use up your shields doing this before battery is up. Keep probing, but rally all probes to main base. You can go back to mining as soon as stalkers are busting the bunker. So as soon as your stalkers are attacking the bunker, you're already going back to it. So that's really nice. If the Hellions had gotten away, would you still have gone across with the stalkers? I thought they got away. Um, I might have sent a single stalker to go see what's going on at the front of his base, but or, or maybe a four stalker squad, because that's enough to one-shot Marines. But I actually thought the other two Hellions got away. So I queued my Stalkers to kill them. And at this point, I looked over and was like, ah, oh, I didn't kill them. Mm, they must be hiding somewhere else. I literally didn't realize I got those last two Hellions. But I had an Adept and a Sentry. I figured two Hellions aren't that big of a threat. I've got Warp Gates. I've got a battery in me natural. I'm building a cannon in my main. What's the worst that can happen, right? And um, so it worked out quite well. I do think because this build my opponent's doing is so chaotic, um, they really need to make sure that bunker is close by so they can repair it. Imagine if they just had the bunker there, pulled some SCVs to repair it. Depots aren't exposed out front. They'd be fine, right? Um, they, that would be really huge. So number one, they should do that. And number two, I think they probably shouldn't be doing so many add-on swaps because they're microing Hellions and Widow Mine Drops. They should be better at pulling their, their Hellions to the side of the map. And I think they should be building their next four barracks all at once and then just plonking them down on add-ons or just putting them in a row and letting them build their own add-ons 
specifically so that they can um, batch up their macro. Because you can see he was floating a lot of mac uh, money through quite a few points in this game. There was even, even before my stalkers arrived, I believe there was a little bit of money floating. And that's just because this build is really hard to do. You've got the bunker rush, then you got the 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 uh, hellions, then you've got the widow mine. It's a it's like a lot of different pieces coming together. I also think this widow mine drop could have gone on the much more direct path. It took so long to get across the map. If it was there earlier, it could have been more impactful. That would have been really huge. Thank you, Drexia, for the hundred biddies. And guys, that's going to be a nice win there over Steezy Stims player who I think if we gave a few more minutes was going to have a huge macro follow up and cause us a lot of problems. Um, I definitely felt we needed to go across the map to see what was going on with at least a single stalker. We made the sentry, which meant 30 seconds after the sentry warps in, you have hallucination energy. That would have seen what was going on. But yeah, if there was still four hellions around on my side, I think I keep the stalkers at home and I probably just split four stalkers into the main, maybe five, and then a few more stalkers on the third. And I'd probably be a bit more focused on warping in stalkers at that point while adding the upgrades, charge, and then five or six more gateways to get up the uh, the production on the three base. Yeah, and just continuing with the build. All right, guys, so we're playing a PVZ here. We're gonna be starting game. Does it matter? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Touche, good sir. <laughs> Thank you, Theo, for the 300 bits, my dude, going above and beyond. All right, guys, uh, so we're just hopping back in and resuming Diamond 1 here. So this is the point where I'm actually doing this a week later. Oops. Felt like that was a little sticky. All right, we're gonna send a probe down a little early and that's just because this natural is so far away from my main base. So that's why we're doing that. And um, funnily enough, I'm actually just realized I'm using the wrong mouse, guys. So let me just move that mouse. That's just my, <laughs> that's my bloody, <laughs> so dumb that I'm using too much. I really should just get a new mouse that does everything correctly. I've got two mice each of which has a different broken feature on it right now. Um, all right. So guys, this is a PVZ, right? So gateway, chrono, go for a scout. We'll see if there's a hatch first, and then we'll go in there and maybe harass those mobs a little bit. <clears throat> so, um, this is going to be PVZ. Uh, obviously, we take the gas, 16 on the north, so now we rally on gas, one onto gas, and then we rally to the natural. All right, awesome. Um, it's gonna be the, the, the fake third base, right? That's the whole strategy here, the fake third base. Now, we don't see a natural, guys, so we immediately need to respond. And we see a gas is up, but, oh, oh, okay, no. That, okay, very standard build, guys. I was worried about an all-in, but I think, oh, I was gonna say, I think my opponent's going gold base, but I see that probe come down, so I might as well block it for a few seconds. We now go Nexus, we then get Cybercore. You can see my pylon's badly placed because my wall off sucks. So we're gonna check his gold and then go back and see what's going on there. We resume pro production at pro production at 21. Same as always. We do not see a gold base. Okay, so this is really interesting. So our opponent didn't actually build a gold base. I really thought they must have there. And that's a 22 second pylon. I accidentally built that one supplier too early. And, oh, no hatchery. Does, do you have my gold base, mate? Oh, it's a one base roach warren. Okay, guys. So one base roach warren, that's kind of crazy. Now I could obviously go Stargate to counter this, and that's probably gonna be the best play. I think we're gonna do that because obviously these units just don't shoot up, right? So I'm gonna build a zealot to start here as well. And then we're gonna go a second gateway. And we'll get a shield battery. Um, so notice we're just gonna, we'll keep building probes, but they're not the highest priority, right? I think getting an extra pylon over here would be probably way more important. And if we can chrono some units out, that would be great as well. So let's, I'm gonna make stalkers. Now I could wall off my base completely and that might be a really good idea, right? Because if you think about it, if they're all in on one base, all you need to do is stop them getting inside, right? And that's it. So I'm gonna completely wall off my base and we're gonna make a Void Ray, which I don't have money for right now. So definitely could have skipped the probes there. And, oh, he's got a hatchery over here as well, does he? Oh my Lord. <laughs> 
So we're gonna try and uh Oh shit, that, that actually died real quick, didn't it? Okay, and then we can put another cyber core down. Now this is crazy guys, I, I was not expecting the um the wall off there. The uh the, the queens to arrive. So this is I was like, where is this hatchery? And uh very, very cute build. And I think we might actually die to this. I've never seen anything like this one before, so. Well, because we got the shield batteries up, maybe we are okay, actually. I think we can just fight this with the shield battery. So we're repairing the gateways. Ooh, there's a spore crawler there. We're just gonna keep building void rays right now and chrono boosting them. And I'm not really I'm just A moving guys. I did focus the ravages a little bit. Whenever the queens fall back a lot. So we just don't want to chase into the spore crawlers at all. So we're just gonna try and fight the queens here. And we just don't want to chase into the um, other things. Okay, we've got another Void Ray. Just keep chronoing Void Rays right now, guys. And obviously, I think we can overcharge. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and fight the Spore. But it's just outside of healing range for me. Okay, we can heal there. All right, so we just we took that out. Now we've got the healing and the void rays are here. Okay, so now we're going to try and make um, more gateways. I'm going to keep chronoing probes now as well. And we'll keep fighting these queens wherever we can. Just try to target fire the queens now. And I guess we can make air weapons as well. I can also maybe just kill the drones on this base, but it looks like he doesn't really have any, so that's okay. Now, right now, prismatic alignment's ready. Okay, so we've got four gateways. I'd like to go twilight, because I think charge is probably the best thing that scales well here. Um, we've got more void rays coming out. the void rays scale pretty well so now we can get charge and we can also just start building zealots okay so we're going to try and take these gases now he's obviously transitioning from here so we do have to be a little careful try and focus the ravager down that's four queens is it yeah it's four queens so one thing you can do is you can go around here and just try to um How many gateways do we have? Oh, jeez. Next overcharge, I'll go out and fight him for sure. So the reason we're going charge is because he's getting lots of things that beat Void Rays. And generally speaking, Zealots do well versus things that beat Void Rays. Oh, okay. Oh man, I spent all my energy, which is why I don't have enough for overcharge right now. Research complete. 
So Ravages, Queens, these units are not good versus, uh, versus this stuff. And you can see we're going to grab workers from the main. Put those on the gas here. I'm going to keep building Void Rays, I guess. And let's go for it. So we're going to A-move now, guys. Um, looks like he has a really good army, but I think we have more. Pulling back the weak Void Ray there at the front. Trying to pull back another weak Void Ray. He does finally kill one. More Zealots coming in. And we can see this was definitely the transition we needed. Just, they're such a valuable unit, you know? I'm going to hang out here and just kill whatever pops out of these eggs. Turns out it's Hydras by the looks of it, and then we can go across the map. We can just check his uh, gold base hasn't been taken. We can take my third, get another Void Ray, and yeah. do you have the gold? No gold. All right, yeah, that's game. He'll have his natural men be on maybe 35 workers is what I guess, just from how this game's gone. And you can see there, Hydras in the open. And really well played by Barcode here. Um, honestly, very scary push. I, I should have checked for a proxy hatchery. I don't know why, I just assumed there wasn't one. And then when I saw the second gas in the Roach Horn, it kind of, in my mind, said, oh, I guess there wasn't a proxy hatchery. He's just going one base Ravager. But I should have known that this was way too late to be one base Ravager. And that the previous thing of, oh, just buy time, get a Void Ray out, it'll kill Unlimited Roaches and Ravagers was obviously wrong. It also meant I had a lot less time than I realized, and that's because they didn't have to walk across a giant map, did they? They had to walk from the third base to my base. So if I'd realized this, I think I would have just been a bit more focused on building Stalkers out of my gateways and just chronoing Stalkers. Um, I wouldn't have bothered with the Stargate necessarily. And I would have just said Stalkers, Batteries, and just Overwhelm. I also might not have, well, I probably wouldn't have walled myself off. Because I'd be like, well, I actually want to be going out here and fighting you. And using Battery Overcharge and kicking your ass and that sort of stuff. Would have made things much easier if we just did two gate Stalker. Um, yeah, well played to my opponent. But yeah. This is really good play. Gino played an all-in style. Climbing attacks, some occasional macro. Not a bad way to do it. As long as you focus on those details in StarCraft, right? Sometimes giving yourself a simpler game plan, but then giving yourself a higher standard of execution, attention to detail is like so good. But yeah, you can see that if you guys are ever in a situation where you're unsure of how to respond, the first step is always wall off, usually against most Zerg all-ins. As I said in this scenario, if I was chronoing Stalkers and realized it was a proxy hatch, I wouldn't have bothered them. But with the Void Rays, this was absolutely important just to you know, buy time and just protect my economy a little bit. And you can see the Void Ray plus the Battery Overcharge just doesn't care at all about the Queens. As long as we don't get hit by Corrosive Files, so powerful with the Battery Overcharge, you know? Really, really useful. But uh, yeah, we kept building Void Rays, realizing, well, you know what? the power of batteries we can always beat queens with void rays potentially as long as we have similar numbers right so he's got three queens i've got two void rays so he's up by one but you know as long as it stays at that level you can see i'm, I'm as long as i keep building batteries i should be okay it'll be hard for him to move his spores up here now looking at this i do feel he probably could have just shoved a spore crawler up here at this point right i didn't have battery overcharge if my opponent moved that up there i would have had a really hard time and that's why like i said Let's go back to the start and talk about what's missing, because this initial scouting is so important. So I was like, okay, cool, you've gone, you know, into a, what looks like a pretty standard gas pool timing after hatchery. So I was like, it must be a gold base, right? So I checked the gold and I'm like, oh, it wasn't a gold? And then I come back and I should have at this point sent a second probe out already, guys, to check here, here, then my gold, and then go back to my natural. So after putting the cyber core down, I should have done a little checky check for proxy hatch because there's very strong proxy hatchery builds um normally i think of really powerful proxy hatch builds as just mass circling you know um maybe with a spine crawler to help breach the wall where you, you spread creep and then you get a spine crawler doesn't work so well on this map because of the ramp you can't root a spine on the ramp which is making it really awkward ggs 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 
hectic first game um, on the, the continuation here of Diamond 1. And a very good build from Barco. That is a Masters 3 player, I'm quite sure. Masters 3 starts at 4,400 MMR. So we've got 80 uh, or 87 MMR to go. Generally speaking, are there times where you would build static defense? I mean, it really depends on your build, the exact timing, the situation, right? So people are often asked this sort of thing. They're like, hey, when should I build static defense? Like, what, if I scout what? And it's kind of like, well, if you scout that you will need it. And I, I get that's not a satisfying answer, but you got to understand there's thousands of situations in StarCraft, right? So it's kind of like, you know, and it depends on your style as well, because it's like, well... If you're fighting a tank push, shield battery is not that important, right? Putting down cannons and batteries doesn't do anything. If you've got a mass zealot army, your job is to flank that army and engage it, preferably before it sieges up, right? That's huge. If you're using like Colossus and stuff, it's more important because you've got a longer ranged army that's more willing to like fight with batteries rather than an army that has to kind of ambush them. So there's like, that's just one example of like one of the 4,000 variations that are going to affect like, hey, when should I build static defense? And it's like, unless maybe we're talking about the PVT build at that time. Um, because basically with the PVT build, we're always just going to build cannons whenever we need them, which if you think about it, um, is when do we, when do we need, need it? It's when we need detection is basically it. <laughs> it's basically, are they building cloak banshees or an armory for their widow mines, one or the other? All right, guys, we've got an actual barcode player this time around here. We're getting into the try-hard depths of the ladder. The heights of the ladder, the depths of the ladder, you decide. And we're still not blocking the opponent's expansion. Now, someone asked this last week. He said, hey, shouldn't I be blocking the opponent's expansion? I think it's super valuable to do that. Um, I just don't really focus on it. But you absolutely can. And it makes their opening a little bit more awkward. So if you guys want to do that, though, you will need to learn a whole bunch of details. So what do I mean by that? Why have I not really taught blocking the opponent's natural? Well, it's a good idea of something I can add on as we hit Masters League. The reason I don't is because there's different rush distance on every map. So if you send your probe after your pylon on most maps, you'll get there in time. However, let's just open up that rush distance actually. Uh, on some maps you won't. So then you need to send a probe even before putting your pylon down if you want to get the block down. So it's like, eh... You know, there's so many, there's so many different variations then. If you need to know the map, you need to think of, you know, know your reaction in different situations. And all of that stuff uh, adds a lot of complexity, which I'm, I'm not sure I'm willing to put on Twitch chat and YouTube and the StarCraft audience's shoulders until we're in Masters League. I think it's, it's a lot of variation. And I always talk about, hey, try to get consistency in your play wherever possible. Don't try to... How, oh, yeah, like in this situation this and this this and if that that and have like 10 different conditions just in your opening build order you've already added so much complexity and for most of us who are just baboons um it just it makes the game a little bit stressful because you're trying to think of all these different variations and your opponent hasn't even thrown anything in your direction yet so depending on you as a player and how confident you are that's a lot of lava saved up as the pool finishes guys hello mr making lots of zerglings hello um, <laughs> okay guys, so we rally to our natural, uh, we are going to quickly check for a third base and then our probe's going to hang out out front and just confirm, hey, are you coming across this map real early? Because I think you're coming across this map real early with some zerglings. So he's on a patrol path. Now we're still going to rally um, these units across and we will, of course, as always, rally that stalker to try and block the choke point. I haven't seen Zerglings rush out, so I think we're good, guys. Um, yeah, I think we should be alright. We'll just confirm the thirds there with the probe while the Adept continues in. Okay. Build a Robo, and let's go in. Because I didn't see any Zerglings, I figured I could dive in here and maybe kill a drone or two. And now we're just going to run. We killed two drones, so if we lose this, this is totally fine. That is a lot of Zerglings. That's eight Zerglings. Oh my god. So, okay. You know what, guys? If you're ever wondering, just build a shield battery for safety. It's not a bad idea. So I'm going to build a shield battery. I'm going to send my adepts back forwards, see if they can see any links coming across the map after me. I think it was just eight safety links, to be honest, but just in case. So my DT shrine is a little late, guys. And 
Let's put the Adept in the wall, because the Overlord comes in. And we build our three gateways. Same build order as always. DT Shrine, then we build the gateways. Kill for a few more probes. Not too many, though. Oh, he's bringing in another Overlord. Okay. Now, obviously, we do need that War Prism. That needs to be started by four minutes at the absolute latest when you're getting used to the build. And once you get better at the build, you want to aim closer and closer for 345. Now, the reason we're a little late is we did build the safety battery. Just because I saw a bunch of Zerglings, my Adept was already very damaged. And I was like, mm, let's just have that one little bit of extra safety there. That's going to make me feel a bit better. Now, you might be like, why am I rallying this probe here? It's because rather than pulling a probe off minerals, this guy had to rally to the natural anyway. So super advanced tip there is basically use him to build the two pylons. Three dudes there, three dudes there. At this point, I think we feel very confident shuffling those. Now notice, I move it past and press hold position. That's how we get that one there. And we're gonna go for four DTs. And look at the timing on this, guys. DT Shrine is a few seconds late. But four minutes, 41, four DTs. And we can basically win the game right here. Now, you guys know, I just executed way above Diamond 1 level. So we're gonna be nice. We're gonna hang out with those DTs for a good 15, 20 seconds before we go in, okay? Just give our opponent a chance, give you guys a chance to see the next part of the build. Now remember, this is where you go for the third base. Oh wait, no it isn't. We go Observer, then Immortal, Charge, and a whole shitload more gateways. All right, here we go. These guys can come in. Now you can do individual pickups or you can just select them all and pick up like that. Let's go down here, more Varkons. So five gateways, right? I think it takes us to nine. Yep, we've got Charge, we've got an Immortal. Beautiful, so third base is next. And then we're gonna just hide in the corner. Now, if the Zerglings catch me here, they kill those Archons. This is why if you can do it in like a little a little nook or something, it gives you a, a bit more solid. Um, that pylon positioning is utter trash, by the way, just in case you guys are wondering. The Archons can go back to the front. We did see a lot of Zerglings, of course. And remember, after the Nexus, that's when we build the pylons. Okay, guys? All right, so. Oh, look at that. So remember, what do we do? We focus fire. Remember how I used to just always a move? Nowadays, dark days, we focus fire with the Archons, guys. And then we pick them up after killing an Archon, a uh, Roach or two. And we can also go pick off some more Creep Tumors, or we can disengage. So we're gonna put that Nexus back down just to continue the, yes, I totally wanna have a Nexus. Make sure the Immortals are still building. And just keep building DTs because we need to actually morph those into Archons. So we're gonna clear up some Creep Spread. And he didn't actually hit the Archons, which is nice of him. Let's just pull this back for now, okay? So, why are we warping in DTs? Because they actually need to morph, as I said. And as this Immortal comes out, we're going to do the two Immortal timing, alright guys? So, what do we do? Two Immortal timing, let's make just one more pylon. Add these guys, add this, and let's go back to the front. We're going to attack this third base. One last arc on. We've got charge, right? Yep. Got a few probes rallied to the third. Yes. It's a random adept there. Morph this arc on and remember, seven minutes thirty at the latest. Now we're already queuing that prism to warp in there. And he's breaking his rocks, no worries. Let's aim move this base. Whoa, <laughs> pull the prism back, pull the prism back. Oh my god. Where did this army come from? We've got hydras? That's crazy. So he's rushed up the tech tree a little bit too far, guys, and so we should be able to just overwhelm him. Now remember, always just grab a few zealots, put them in a base, and then the rest of your army can just chase after him. And remember, with the zealots you warp in, you just click them into the base, and that's it. Now, we are trying to kill these hydras and roaches, and we're just going to keep clicking these zealots and just, just click them in, click them in, click them in. And this two zealots in the third killed every drone in the meantime. Now, if you can focus immortals on Archon on roaches, and if you can focus archons on pumped up units, that's gonna be awesome. Whether or not you actually execute, that's another story. Now I did some pretty high level stuff in this game in terms of the speed I played at, and that's because I'm explaining so many details as I go, so it's hard for me to consciously slow things down. So I hope that wasn't a bit too I was bouncing around a little more than I would normally like to. I'll try to slow it down in the next game. As always, guys, it's a constant process trying to trying to slow down a little bit. It's it's difficult. Um, 
So yeah, we built a safety shield battery and it slowed our build down ever so slightly, but it's not that big of a deal. The high repeat rate warp-ins definitely help out. Um, you guys might notice that I actually changed my repeat rate settings um, in the Windows registry since our last session. So that actually makes a big difference. Shout out to Scarlet for that one. Um, does actually make my warp-ins way quicker. So overall, pretty standard build order. I was a little worried about getting all in, so we built a shield battery. Um, we also hung around with our probe just to make sure there weren't Zerglings flooding out as well. And that is because my opponent was a little slow on drawing. So my opponent made a small error. And this freaked me out a little bit. So you see that small error is going to be seen in a moment. And that is the fact that they should be building drones right now, guys. Drones, 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 drones. But they're not. So I was like, oh, these must be Zerglings. Because they, they waited for two lava. And then they built two drones. It's just a slight moment where they weren't building workers. Just a small mistake from my opponent. But it meant they could have been building... Six, four zerglings there, six zerglings, and then another eight, and then another ten. They could have had ten zerglings sneaking around my first adept coming across the map, and then coming across the map and basically arriving here right about now. The first zerglings would get here, and I'd be like, oh shit! And if they obviously kill the stalker or, or kill the pylon, I'm in huge trouble. They've got to pull probes, and then if their ling speed kicks in and they're flooding behind that, things get really scary very fast. That's, of course, why we put our robo in the wall as well, because we need to make sure that wall off is up in time now uh, i have been a little consistently late on my dt shrine that's one of the biggest mistakes you guys see me making regularly i could put that down a little earlier i've got the resources for it so no reason why i couldn't but it's always dt shrine gate 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 prism pylon gas gas pylon pylon and remember from this point where we want to start the prism it's okay if you want to maybe miss like a second of probe production like arguably some people would say don't start this probe get the prism started then you can cue the probe right because if you really want to hit the sharpest possible dark templar timing you want to be warping in probably about four minutes 33 or 32 something like that you could do with this same build order now there's other build orders there's like a three gate version where you get a quick third gas and you get that prism out crazy fast and you literally are warping in at i think like 4 15 or something like that four minutes 15 where obviously look at the zerg at 4 15 there's no way He's going to be dealing with DTs at that time. So there are some like super crisp pro gamer timings you can do, right? We're going to hit the fastest possible DTs. We're trying to give you guys more of a general, um, it's a little like, hey, if we need to drop a battery, we'll do it. Hey, we'll get a stalker to the nice scouting. Hey, we'll get all four gases and four gateways. So it's not as complicated a transition into the third base. We're giving you guys a bit more of a general uh, build order that's going to work quite nicely. Now, if I did go in with these DTs, you can see guys, I would have just won the game, right? Because my opponent, even though they've got spores in the main and natural, they've only got a handful of lings. Yes, they're going up to 20 lings. That's not going to beat four Dark Templar. 40 T's wreck 20 Zerglings. Especially if you, with a bit of pickup micro, you'll kill most of those Zerglings. You won't lose a single DT. Um, there's no detection here, so I could just kill that Spore Crawler. Uh, and my opponent's also down on workers on me. So... Basically, we've, we've, we've just out macroed our opponent. We have more stuff than them, right? Now, we obviously waited about 20 seconds, went in when the spore was finished and the lings were all grouped together. Killed a few lings. We killed, I think, seven zerglings for didn't even lose any hit points. You'll see when I'm doing that on my main account, I'm a bit riskier with it. I very regularly lose DTs, but most of the time I'm picking up red hit point DTs at the last second after killing tons of shit. And I'm picking them up and then dropping them back out so they can get more hits off. And the enemy units have changed targets to the other DTs. And then... You know, often I'll save 40 T's in the orange, the red, go back, turn them into Archons, they're full hit point Archons. Now that cancel on the third we don't care about. This Zealot Warping is really bad. Luckily my opponent accidentally clicked on the Zealot in the back. The reason this kind of worked there is because if he A moves, they'll all just go after the Adept and they'll try to come around here and fight single file. Um, he can't just A move because until these units finish warping in, they have lower attack priority. What he should have done is click them all on this Zealot and then maybe boxed half of them or some of them and just clicked on one of these front two zealots. But he misclicked on the zealot that was nestled in the back and that's why he had to back off there because it wasn't doing anything. What do you do versus Bio Widow Mine as Protoss when you have silver or gold APM, says Base Boomer. So Bio Widow Mine is just like a real standard composition Base Boomer. The question is not, not what do you do versus that because that's a very normal army. The question is how do you play a good strategy so you're a protoss player you're in gold or silver um you should absolutely have you watched any of my previous bronze to gm mate 
because if you haven't, you really should check out just the very first videos and watch from the start um, and just do that build. You will just be able to absolutely smash people with a big two base immortal archon timing. If you, if you click on that link there in the chat, first video in that. Um, yeah, bronze to GM part part one, absolutely. Uh, would be be absolutely massive, right? And and those first few sections are going to be, you know, teaching you a solid style. It's going to do stuff. So you don't need to counter bio mine because it's like real normal for sure. Should be able to get it just with um just by having more stuff and just killing them. So you just got done with military? Oh really, Captain Harper? Where'd you hear that, mate? That's awesome. Are you implying Kerrigan was only powerful when enhanced by some alien being? Zerg Kerrigan is not herself. What are you talking about? Zerg, the Zerg literally helped bring out her true will to dominate the universe. You'll be here. Oh, it was the Zerg. It wasn't even her. You're taking agency away from her. Seriously. Idiots. Give, put some respect on my lady. Put some respect on my lady. To be real though, I, just in, in general and, and you know, I do like mass murdering crazy Kerrigan as a character, right? <laughs> Same thing, it's like, you look at like the lore in Warcraft 2 and you're like, oh, orcs are just these savage badasses. Oh, that is not where I meant that to be, but okay, whatever. We'll leave a little hole there, I guess. <laughs> I didn't really want a hole there, but <laughs> I could always block it with a probe or something if like a reaper's coming in, I guess. I was meant to go Cybercore there, Gateway there, to um to get the uh, the nice little semi wall. Anyway, guys, so we are playing PVT. We're going to be doing the Blink build. Um, good luck, have fun here to Pickle. I accidentally said good luck, have fun twice, not because I was being like, give me a response. Uh, it was just me not paying attention because I'm a simpleton. And okay. All right, so Control Group One, Control Group Two. We want to just check. Did you take the gases? And the answer is just one. Okay. Then we want to go Cybercore. Oops. You go there. You go there. Resume probing. And at about a minute 40 is when they can afford to put the command center down. So that's when you want to queue up a nice little pentagram if you can. Oh. And we are going to lose our probe because I wasn't microing it, but it's more important to macro at home than it is to do that, remember? Okay, guys, so 21 second gas, 22 second pylon. Now, that only says 21, pig. That's because I lost a probe. Remember, we can add plus one to that to remember where we are in our build right now. But we did delay the expansion, which is good. Now, the downside is that what if an expansion didn't go down? We technically haven't confirmed that our opponent expanded. We're going to chronoboost and adapt here. So technically, right, we didn't confirm that. So I, I, there could be two barracks building up here that I don't know about. Now, I think that's a low enough percentage chance that I'm okay risking it. Up to you guys if you want to try and, you know, send another probe across immediately in that case. I'm happy to wait for my adept. Now, I'm going to just check the ledge here while we shade forwards. And if we do see a reaper, we can cancel it. But we don't see a reaper. And we're chrono boosting this stalker. So I figure there's enough downtime between the Adept leaving and the Stalker coming out that I'm not too worried. And I like to rally the Stalker there. And what I want to do is I want to put that Stalker on Control Group 2. So I have Control Group 1, Control Group 2. Control Group 1, Control Group 2. Okay. And well done. Okay, guys. So we tried to kill the Marine. This bunker was slightly late. We see a very quick reactor. And we're just going to leave that Adept there. Okay. Let's go home. We make Blink. Now remember, we stop at two gateway units, and that's when we go. That gateway positioning is so bad, because it stops me building on top of it as well. We go two gateways and a forge. Of course, our, our very special build. Keep building probes. And then we want to just keep shading every now and then. Try to hit the, adept, the, the Hellion there, guys. Now the reason why we want to try and hit the Hellion... Jeez, let's build another Stalker, which we meant to build straight away. I think we might have killed the Hellion, or at least close. We're going to recall the uh, Adept. So, Hellion. See, maybe more Hellions, maybe Medivacs. I don't know exactly what my opponent's building, guys. But let's quickly get out there to take a third. We want to make plus one. Make sure those gateways are hotkeyed. We'll put another pylon out here. 
And uh, of course, we've got a Stalker building and then we'll be warping in more Stalkers as well. So we want to get that third base started here. And we'll build a pile on there as well. Keep building probes. And I'm going to put this guy up here on the main. I'm going to warp in more Stalkers on the natural. And these guys, of course, are on a different squad as well, right? So we've got three Stalkers up there, a few units there. Let's keep probing now, which I did pause for just a moment. We can even rally them out to the third. And that's because if you know they're building stuff, it could be Widow Mines, Hellions, Liberator, some form of I'm building units straight away. <clears throat> now you see, we see a unit here. Ah, see? So look at this. We see a Widow Mine drop coming in. So notice we're just blinking across here. Whoops. And there we go. All right, guys, we've defended the Widow Mine drop. When you do that, or if you hit five minutes 15 and you haven't seen one yet, that's when your stalkers go to your opponent's natural. Every single time we do that, right? We now start charge. We can queue up plus one armor like I always do. And we then want to go, how many more gateways? Five more to gateways. You guys know, same time. Everywhere. Every single time. Keep building probes. I've been a little crappy on my probe production. Let's, we can even drop some chronos to make up for that. Now, if you want, you can try and attack with the stalkers. Just it, This is just to see what's up. If we can get some damage, that's good. So you see, I killed a marine by clicking on it, but I took a tank shot. I was like, I'm not going up there. So these guys' job is we're just going to try and pick off units when he comes out of his base. So we'll just leave them on a spread, make sure the gateways are hotkeyed, and that's it. Now you might be like, okay, what do you do from here? Well, you want to keep expanding in a straight line just to make your life simple. And uh, we want to also say... If I have nine stalkers, that's a lot of blink stalkers. We want to start making the actual units that are going to fight for us, which are zealots. So notice I have one sentry for guardian shield, and I'm just making zealots behind this. And behind it, we've got the fourth base, which is now... So third saturated, natural saturated, only two gases. We're not taking any more. And whoops, look at this. So you see he's coming out there a little bit, looking for some pickoffs. Uh, we're just warping in lots and lots of zealots. And what else can we do? Well, if I'm probing a fourth base, which I am right now, then we can also try to get out four more gateways, can't we? Now, you might at this point think this is really silly, but I'm queuing up probes, building more gateways, building more pylons, and my stalkers are going to try and see what's up. And did we get the tank? Looks like we did. We also saw a raven. The position he moved to tells me he probably has a third base. So we just want to see if there's a third base. Is there? Yes, there is. All right, maybe we can get an SCV or two. So we got like a couple mules, which is nice. All we're doing, keep making these guys. And remember, plus two armor after plus one, okay? And notice we're building extra pylons, backing up all of this stuff. If you want, once you've got a fourth base getting saturated, you can start building cannons. So I'm building one in the main, because it's the most exposed base, and one in the fourth. These are the most exposed bases, right? We're going to put an Adept on the bottom, Watchtower, Probe on the top. My Stalkers are going to keep harassing, and we're still warping in Zealots. However, if he's not attacking me, we want to set up for run-bys. So at this point, we want to set up maybe, I don't know, 15 Zealots down there. Whoa! Okay. So these guys are going to go across the map for a run-by. Didn't realize that he was over there. We were a little slow getting our map vision. Okay, I'm gonna try and trace him down. The other zealots have A moved in, so they're trying to do some damage. And we're just gonna try and target tanks if we can. And we're just gonna keep on making zealots here with our main army. And because he's gone siege tanks, these stalkers should be really effective here. And so we're gonna try and target the. Um, Orbital. The reason we target the orbital with our stalkers is because keep building probes here, and you want to also take a fifth base behind this. Um, plus two armor and plus two attack. We can just queue them both at once if we really want. Oops. So the reason you focus the orbital is focusing the orbital. Really, it can't run away. SCVs can run away. Now I didn't have that many stalkers there, so maybe it wasn't really worth it in that scenario. But a lot of the time, you can just click on the orbital, and if their army is say centered behind a wall off here tanks here 
what you can do is you can kill the orbital. You can get so much damage on it just with your charge of zealots, even before they lift off, that you can actually, then your stalkers can finish it off. And even if they have their SCVs have ran away and survived, their army survived, they can't retake their third. It's kind of locking the damage in. Now, obviously, we were just miles ahead, and this is the nature of this build order, guys, is we are just playing such a mass of zealots, and it is such a powerful style because of that. And you're going to find we're going to do a lot of variations of this build um, through Masters 2, Masters, Masters 3, Masters 2 as well. I think we will be changing it up maybe Masters 2, because I did want to do a Colossus style soon. I don't know if I've done any Colossus styles other than the Sentry Colossus and Gold League for PvT. So definitely something I do want to show you guys different styles, but you can see... So just, just showing you guys at this point the setup I had when I kind of... I was a little slow getting that map vision. So there was no reason my stalkers needed to pull all the way home. They should have still been hanging out over here because that's the scariest push path and I should have put a unit down here as well. Um, so at this point, guys, you're going to notice I have my stalkers, which is my frontal squad, hanging out here. I have my secondary army, which is my sentry zealot. And at some point when I have extra zealots, I'm like, okay, having too many zealots in a ball is not good. So you take 10, 15 zealots could be 20 zealots and you go and you wait down here so you know they're probably going to push the top you just wait down here so when they push you you aim move these zealots into their natural and you always go for their natural and there's usually a side of the map they're pushing towards which is towards your most exposed expansions so you hide your zealots there and they're on a third hotkey and that's going to allow you to then just throw those across so you're going to see me put those zealots on those hotkeys on that hotkey in the, in the near future but i kind of didn't do it at first because i kind of stumbled you can see that's hotkey zero it shows up as for me Technically, yeah, that's not actually on zero, of course, but but essentially it's 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 a dumping key or whatever. It's a it's a counterattack hotkey. Actually, I think that's my drop defense slash counterattack hotkey is what I think of that as. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what the zero corresponds to. It's O on my keyboard. Why is that the scariest push path? Because it's the most direct. Because they're going to go from here and then they're at my two most exposed bases. If they go the south path, it's way further to get to my base. So that is, that's that's the natural push path because he's expanded here. He's going to push through his third up into my expansions. Yeah. How many probes and gateways is the target? Well, you could technically take this style to like 100 probes, right? But let's just take the end of this game, for example. Where was I? I was on 11 probes on here. So I could have had five more. So 71 probes would be four full mineral lines and two gases. Now, of course, the main running out at this time which is part of why it's so important to take a really quick fifth base as well because then i can transfer eight probes from the main down to there at eight minutes 39 minutes and then at about 11 30 i can transfer another eight from my natural down here so about 71 probes but that's with four full mineral lines or even four and a half as the the kind of main base runs out there yeah i'm guessing you're a big hass and nice fan big says so asher so this style is just legitimately broken and bullshit um it's so good there's a reason why Zest uh, won a tournament recently doing a shitload of mass zealot shenanigans. It's because it's a bullshit. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 a really nice style. You get the cannons for, for the, the detection and what this teaches you is to scale your economy at a fearsome rate. Now, guys, one of the, the big problems with this build is the lack of information. So we we're talking about this earlier. So I want to go over this really quickly. First of all, I don't know what the shit he's doing after his opening, but... I know there's a factory and a starport. If I didn't know that, my adept would still be here. If I hadn't, you know, seen everything, my adept would still be here because I would need to see three racks could move out right about now, 4.30. But because I know there's no three racks scary push, I'm at home, just defending. So I've got my units split on two different keys, three units there, three units up here in a moment. I'm gonna whoop in one more stalker. Hello? Don't I whoop in another stalker? I thought I had three stalkers here, maybe not. Oh yeah, I did. It was just just there. I'm blind. So basically, um, the thing is, I don't know at this point, guys. Did he go third command center and then the three barracks, which is what he did? Or did he go three barracks and maybe even straight five barracks? He could be doing a two base all in. Now, there is no way for me to actually identify which one it is. And this scares a lot of Protoss players. I've talked to you guys a lot about scouting and how important it is. So this is why it is kind of important for us to say, well, if it is a two base all in, where should we stop probing? And the trick here is you are still always gonna take your fourth base nice and early. So let's go forwards to that point because I didn't know if it was two base all in, all right? So you get the third up, you get charge, you go up to eight gateways and you do start warping in zealots while probing up your third as quickly as possible, right? Okay, that's cool, that's great. 
However, I don't know if I'm being all in or not, right? So, let's go, what, 6.30, when do we drop this for? So we take the fourth, and just after six minutes, it ends up going down in this game, basically as this base is getting close to saturated. And we can even, I end up building a few more probes here, but I think we could easily stop right at this point, guys. 55 probes, notice I'm gonna rally these up to the fourth in a moment and get a handful of probes for it. But I shouldn't really be queuing any more than that, right? Because there could be a big, scary bio stim push coming out. And if that's the case, I need to do nothing but warp in zealots and start building gateways right now. However, because I confirm that there's a third base, and, and you guys can see I'm actually going to stop probing while I confirm this. No probes building there. And oh, I do queue up one or two more workers. I'm being a bit of a greedy boy. You know what? You could probably just do this in this order anyway. You get your gateways up so fast. The important thing is if we don't see this third command center, we'd absolutely have to cut probes here. And I think we should have done it before building those last three or four probes. So we would have stopped at maybe 55, 58 probes, something like that, until we actually confirm there's a third command center. Now, I already thought there was a third command center at this point. And now that I know it, I'm like, oh, okay. And you're going to see me start up more probes in that production tab as I pull back from this. So I'm like, I build zealots, I got the gateways, I got the armor, I'm building a few more pylons. And we should be queuing up at least a handful more probes here. I tapped two probes, guys. I have four Nexi, and I went probe, probe. Pig! So I could have gone straight to 71 there, because I know he's on free base. So I could have built another four or five probes. Um, yeah. It's... So th the thing is, if you don't... If you build a fourth, but you don't probe it, and you just mass zealots, so you'll be fine. So if you guys want to be safe, and I think I'll write this down in the build. Just make this super clear, man. I'll write this down. So if we want to be very, very safe, right... Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fourth Nexus. Only probe fourth Nexus after dropping these gates. If they don't have a third base CC, don't probe the fourth. Just mass units. That's a really simple rule, right? We're getting the fourth nexus, but then we build the four gateways, so there's no decision making. What do we do? We just took decision making out of it. The only de decision making, because the gate, it's always build, start the nexus, start these gateways, and I should have done these these gateways earlier, right? And then, oh, he doesn't have a third. No probes for the fourth. We'll just transfer workers from the main in about 30 seconds when it runs out, and just keep massing units. Oh, he does have a third. Okay, we can probe that base up, and you can see just how powerful it is because. The opponent just does not have the army down on supply. And especially if they've gone a siege tank style, it's very weak to zealots. Raven's also not the most effective against zealot stalker because there's nothing to interference matrix. An anti-army missile can be very impactful, but it's very rare that the Terran lands it on enough units at the right time to really do anything. And tanks being out in the open, really bad. No wall offs, also really bad. So what would have been a bigger problem for us is if there was a wall off and all the tanks were here, Maybe a tank up here as well. And he just runs the SCVs away. He can't get on the tanks because his wall's up. That's a much harder situation. And that's a situation where I'd have to do what I said, where I blink in, make a few more stalkers, blink in, try to kill the command center, kill some SCVs, but I can't actually break the wall. And I'm kind of pulling back. And I'm trying to pull back. And I'm, I'm trying to... Okay, I guess I take a fifth base, but, but you're just basically constantly raiding their third base every time they come out for it. Accepting that your zealots are very cheap units and you can throw some of them away. What are your upgrades? I just won one at this point. We wanted to start plus one armor, but because I did armor second, I couldn't queue it up. And that's why there was downtime on the upgrade. Cool. Now, I was not planning to do this attack, guys. This attack was prompted by the fact that he came and attacked me with an army, and that prompted my backstab to go in. And because I also hunted down most of his army, I was like, I chased him all the way back to his base. My backstab was already killing everything that was defending, so we were like, oh, we might as well just kill him right here. So Armory Widowmine drops could definitely be annoying. Because we have such an early forge, we just drop a cannon in each base um, versus, versus Armory Widowmine drops. And potentially like a second cannon on like the edge of the main base or something like that, if there's a common angle where those Widowmine drops keep coming in from. So you will obviously not be able to clean up those widow mines instantly. You'll have to send individual probes in to set them off. And then you'll drop the cannons and clear them up just before they fire again. Because a cannon builds faster than a widow mine recharges. I don't think it does. Does it? 
No, it does, right? Just slightly. I think if you put it down instantly. Let's check. <laughs> Wikipedia, widow mine. Okay, so photon cannon takes 29 seconds to build, right? What is it? 29 seconds to build a cannon. And a widow mine fires once every 21 seconds. So no, no, no. The widow mine, the widow mine would actually get a second shot off. So you would have to basically put a cannon down. And this is a, and this is annoying, but it's a huge investment for them. And you're being very greedy, so it's fine. As long as if they get invisible widow mines in all your bases, you've massively screwed up because you've got plenty of stalkers. They should never get those widow mines in more than one base, right? With armory widow mines. If you let them get in two or three bases, you've screwed up, right? So you will have to basically not mine from that main base until your cannon's finished, or you can go back to mining, then you see your cannon's like two thirds finished and you're like, oh, the Widow Mine's gonna fire in a sec, pull the probes away, wait for the cannon to finish, kill it, and then go back to mining. Depending on how dangerous you wanna play, obviously the safer, easier thing to do is just pull your probes off that base completely, mine off your natural and that very quick third base, and then play it from there. Good luck, have fun. That dick cereal sounds delicious. I don't know about you guys, but I could definitely go for some dick cereal right now. <laughs> oh. Hello? Hello? All right, guys, we got ourselves another PVT on the same map. Now, this fourth base down here, I normally don't like, but we're going to go for it this game simply because we do like that theory of expanding in a straight line along the edge of the map. Uh... All right, got the gateway. We'll go in here. So what are we doing guys? We're going in to check did he take just one or both gases? That's my favorite thing to check for with my scout. Behind this, we're just probing on up. We're gonna saturate all 16 on minerals. Notice we're making sure these guys stack up on the, the patch that doesn't already have a buddy on it. Third base, fourth base, fifth base, and of course our rally point at the front as well. And we can rally that there. How are we doing, everybody? If you guys have any questions, anything is not clear, please point out, ask, uh, be as critical as you possibly can, because I always leave gaps in my explanations, because StarCraft is an incredibly complicated game, and it's impossible to uh, factor in everything, really. All right, we're just gonna aim move here. Let's go Nexus. Now, we could go Cybercore first to be a little safer versus this one base build. Because the barracks is at home, I don't feel I need to. You have not enough minerals. Alright, we're gonna resume probing. Second gas. So very standard build for now. However, we do need to do a one base response, right, guys? We do need to do that. Actually, let's hang out here for a moment, see if it's a marine. I don't think it's a marine, it looks like a Reaper. Alright. That pylon's a second or too late. Um, we're gonna hide the probe up here. Okay. So, the question is, what do we think this build is, guys, and how do we want to respond to it, right? And there's so many options to this. Now, I'm going to teach you guys, now that we're in Diamond 1, my one of my favorite ways to respond to a one base opening, and that is the super duper safe two gate robo. So, we're going to try to, after this response, get back to a normal build, but for this opening stage, we are actually just going to be doing it this way, okay? So, we're going to start with the Adept, right? Now we know he's gone Reaper, so we do need to be a little careful. We're gonna chrono a Stalker right after that. We don't see him coming in there, so we'll go across. And we're gonna get that Robo down as well. Now, notice I'm still probing. Same as if this is a normal build, and I even did a chrono on the probes. Now, some people will say, that's crazy, why are you doing that? I'm just gonna also check for some proxies on the top of the map as well, by the way. And then this Stalker will check down here. Does he have a command center? He's trying to run away. He does not. Okay. Build a pylon here, guys. Not having a shield battery is, of course, very, very dangerous here. I'm trying to chrono out these units. And he's gone to Reaper Hellion, but we haven't actually seen a sign of a command center. So we're going to try and send this probe in. This stalker has to meet Hellion and Reaper out front our base. And the reason for that is very simple. Just keep building probes. You need to stutter step and get damage on those units as you go. Because if Hellions dive past, they can do lots. Now, luckily for us there, as we saw, he didn't really do much. It was all okay. Now we've got 
that coming up. We're going to go to Twilight, which is the least important thing in the world. If this is indeed an all-in. And my probe sees no expansion. So at this point, I got to ask myself, what is this guy up to and what is going on? We're going to build a shield battery. We've been probing more or less the whole time. However, the rule here, guys, is if I at any point needed to build defensive units, I would have always prioritized those defensive units over anything else. Now we're going to build a third and a fourth gateway just to have a bit more production and flexibility. And this observer is about to finally tell us, hey, is this a battle cruiser? Is this invisible widow mines? What's going on? Now we're still going to start Blink because we love Blink as an upgrade. But what are we going up against? And we see it's just a big old tank all in. Okay. So we're going to cancel Blink, make charge, guys. We're going to leave one stalker there. We're going to put another shield battery out here. And all we're going to do is make immortals to kill the tanks and stalkers as well to try and fight all this stuff. Okay. So we're going to leave that there. Actually, I'll put one shield battery in the main. Going to build more shield batteries and we're going to try to chrono boost out this. So you can see we're trying to slow him down a bit. But because I lost my observer, I do have to be a bit careful. Now, his army is very slow. He's going to try and siege up and try to catch me off guard. And all of these units, the zealots, I don't want to fight with because they can't start a step. Building lots and lots of these. And notice, yeah, you can see his armies there. So he's trying to siege up on me and get some big volleys off, right? But all we're doing is buying time. You must construct additional pylons. You require I am the heart of Okay, so now we're going to sneak these zealots out. These guys are going to pull back up the ramp. We've got so many gateways. And what are they doing? They're cutting off the reinforce, okay? And then remember that in this situation, if it is just to protect it all in, this is why the observer was so important. The other thing we could have done was a sentry, right? Try and move the immortals forward, see if they can find some stuff to kill. Okay. And okay, we've got charge, we've got lots of stuff coming up. We'll make a warp prism, just because why not? Um, that can drop the immortals potentially on the enemy units, you know? And we're just going to come in with a bit of a zealot flank from behind. So, what we want to do, guys, is you want to lead with the immortals. And notice we're just focus firing the Stalkers as well to kill the Liberators. The Zealots A move from both sides. And Charge is the most important upgrade to get in the case of you being stuck for an extended period massing basic units. And the really important thing here is the scalability. Stalkers scale like arse. Immortals, really bad against entrenched positions where they get stuck behind each other, where there's bunkers, libs, as well as the tanks. Their range is too great. So if he pushes with one or two tanks and a handful of marines, unupgraded stalkers and immortals can just destroy it, right? Especially if we pick him off when he's moving forward. But if he's really slow and methodical like that, we force him to siege here, then here, then here. We're buying time for ourselves, right? He's not giving me the opportunity for my early game comp to win the game, the stalkers and the immortals, which I could normally win, right? Because you just kill the tanks. Like Immortals, if they get in range of the tanks, they just kill them so quickly, right? But he's being so careful. He's not letting me catch him on siege. So that's why we have the Twilight Council as a just in case. Now at this point we knew it was some sort of one base alone. We still didn't know what, right? So we were just kind of like, oh, okay, let's, you know, focus on you. Now some people might be like, why didn't you build shield batteries in this game? Remember what I said at the start, his barracks was at home. Now I could have built a shield battery, but because I didn't have a pylon on my natural at the start, the only point where I would have wanted to build that shield battery was right as my adept was getting killed. I might've wanted to drop one battery on the natural. No point dropping one in the main, because I need to defend these probes anyway, right? So I just focused on building units and luckily I had two stalkers out in time. He could have dived, killed four or five probes, would have lost Italians and Reapers. Would it have been a good trade for him? I honestly, I don't know if that would be worth it. 
Now, chat saying blink would work to kite him, and then you could be a bit more aggressive than what you did. No, not at all. So this is a really common mistake. I've, I've had so many people recently bring that up, and you've got to remember, blink is amazing at harassing a push as it moves across the map. The question here is, can you have blink in time? No, because the upgrade, I cancelled it. Because blink would have kicked in maybe 10, 15 seconds faster than charge here. Which even with two chronos, it, it would have kicked in. He's already at my base. So you've got to remember that it's all about timing. Blink would have been amazing. I could have defended this with just mass blink stalkers because we could pick off a tank, blink away, if we had it when he's moving out. But if you're on two base, they're on one base, there's no way that's going to work unless you have gone straight for Twilight Council and chronoed it out. And guess what? That means if he just pushed with one or two tanks, some marines and bunkers, I would have only had like two stalkers to defend it. So he would have been able to already be sieged up here at the five minute mark. So I'd be like, Blink is finished. But he'd be like, I have bunkers and tanks sieged here in range of your natural. So you've got to think about the fact that Twilight first is very dangerous versus one base play because it takes so long before it gives you something. And then what it gives you is a little bit of added value to what you already have. But going for the second gate means I can pump out gateway units to defend anything at the start. The Robo can always be used for immortals, but it also gets the Observer, which confirms what I'm up against, right? And the earlier I get that, probably the better as well. I think there's an argument here behind getting that Robo even faster, right? Because I put this Robo down at like 240. There's an argument behind, hey, drop the Robo straight away, even delay warp gate, so that you can get it down right now. Because if I drop that Robo here on two minutes 10, so I go Adapt Robo, I can get an Observer over there so much quicker, about 35 seconds quicker. That's going to make me charge, start charge quicker be more aware of what I'm in, up against quicker. I might be able to move my stalkers out and harass his push from over this area rather than this area to give myself more time. So there's some really nice things that you could do. Why not use a warp prism to drop charge zealots in his main? I don't have a, a warp prism. You don't have time to get that out. So I don't have charge or, or a warp prism. So you gotta remember timing. I can't have these things. I'm on, one, I'm on two bases, guys. He's on one base. So how are you going to get warp, warp Prism and Charge out when you've got a guy barreling down on you with a one base push, which I never knew. He could, he could have pushed out already, right? He pushed kind of slowly because he wanted to get non-stop triple marine production. But you've got to always think about the context of what you're up against and the timing. So why would I Zealot drop his base? It makes no sense because all I need to do is defend this push. Damaging his economy doesn't help me. He's already at half of my economy. I have two bases, he has one. So damaging his economy puts me further ahead in something that I'm already infinitely ahead in. I'm so far ahead. So you've got to look at it in terms of what's happened is he's invested everything in army. I need to stop that army. I need to turn this economy lead into my own tech and army and do it. And I can't do that when he first moves out and wants to fight. His army is objectively better than mine. But what I do is I buy time for that economy that I built to catch up. Notice I've stopped probing now. Everything's going into charge, extra gateways, extra gateways and I'm buying time with the Stalker Immortal here and that's their whole job and look at how much we slow him down because if he didn't slow down he's going to lose a lot of units I'm going to shoot pull back shoot pull back shoot pull back and you can see look at that even there picking off a unit I could have been a bit more aggressive with my poke but look at how slow he's sieging forward he's playing this so safe so 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 safe and this is buying time for charge buys me time to get those zealots out as well he kind of, he wants to catch those, but now they're going around, which means we're going to cut off his rally across the map. So he can't really rally any more units over. That's also going to turn into a flank. So that number one stops him reinforcing. Number two, it flanks his army, gets any tanks on the backside. We get up to eight gateways, we mass zealots. And what have we bought for ourselves? An extra two minutes to turn that economy into an army advantage. And then we crush. He actually stopped building units for a little while there because he was so panicked with the push. This is a really scary push, man. Look at how many Marines he has. That's actually a very good Zealot killing force. Now, at this point, I was a little worried he was about to kill my shield batteries. Now, why did I go forward with the Immortals for it first, guys? Because I wanted them to tank. Very tanky units plus battery overcharge. I figured these Immortals are going to survive a lot. So I moved them forward, hit battery overcharge just before it went down. Thanks and then the I just box. F2A moved is what I did here. So I go F2A move and then I control click the immortals or box them and I shift click these two tanks and then I control click my stalkers and I move in so that they're not blocking my ramp and I click the liberator and then I move in and I click this tank and I move in and I click this other tank and everything else is just attack move. So as always in big fights guys do not control your whole arms. 
set it up so that the A move will do most of the work and then choose how to just micro one or two small things very specifically. Beautiful. That was a, a very slow version of the push. Some people will hit harder and earlier and they'll be much more focused on the early Stalker Immortal micro versus the first handful of Marines and tanks. This was one where we didn't get to see that interaction as much because he waited to have a much bigger force. So keep that in mind. Yeah, tanks also do way less damage um, when they are, are uh, against zealots, right? So there's an argument behind don't actually throw the immortals in first, but I figured with the battery overcharge healing them, it would absorb a ton of tank shots. For those who don't know, in Wings of Liberty, siege tanks um, used to suck versus immortals because that first 100 shields on the immortal, rather than having a barrier, they would actually only take, they had hardened shields, which was an ability which meant they only took maximum of 10 damage from any single damage source. So you might be wondering, wait, what the hell? Only 10 damage from any single damage source? Yep, you know it. So basically, if they're only getting shot by sieged up siege tanks, it's going to take 10 siege tank shots just to break through their shield. Which you can imagine as a Terran player is a little bit frustrating. So... Uh, definitely, um, definitely some uh, some old school stuff was uh, interesting. At the same time, they were much weaker against Marines and stuff because they didn't get the barrier. So, all right, guys, we got main, natural, third. We get fourth and fifth. And guess what, guys? Ladder has said, "Pig, you're winning too much." We are playing a 5200 MMR Terran player. We're playing a Grandmaster right now. I don't know what 5200, where that would put you in GM right now, but I'm pretty certain that that would put you in Grandmaster, probably at about rank 150. So despite being here, just about to get Masters 3 myself, Ladder has said, dude, you are winning too many games. We're going to match you with someone a little bit harder. I'm very excited to see how this game goes, because we, of course, have been, um, you know, dominating, essentially. So I can't wait to see what the hell happens here. Basically, you can't build, you couldn't build tanks versus Protoss back then? No, you still could. You, you still could. Just uh, didn't want them to be wasting their shots on those units is all. All right, guys, we've got a wall off again. So it looks like a very similar build order. So notice I'm attacking the depot. So if he doesn't quickly build that, that might die. Okay, doesn't look like it's going to die. So what we'll do is we'll just A move. And that way, if the SCV floats over, my guy will automatically attack it, which will be nice. There we go. So notice we're, we're attacking him. I'm going to build a pile on there. And we do see a factory going down at home. And a marine came out, which means there's no reaper, guys. So we'll rally an adept across just to get some scouting. And we're going to do the exact same response as last game. I think against the Terran player, it's doing a very one base centric opening. It's a very safe way to play. And like I said, if he just ends up expanding, we'll quickly go for a blink, we'll go for forge, we'll add all those normal things that I do like to go for. But to start things off, let's get that robo down a little bit quicker this game. I did start warp gate, but I still got the robo before the second gateway. And now we will get a second gateway. That's going to delay my stalker slightly. So if I was more worried about the initial pressure, you could argue that that's a little dangerous. I'm actually going to put a chrono into the probes as well before this. But as soon as we get the minerals, I'm holding it down. There we go. So the stalker's on the way. Now, remember, part of the reason I feel comfortable doing that is we saw it was a marine first and the barracks and the factory were at home. If these were proxied on the map, I would be much more worried about what's going to come my way, man. Got a pylon on the natural just ahead of time. Make sure that's good. And let's see if we can shade on in. What do we see up here? So we do see a reactor. And I will let this one finish. And we're going to shade home, guys. So I just run. So we see a starport with no add-on as well. We're going to keep making stalkers. An observer will come out. Stalker, stalker, stalker. Keep building probes as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shade home here. Just in case these Hellions come out, we might be able to land a few hits and then shade away. Which would be awesome, right? That would be really cool. Um, we'll put a pylon down here, I think. Would be nice. And just still building probes. Still building more units and the observer we put on control group two that's going to go see what the hell are we up against all right I am here in the can build an immortal i'll put this over here because there could be like i said a very quick drop guys and we'll put a stalker there so this way we can see any angle he comes from we'll be able to spot it respond to it okay now 
we can still go four gateways here just for safety because we still don't really know what's up. And he managed to find the only gap in my vision, which is, of course, very suspect. Which tells us that our opponent is most likely hacking, guys. <laughs> there aren't many hackers out there, but that is almost certainly a hack. <laughs> there was a tiny, tiny hole in my vision, right? Either that or I'm just blind and wasn't watching my minimap. I'm not actually sure. So, chrono boost, chrono boost. Whenever you take damage, guys, chrono your probes, chrono your probes. And where's my observer? I've accidentally pulled it home because I'm an idiot because I did an F2. Okay. So obviously this is not looking good. Um, maybe, maybe he just happened to go there, but that was kind of crazy, dude. I could be misreading this, so let's not focus too hard on that. Let's get the Twilight Council. We're chronoing probes. Always probes, probes, probes. Focus on minerals and get ready to take a third. Now, if it's a one base all in, obviously we don't need that third, right? But... If there's an expansion, we definitely need to. And this is a one base all in, guys. So. And he's got... Okay. Okay, we've got an observer there. Here it comes. Okay, guys. So we have to go forward and fight him now. Okay, we're going to get charge, and... Try and build some batteries. We all state thy bidding. state thy bidding. We are one. Once again, he finds a little weak spot there. Interesting. Go for it. I don't think it'll work, but yeah. Nicely done by him. Very, very well executed push. Um, obviously, we took way too much damage despite knowing that first wave was coming, which was huge for us. And he took us down. GG, well played. Did I not have... So did this pylon not spot this corner? Maybe he was always planning to hit that corner. Let's take a look. Let's take a look from the opponent's point of view. No scouting, but you don't really need to scout if you're doing a build like this. Um, no suspicious looking through the fog. We already told this to drop. Ah, oh, he sees the pylon and repositions. No, very well done. Medevac has longer vision than a pylon. This was really well executed by him. So that was just really well executed. He saw that pylon, and that's bad awareness of this map. This pylon should have been there. That's like the one hole in my vision, right? Oh, you're kidding me. Well played. That was very, very slick. Really well played. Uh, GM, like 5-5. Five, five. Going once to GM. Uh, very slick reposition on the drop. GG, well played. So yeah, 
I was like, are you kidding me, man? Um, you can see here though, guys, in hindsight, if it was a one base all in, I did need my Twilight Council started by now. So the question is, do you, um, do you, when does the Twilight Council go down with this branch, right? If we do two gate robo, do we go third and fourth gateway then Twilight? I think we probably do them at the same time. I think there's also, this drop hits at 410. I only had four gateway units. So you could argue that's just a mistake as well, right? So check this out actually, because you should have six gateway units at this time for sure. Um, this is actually why as well, if you guys suck with your map vision, you just leave three gateway units here, three gateway units here. And the trick is you want to have six of those ready against this sort of build. Uh, but I only have four, so... Yeah, this should not be building. I don't know what, what happened with this stalker. How did this stalker get queued up? Oh, it accidentally queued up two stalkers on it. That's what happened. Okay, I was wondering what happened there. Okay, so this should have been cancelled, and we should have let them both transform. And then if we immediately warp in two stalkers right here, they're ready in time. So that's very important. Because if it is one of these one base drop type things, that's going to make you much safer. Okay? So let's go out to the build order and let's write it up. I think I've written some one base responses before up in here. But I'm going to write this new one anyway under uh, Diamond 1. Because... That's actually really, really useful. Okay. PVT versus one base walled out. Uh, yeah, one base walled out from scouting. Okay. So what do we do, guys? So we're doing a two gate robo. So what do we do? We go adapt robo uh, adapt plus warp gate. Then robo second gate. Uh, yeah, and if that second gateway is slightly later, that's fine. If it's after the stalker or before, that's that's totally cool. So second gate, um, yeah. So we can, let, let's just say adept and robo. We get a stalker, then second gate, third plus fourth stalker, uh, fourth gateway unit units stalkers usually. If you know it's pure Hellion Marine or something, maybe you could do adapts, but I don't think so. Um, Observer, Chrono, ASAP to scout. Now, obviously, some people I know like um, would like to get a sentry to see what's going on because it gives you an earlier scouting. So there's a very, very good way of doing it, guys. Yeah. Is he very smart? No, I don't think he's a map hacker at all, guys. He just was watching the drop. He's doing a one base drop, doesn't have much else to focus on. He just repositioned it. Really well done, dude. Uh, Observer, Chrono, ASAP. Face changes, everything gets real. Oh, yeah. I thought he was hacking. If I if I if I'm playing a hacker, I want to embarrass them really badly. CK Rion, but he was not a hacker. Um, he just did a, quick, a cute reposition. It's very rare you see a non-pro do that. Spot the pylon, pull back before they get spotted, and change drop angle. Like that was super pro, man. Really well done. Uh, Observer Chrono ASAP to scout. Warp in fifth and sixth gateway unit. Four minutes. So six units ready for four minutes, 10 mine or Hellion drop, right? And that'll shut it down. Hardcore. From there, what do we do, guys? We go Twilight Council plus third and fourth gates. Um, yeah, and it's even worth, I think. Cut probes at 14 on natural. Right? So we don't really need to fully saturate our natural. Let's say 13 or 14, right? Because that's still two mineral lines, essentially, versus one base guy. Twilight Council plus third and fourth gates. Um, charge if one base all in. Blink if macro game. If macro game, go for third base. Yeah. Macro game, take third base and forge also and go back in the direction of normal play all right all right i think that's a really good kind of well mapped out series of responses there and that should work out really nicely but you can see what really hurt me here is twilight council he followed up with some widow mines as well which was really nicely done um i did a good job of recovering my economy 
but I did not do a good job of splitting my units. And that could always be a liberator. And I was even thinking about it. I was like, I should probably have three stalkers in my main. And guys, if you have three stalkers in your main, you can three shot the medevac. And then he, he can't pull these widow mines out, which not only killed probes here and wasted mining time and disruption, they also boop, 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 came down and killed stalkers there. So this was really well executed by my opponent. It's a very simple build order, right? And that it is just a one base all in, but uh, it's actually kind of, the tanks are not that early really because they've built all the Hellions and Widow Mines, right? But if you let them do this much damage, are you just kind of reeling? It's like, oh shit. So I did move out to try and slow him down, but I should have moved out and forced this siege further, guys. If I did that back here or something, that would have been even better. And then look at this. This is really nice. Just drops the Widow Mines kind of off to the side of my army. I don't even notice it because I'm blind. I'm looking down here or something. Walk into those stalkers. Those stalkers into those widow mines. And uh, really, really well done. And he's like, bam, third tank, fourth tank. Beautiful play, beautiful play. And he works this angle. Bunkers, widow mines, marines. Very nice all in. That's a beautiful build for my opponent, guys. <laughs> Why are people taking you seriously? We always take Twitch chat seriously. So what's funny, so that player was playing unranked. So it showed me their main account or main races MMR there, which was 5,200, right? But apparently they're on their unranked, it's uh, it's a lot lower. So are they offer it, their unranked is 500 MMR lower. Okay, so I think they must be a macro Terran who's learning how to all in. That's why their unranked MMR was 500 MMR lower. Scummy? I don't really mind. Scummy's fine. He was, uh, he was, no, he was GM. He was GM with his, uh, his main. Just hadn't played enough games recently by the looks of it. What do we got, guys? Another PVT for our promotion game. All right, let's do it. Another PVT. All right. Hey, oh, thank you. Good luck, good luck. All right, guys. You have not enough minerals. Whoops. Oh, she's. Oh, I see what's happened. Sorry. Random objects on my desk blocking my mouse. Keep your desk clean, silly piggy. All right, guys. Check for the gas and then go down. All right, keep building probes. I did miss a little bit of probe production earlier, that's why the probe timing is slightly different in this game, guys. You have not enough minerals. I wish the Warhammer RTS was as good as this, says Clap. Do you mean Total War? Or is there a different one? Hey! We'll prepare to lose that MMR. Hey, that's a big jump. Noise. I think he he, he 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 got himself there though, not me. So guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide and we'll come back in in a little bit, okay? Okay, we build the cyber core and then just before I'm in at 40, we can queue up the circle. He should have already sent an SCV to chase me to make sure that I wasn't able to block him there. But we won't block too long anyway. I'm just gonna hang around and then leave. We'll let him get it up because he said he's a fan. What can I say, guys? Favoritism. Rampant favoritism and match fixing. Looks like we took a hit, so I think that was a marine first as well. I didn't actually see it, but I don't know what else could have attacked me there. So Reaper couldn't have been out, out at that time. And uh, I don't think there was an SCV there. Are you talking about Dawn of War? The first one was the best Dawn of War. Hiding that probe behind the natural. We're rallying down here. Let's get the Twilight Council. I don't think there's a Reaper, so I don't really need to hide that probe, do I? You guys know I like to chrono the Stalker just to be safe anyway. Just in case there was a Reaper and I somehow misread that. So we stand there, ready to cancel it if we do see a Reaper coming in. Even if we missed it, Reaper jumps in now, that Stalker will be out just a few seconds after that leaves. That's why it's all okay. I'm here. And uh, we'll put him on the other hotkey, won't we? 
Alright, so the Adept is going to pressure, the Stalker just chilling. We've got Blink. You see there is a bunker finished, and there is a reactor up. And we just saw a mule drop, guys, so if you see a mule drop, it's a very valuable target. But good micro from my opponent, so we'll just back off. Okay. So we got Blink started. We're now going to go Gateway, Gateway, Forge. Keep building probes, of course. And notice we've only built two gateway units to this point. This is very common. Now remember, guys, we click there, shift click it in. Okay? And then cancel it. The reason we do that, I think most of you will realize, it's so that if the depot's raised when we first click it, it at least goes there and gets a vision. So we select it before turning around, okay? And look at that, we're just forcing him to raise it with extra APM. That's extra APM. Don't be doing that too much, okay, guys? It's not worth wasting your macro time, okay? The Nexus and a Pylon goes up. Keep building probes. And we've still got the Stalker here. This guy's just going to hang out there, see if 3 Rex comes out. And we're just going to put him on a different hotkey now. So we've got Stalkers up here. They're just kind of hanging. Oh! Is that a three racks? I don't think so, guys. I don't think it is, but we're going to have to send something out there just to check, okay? So I'm going to do something. If you guys are ever unsure, you just put two probes out. So these probes are both watching the attack paths to see if an army comes. Okay, so we're going to put one guy up there just to get early warning if a drop comes in. Put a pylon back there just in case. Stork is still hanging out in the middle area. I know it seems weird to just be leaving probes there, but sometimes you just got to take safety precautions, right? All right, guys, let's start going charge and up the gateway count. We're still building probes at the same time. And remember, when, when you, do you move your stalkers across the map? About 5.15. So once we get all these gateways down, there we go, eight gateways. We're now going to move across. And oh my god, it is actually a. Uh, okay. It is actually a three racks, guys. We're going to make as many stalkers as we can right now and try to micro our ass off to defend. We'll put a probe out the right side in case he pushes that way. Now, if you can basically shoot by target firing, that's the best way to do it, guys. And then you want to spread out a little bit, okay? So we see he's going to the top. I don't have a shield battery there. But it looks like he's a bit afraid as well. So let's send a probe out here. Now, at a certain point, obviously I do need to swap into Zealots because I don't want to keep using these units forever. So we're going to chase him home. This is super awkward. Okay, what do we got? Big army there. Okay, guys, we're going to try and chase him down. Let's just take a moment now. We're going to put them on a patrol path. They can give us one. Take a breath. Sentry and mass sell it. And we're putting these on a different hotkey, aren't we? Okay. So we're going to get a fourth base still. We're not going to probe it. We never finished probing our third because there was a big army at our base. So I was just like, ah, warping units, ah, warping units. But remember, before we probe that base... We don't. We we want to make sure we build extra gateways. Okay, we're gonna keep trying to make him stim here and like pick off units and all this sort of stuff. But it feels like we need to actually backstab and then maybe do some other stuff. Okay, so we're gonna keep chrono boosting this. We'll queue up plus two attack just so I can queue it up. We pick off a marauder and we just run away. We're just gonna keep doing this, guys. Just trying to be really annoying. Okay. Four more gateways. Remember before we probe that up, okay? I am the voice. So we get another Marauder and we just run away. We'll build a pylon up here, guys, and we haven't actually had a chance to build our other pylons. Oh! Blink away, blink away. You see, he's trying to chase me down pretty hard now. We're gonna have to build some more pylons around the map. So these stalkers are just being dickheads. That's their whole job, remember? We're going to build a cannon in the main because that's a very exposed and important base for us to defend. We'll bring this blink stalker down. And remember, what do we do at this point, guys? We're going to set up a big pack of zealots ready to go and run by, okay? 
Oh, that was a bad blink. Don't do that, guys. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that, okay? All right, my zealots are going to go for the run by. I'm going to use Guardian Shield and Battery Overcharge to try and bait him in here. Whoops. Ah! So we're trying to run away right now. Because this is very scary. These zealots are doing stuff, which is very good. Ah! Oh, what the hell? How do you get there? Ah! All right, we're gonna have to warp in some stalkers as well, guys. We're gonna have to build a stargate so that we can hunt down these guys that are hiding hiding up here. Oh, it looks like he flew over me, so it's okay. Oh, and the zealot A move killed him, so we're good, guys. It's all good. Whew! That got kind of crazy, didn't it? So you can see, because you're using this low tier army, you do need to be quite clever with how you engage. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to rally everything to the th fourth. This guy to his own base, because he only needs a few more probes. And we'll take a fifth base as well, okay? And we're going to F2 A move, which would be a good way to do it. The Stargate is super gimmicky. You should probably be building a Robo instead of that for the next step, guys. But I thought if he was going to hang out in the dead space, I'd want to be getting those units. And GG. Um, this style is super abusive, of course, but it's just a very powerful style. Yeah, it's super good. Um, Go Heavy Mines helps a lot. If you see... Um, scan my gnat. I only two gas all game. So if you see this style, go very defensive and just wall off natural keep any tanks on high ground and mass uh, mines or ghost bio and play very defensive in a ball and try to make sure you check map for big pack of zealots uh, waiting for run by so guys I'm explaining to him how to beat this um, just so and this helps you guys because now you understand how it, it gets beaten as well right um, yeah, yeah, it's very economic. <laughs> Easy to A-move. <laughs> but, uh, if, if Terran gets big ball, Zealot's very bad. So most toss uh, will struggle to transition, even though I've taught them that. Because <laughs> it's hard. GG, mate. What did he say? GG, my man. You're awesome. Well played, Michacho. Well played. He did a really good job of, of being kind of a little bit hard to pin down. Um, for sure. Because he went three racks, but then he didn't He didn't do an early push. He never let my Adept in to confirm that it was three racks, which super triggered me. I was like, let me see what you're doing. Luckily, the Adept ended up scouting a lot of Marines coming out anyway, so I kind of played a little respectful for it, but even that number of marines didn't actually tell me this is the three racks. So this was really well played by him. Um, however, I do think he maybe could have actually committed to a timing a little bit more, right? I think that's probably the one criticism I'd have, is I think it would have been way better for him if he just shoved with these marines, right? I think he was a bit too tentative. I think if... I, I would have handled it, but I would have had to use some pro gamer skill. And the reason is, because I didn't know until now which is why I didn't even have a battery started. So if he shoves, he gets here before that battery's done. I'm forced to defend 23 Marines with 10 Stalkers, which you can do, but it's going to take real blinking back and falling back. And he should be able to, like, if, I, if I'm if i not micering really well, he's going to really struggle. So I, I think, you know, he should have been more committed with his pushes would have been a nice way to do it. But I think we got to see something else in this game, which was the budget scouts. Whenever your opponent's like, you're not really sure what they're doing, sending some probe spotters out there. Just as like a very budget way of checking what's going on. Let him get it up because he is a fan. Pig 2022. <laughs> hey, Richaho, thank you so much for gifting this sub, dude. Much love. GG, well played. Um, oh, I, I just realized from someone commenting in chat. Hot tip for you, mate. You knew my probe was there. You should have been already chasing this probe with an SCV, right? You have the extra SCV here. 
You should have been chasing it, attacking it, because I could have actually blocked for another five or ten seconds if I wanted to be a real dickhead here, and then you would have had to put the command center there, um, which would have been very annoying. So just a, a little heads up on that. Pull that ahead of time, otherwise it just makes things harder than it needs to be. Most of you probably remember it. Let's take a little look. If the broodlings do get revenge and kill a DT, so that's off to him. Accidentally puts a baneling nest down. That's meant to be a hatchery. Dark's brain is broken, guys. He just built a baneling nest where his fourth base is meant to be. Re <laughs> so he literally accidentally misclicked, built a baneling nest, and then he's like he even added it to his hotkey, tried to set a rally point, built spore crawlers next to it, and then it like finishes, and he's like, oh, what the hell? And he just starts killing it with lurkers. <laughs> it's, I'm just like, man. The fact that that happens to Dark in a tournament game, I'm like, makes me feel much better about my baboon plays. Good luck, have fun. Okay, guys, so we're here. We're doing Protoss versus Zerg again. Um, not much PvP in the second half of Diamond 1, and I'm totally okay with it. Always fun to get some uh, of this variety out. Now, obviously, I kind of... Part of me wants to take the front third because it's easier than just, like, walk your push, push across the map. The reason I'm not going to be doing that, guys, is very simple. Um, and that is just the fact that it is so, so obvious that I want to be aggressive in my mind. <laughs> like, if I see a Protoss player doing that, I, as a Zerg, I would be like, why are you taking the front third base? Like, this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. It's so easy to surround from the back. Big surface area on all sides. So, um, as nice as it is normally to take the front third, because it allows you to kind of push through that third to attack, and therefore have, have less of a distance from when you show your attack moving out to actually, you know, getting there, it's uh, going to be one where we take the back third on this map, just to make it more appear like a normal game. Speaking of normal games, remember this is a gold-based map. We do see a second Overlord. What do we got here? Those look like Zergling eggs. Yes, they do. All right, guys. So what do we do? Well, first things first. We run that probe away if we can. Got second gateway, cyber core. We've got second pylon, zealot, second gate, core. You guys know my one base response here. Now, we didn't see a gas, so we don't have to worry about anything else. We're going to build up another probe so we can have 16 on minerals, 3 on gas. We'll build two zealots and then in the deck. Now this zealot, hold position in the wall. I don't like to pull any more units if I can avoid it. I might have to if my opponent has very good micro. Now remember, what are we doing? Hold position. Notice we got an attack and then quickly pull back. Hold position in the gap. And we want to make an adept. We make a warp gate, and we're going to make one more adept. Now, we're already, just by doing the run back and forth, we're keeping our cyber core from dying, right? We now get the second gas, and then go back to probing. Now, one of the potential mistakes you could argue here... It's hung around a bit too long. Could be going around, so... You know what, guys? I'm always a little bit paranoid here, and I think with good reason. The firstborn shall persevere. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, just in case the zealots run by, we'll leave the uh, the zerglings run by. We'll leave that at home, and we'll just go for the adept pressure. Definitely, there's better things you can do in terms of counter pressure. There's way more powerful moves. If you send both zealots, you can try to cancel the third. Then the adepts can shade in. But we're going to give ourselves a more contained plan here and try to focus more on the efficiency of execution rather than anything else. We're going to shade in towards the main, try and run past these queens, and we're going to cancel the shade here. I'm going to try and take out some drones, but lots of queens and really good defense. So he actually defends that flawlessly. Very impressed. Was not expecting that. So, <clears throat> very well done. We'll get the DT Shrine here. Let's get another pylon. Keep building probes, of course, and chrono them because our probing is a little bit behind. And actually, we're nowhere near needing this pylon yet, so let's chrono both next side. Remember, guys, we want to queue up to three probes on each nexus whenever we do a chrono boost. So, just keep queuing those probes. It's very easy to be like, oh yeah, that should be enough. And it's like, no, no, no. Let's get a third gas. And... Alright, we'll get the third pile on there. 
and let's go for it. All right, we're already on four gates. Keep building probes, so queue up two more. We'll get the warp prism out momentarily. There we go. There is an overlord coming in, so I do want to make a stalker for that. I'll make one now. Put one there. And you can see it's a little bit more awkward, but we're just steadily kind of adding the same pieces we would with our normal build, right? All right, so we'll go over here, prism, and we can make another pylon. Awesome. Then we can send the zealots over to the third. Stalker's guarding the wall. These guys are there. He doesn't even have ling speed. Oh, wow. Very late on ling speed. So my opponent's done a really nice greedy follow-up by the looks of it, guys. Warp prisms queued to siege up there so we can warp in. Now, obviously, I could go straight for a um, third base, but we're just going to warp in the DTs before going for that third. Oh, wait a second. We're not doing a third, are we? We want to go Observer and then Immortal. Let's so we'll kill out the Immortal straight away. Warp Prisms going away from the Queen. Kill some drones. Kill whatever else we can get our hands on. Okay. We can get Charge and then five more Gateways. And I'm not going for the hatchery because that's such a big thing to go for. And we're just going to fly away now. We'll warp Archons there. Warp Archons there, sorry. Remember, we need five gateways. And only then can we build this third base. So we'll make the Archons. We just did crazy damage, by the way, guys. Crazy damage. The Observer we can send across the map. The mortal's out, let's start that third base. And this is like, yeah, I'm totally just taking a third. We're doing a normal build, right? Of course we are not. So the Archon's just gonna chill for a sec. Let's make sure everything's correct. Remember, we do like to build three immortals, if possible. Oh, okay. So notice I pick up the Archon that he was focusing on. And then we're gonna go around. And then maybe we can come in and hit the mineral line from behind. We want to chrono this again. And we see our opponent is kind of there. Now, his roaches are nearby, so if we go in here, we've got to be very careful. I'm going to drop this Archon first, because I can see from that picture it has a few more shields. We're just going to kill one drone, and then we go around the back. And this is very dangerous at this point. We've got to be careful. One more Immortal is coming in. What are we doing, guys? We're going to make lots of DT Archons there. We're just going to run away. Already that distracts them, right? And then what are we doing at home? Archons, Zealots, and Mortals. And we're just going to shove the front, aren't we? I don't think he has any vision there. So if we warp in from about here, I think we just surprise him. And notice we didn't keep fighting with those Archons, so they're going to be mostly regenerated to full hit points by the time the actual push happens. 220, 230 shields. So we could have easily gotten ahead of ourselves, but we didn't. We're going to tell the Prism to go there. And his army's actually going out. Oh, he's, he's going to be trapped outside his base. All right, jump on his army, guys. Let's kill those units, yeah? Just make sure the Zealots fight with the Immortals and the Archons is the only real trick here. All right, so if he's going to try and lure me away from his base, okay, that's the situation where... Maybe we'll have to fight. Trying to dodge the vials a little bit. You can see, I mean, he, he's letting me in between his rallies, which is a cardinal sin. You cannot do that. And looks like, yeah, those units will get chased down. And we can just attack into the base. So remember, what would I always say? With the Roach Ravager, you want to engage the Zealot Archon Immortal and fall backwards towards your base, kiting as you go, picking off as many units as possible. As usual, we get tons of Archons. This was a six Archon timing, not even the five Archon. It was a little later than normal, but you've got to remember they were much delayed as well because they went through the 12 pool opening. So just a very good defense of the 12 pool there. Clean, exact same way we always do it. Then we go for our standard build, the Archon drop. Now, you guys might struggle to adapt as well as I did, right? Whereas, because the timings are all different, where I'm like, oh, I'll just add one gas and then the other gas. If you just do both gases at once, that's probably better, right? But stick to the normal build order. You need to pay a little bit more attention to your supply 
because pylons won't need to go down at the exact same moment, so you might need more pylons, or in this case, less, because this nexus finishes and gives us a big supply gap. Um, but yeah, you could see that, like, my prism, my robo finished, guys, and I didn't build the prism straight away. I think this is the main strategic mindset view, where you might be like, oh, normally you want to start that at by 350, 345, right? Shouldn't you be cutting probes to build it? But I didn't. I chronoed probes, and I focused more on queuing up extra probes here than on building the warp prism. And I'm sure some of you are like, what the hell, pig? You're delaying your DT timing. Am I? Yes, a little bit, but not that massively. Number one, the DT shrine isn't going to be ready for a little bit anyway. But more importantly, I've already taken economic damage. It's very important for me to get back to this two base economy. Because even if I get the prism out on time, if I don't have these gases up and mining yet, I'm not going to be able to make four DTs. So then I get there with the prism, and I'm like, oh, I can only afford two DTs. And then suddenly the kind of calculus going on on is this, what can I fight with two DTs? Because normally I only fight with four, so I don't actually know what this can fight, and is this even worth my APM? Should I just wait for four DTs before I go in? It's very easy to get muddled up, right? So I was like, just keep building probes. That will, that is like absolutely fundamental. We're definitely not cutting probes if we've taken early damage, right? And then just squeeze in the prism where we can. Obviously it's still Robo, DT Shrine, up to four gateways double gas after the warp prism or in this case actually before the warp prism and then we go for that third base as well so it actually works out now obviously i'm warping in about what 35 40 seconds later than i normally would with dts but the opponent doesn't have link speed the opponent's spores aren't ready they don't have a lair so we're both very delayed in this game and if they've gone 12 bull you've had to respond you're both probably about you know 35 40 50 seconds behind where you normally would be and uh, that's absolutely the case here. So you can see, as usual, guys, we just kind of A-move the DTs. Don't do much focus firing. Prism just kind of hides behind. We do start focusing down the spores, and I think we killed both of those. Which, remember, they're drone kills and 75 minerals each. And we pick up as that spore finishes. I go, ah, I don't think we're going to be able to finish that. Just pull back, go home, finish adding the five gateways. So it goes nine gateways total. Charge, and our immortals are all on the way. Get the third base down, keep chronoing those immortals. Remember, it's either two or three immortals. We choose that go point a little bit ahead of time. And yeah, beautiful, beautiful timing attack. Masters! And that concludes Diamond 1.